um, I'm here to talk to Howard. Uh, we're going to try to get Ronnie a job, a job where he doesn't talk. Um, and uh, Howard TV on demand, which I hear Ronnie doesn't get anymore. So, Ron, call me up on my cell. I'll tell you everything that's happening on Howard on demand. And you can save the eight bucks. So what's what's new since the last time you've been on? I can't get into that right now. I gotta talk. I only, I only talk to the man. I only talk to the man. Sorry, you. Call me when your ball's gone. <laughs> Brett Garrett is on television. His uh, TV show Till Death premieres again this Wednesday night at nine o'clock on Fox. This is the second season. It's a very funny show. I I um, watched it last season and enjoyed it. Wonderful. Yeah, he's good, Brad Garrett. He's a funny man. The tension in this building. <laughs> <laughs> That's unbelievable. I told you. we stay in here. It's like an instant. <laughs> Thank you. Wouldn't work without you. Remember that. Hey, Ron, Hello. How are you? you think the show would fall apart if we didn't have Baba Booey? Uh, Baba Booey and Ron and, uh, but you need the sister. You need the sister, especially now with Obama coming in. You need, um. Are you an Obama supporter? Huge Obama supporter, are man. Are you? Huge Obama supporter. You know why? Because if someone takes a shot at him, he'll be shooting back. Right. This is this is really how I feel. This is what we. And need. then the wife. The wife will. I am so. For, you know. I look at. How can you? I, I just look at the whole thing with but with, with with the McCain and this. And, and if he come, if he gets, I'm leaving the country. You you you, you have a you, you bought a country and a planet. Did you marry the bimbo? Yeah. Oh. What's your name? Oh, now What's that's your not bad. Robin? Robin, oh, I work alone. Nice. Please. <laughs> Robin, nice. please. I will not allow that. More towels when you uh, have a minute. Uh, 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 oh. Howard, oh. Howard. I, you get no, that towel, no, I gotta tell you, I'm, right. da- you, I'm dating a sister. It. You'll get I'm it. I'm dating a sister. You'll get it. Can you tell? Got a shiner. I got a shiner. <laughs> you do have a shiner. What I, happened? You I'm dating a sister. Eye. What happened? I'm Seriously. dating a sister. Why huh? do you have a black eye? Uh, I, I got a. I had a little accident last night, but everything is cool. Everything is fine. Are you on fun. heroin? Did you fall down? I'm not on heroin. I'm not on heroin. I'll tell you what I'm on. I'm on. I'm now mainlining Prilosec. I don't know if you've gotten into it. What is that? I can't tell. What what ha- what's with Ronnie? Ronnie it's the tension. He, he, <laughs> I, I'm listening. He, I had to pull over. You know what it is. I, ha- I told the Korean guy a quick stop, off to the side. What, what he's is a going big on? star. And he's, he's going. A, he's around. a what? He's a big star. You he's don't out know. In Vegas. He's ascended. You look un. <laughs> Believable. Really? You really look unbelievable. Thank you. Oh, you really? Rob, no, I'm, 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 I'm going clockwise. <laughs> Artie, you okay? Oh, yeah. How you doing? All right. Okay. So he's gone from the spoon to sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> just, just put anything down, Ron. Any, is it Ron? No, Artie. 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 Ron Artie. is the guy in the hall. Artie. Artie, Artie you're good, right? <laughs> yeah, Brad. Nice okay. to meet I just, you. I just, man, I just, I just love it, man. Yeah, right. <laughs> but I'm worried. You never did heroin? You never fell into a drug phase in your No. No, no, never. No. Well, no, not always straight. So you don't remember. Right. You don't remember. I don't I'm just, remember. I'm one of. You just, <laughs> You're one of many. It, let me let me ask you about seriously because yeah. I saw a picture of of what's your name, Cindy? Beth. Yeah. Beth. Yeah. She's not a Jew, is she? No. no, no. But she's. But but when you take her by the house, you go. We're going to just call you Beth. Right. And but the, go ahead. Yes. What about Beth? What are you doing? Why? You don't think it's a good idea to get married? You were married. I'm right. sure a wonderful girl. She was with you before you popped. Terrific. She was with you before you were here. I met her in college. You met her in college. Right. You became a billionaire. She didn't <laughs> have it anymore. Okay. Yeah. Don't, don't give me the I'm not hardly. a billionaire. Don't, don't give me the I'm hardly. not a billionaire. I'm not even okay. anywhere near a billionaire. Okay. Why, why do you assume okay. that? Okay. All, All right. right. Go ahead. But go ahead. Whatever. Whatever it is, right. you're not getting enough. Right. That's how I feel. You're right. What do you got to get married again? What is missing? Uh, Are you going to have more kids? Do you want me to answer in a serious way? Please. Okay. No, I have three kids already. Okay. I'm not looking for more children. Right. I've, we, Beth and I have been together eight years. And right. uh, she doesn't want kids. I don't want kids. Okay. All right. So we're on, we're on a good streak there. Perfect. All right. The thing is, uh, when you're with someone for eight years, right. uh, you develop a relationship or you don't. Either you, After a couple of years, you go, listen, it's not working. It's time to move on. Sure. We enjoy each other's company. Okay. Um, this was something I felt uh, strongly about, that uh, we're going to be together for a long time. It doesn't look like I'm going anywhere. She's terrific. I love her in bed. I like to sit and talk to her. Yes, you're absolutely right. I have banged many women. Right. When I was against their will. When I was no, never against their (laughs) will. Against their will. And I was thinking about it this morning. There was a girl I was thinking about who was naked in my room in a pair of high heels. The whole thing. Right. I was thinking about her. She one of the ones. And I said, but the thing was, we didn't click afterwards. That's the thing. After the sex. Right. You know, it's so Beth and I click. I like being with her. So why marry it? Because why we, Mary? because because it's the I power of the pink. No, it's the power no, of the pink. No, no, no. She's got your corner. She, she never asked me to be. Would she be, be with you if you didn't get married? Yes. And you really believe that? I know it. Okay. I so know, why, why, why go through the embarrassment of, of the prenup 
and everything else. Why go through all that and j- just hang? Because I think it's a she'll, way. She'll I think it's a, a way of saying to her what? family and to oh, saying her family. To, oh, they're to, Jew haters. And saying to her, <laughs> they hate Jews. <laughs> they don't hate Whoa. Jews. Yes, they do. <laughs> they love Jesus. Well, that okay. Well, that's a story. Same thing. That's a story. You went to Carpenter. The minute they get upset, I told you that he was this. I th- and I Look, really do please. love her, and I All really right. wanted to make right. that kind of statement to her. Now, listen, right. I don't guarantee that. It, uh, unlike some people, right? I I hope the marriage will be forever. I wish. You everything could get, uh, a panusa be banachor. Right. And, I, and I, I wish you all. And I want the gifts. You're I never going to get married again. He's going to be married again. Of course he is. Of course he is. You want to? I wish you were a gambler because I've heard about you in Vegas. I, I know you're I tight. Bet you I know you're tight. I would have bet I know on me. you're tight. Go ahead. Yeah. Now, do you think you would have gotten married five, six years ago? No. Okay. So no. why? But I met a great girl. Okay. The world is full of great girls. No, she's it's hot. Not. Yes, she's hot. Yes, she talks. Yes, she listens. Good in bed. She she's good in bed. Right. Yeah, because that's rare. <laughs> Howard, just just listen. Because that's rare. just just listen. So you think I should look get at mad. all your anger? Look what you did to Ronnie today. Yeah. He's a guy that you know he gets zero. I mean, right. look at him. Look at him. Even the the black guy in the parking lot's going. Let, let me meet Howard. You think I'm just, just an angry guy? I think I think like me. Yeah. I think like me. It's the big Jew little wiener thing, which you know it is. <laughs> you know it is because I'm, I'm I'm right behind you. I can't believe you're a Jew. You look so goyish. Stop. All right. It. So, wait, Stop. so listen. Let me. When's understand. the date? When's the date? I don't know if you. When is the? I we're mean, soon like, we're getting uh, married. Soon. We're getting married okay. soon. I'm not going to follow you to the church. I'm afraid you're going to stalk me. Did the, did the family uh, make you do the? Uh, I'm sure you can't have the chuppah. No, we're because not doing Because that doesn't anything work with like the clan. It, the clan can't stand under it with the hoods. Mark Consuelos. Are you going, Robin? Mark Consuelos. Yes, Robin, let me ask you. So let's say what? you had your own show tomorrow, and, and you were able to stop. You know, kissing the white guy's ass. Oh Honestly, my God. stop it! Oh, who said? Oh, if you don't put the sandwich down, I, I'm going to give you a shower. Put the sandwich down. Were you kissing Ray Romano's ass all those years? No, I auditioned. Oh, I auditioned. I didn't walk into it. Oh. Oh, like, that's please. What I did. And who's that's the blonde in the lobby who does the weather and doesn't go outside for nine hours? Who, who's asking to go running around? Oh, Lisa G. Who, what's going uh, on? You don't like her? It's not I don't like her, but it's. Wow. I was going to set you up. You were going to set Why? Because you're done with her? Because you're getting married now? Are you crazy? Did you ever strip that? Because I see you you with something like that. I see you with the Jew broad. I see you with the chick like that who walks around. This is a doll. I'm banging her. Who is? Me. You? Well, really? Yeah. Why, does she have a good gravy recipe, or you just dig her? <laughs> oh. no. Come on, Artie. He is not having sex with her, nor am I. No, but I, I thought would. maybe... Someone has to. Someone's got to, to, someone has to rescue that. We I thought it was going to be you. No, no one's no one's having sex. So Ooh, are you having doing? a show, a TV show, where you're going to date? A Let girl. me tell you what it is, and I know you'll get it. It is the anti. You know those douchey shows like The Bachelor, right? Where they have this mannequin. Show. Of course you do. Yeah. Of course you do. And once you marry Beth, you'll have to TiVo it because <laughs> she lives through it. I TiVo it as it is. Okay. I love the show. You got this mannequin standing in a castle with right. the rose, who's right. probably gay, <laughs> right? <laughs> who, 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 so to me, it was. It's not a dating show. Right. It's a com. It, it's a, a guy in a Midlife crisis, right. schmoes like me, right. who and 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 what kind of genetic bouillabaisse base I have a, a, a chance of getting? Hey everybody, I'm Brad Garrett, and uh, well, here's the bad news: I'm looking for love. That should do it. Oh, wait, is this recording? Is this recording? Oh, hi. Well, I'm not looking for a think tank. I have a pet hamster. His name is Jean Michel. He's French. Low self-esteem. You know, I think is important. My goal, however pathetic it is, is to have one day this summer. So I'm thinking you be it. Now you've met some of the ladies who want to date Brad. Come back next week to watch his first date. That's how lonely I am. They said what we'll do is we'll run it online, you'll do a plea about how you want to meet. It was it was national for three months. Have a date with Brad Garrett. Twenty-seven people. <laughs> Uploaded their video. One was a guy. Oh, no. one was a bear. <laughs> this isn't a thing. It was it was some redneck from the south uh, who, who got a shot of this bear going through his trash. Right. And he gave it a name and put it. I love you. You know. You yeah, don't right. have to tell you about the. Right. Okay. right. So this is what twenty seven women out of them. Now now let me tell you who the the panel of experts is. Uh, my ex wife Jill. Right. My mom. You Jill know, gets to... You, Jill, my urologist, right. Dr. Sam Spiegelman, yeah. who did the uh, vasectomy. So where is this going to air? Uh, on uh, Crackle.com, which is Sony's 
a Sony's be website. Honest for once. Be you totally were, honest. You were hoping to meet some hot chicks through the show. How it, could it didn't I work hope? out? Let me ask you something. It didn't work out. Didn't work out. Do, do, look, look. I'm is open. that what you're saying? I'm showing you how open I am. But let me tell you what you it is. You can say it was for TV, but meanwhile, you wanted a date. You're, you're not you being honest. Let me ask you You're something. not being First honest. First of all, I'm not from, like, Russia or something <laughs> where I think I'm going to meet the love of my life. No, me. but you were hoping you would meet someone hoping? hot. Do you have any idea who would upload their video to meet me? <laughs> Do you have any idea but some of these hope. people? You had hope. I had hope. Did I had see? hope for, for to be able to come up with 50 minutes. Were there good-looking funny... girls? They were <laughs> wonderful people. Right. Uh, not one good look at, there was not one beauty in the whole lot? <laughs> one skin like ivory. Right. Was one of them. Right. Which means tusks. <laughs> oh. uh, one had a tail. Right. And could do incredible why things. Do you, why, why are you not a good looking guy? So, I mean, you look like a nice, handsome for, guy. First of all, it's the lighting. No, okay, seriously. Everything is, look, you look great in here. Yeah, it, but it's come the on. way you light your studio. <laughs> you're not a bad looking you're, guy. It's not a matter of bad looking. You're very it's rich from Raymond. Very rich. I mean, you're rich, rich from that show. Rich from that show. You're a billionaire. Show. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm a thousandaire. I'm a thousandaire. You're still working. I am still working. I'm making a lot of money. Why are you moving like that in the chair? Let us in on the secret. What? No, you, She's you hot for little, you. No, I don't think that's it. I don't think. <laughs> she can barely keep putting herself Is your guy a white man? Is your guy a I white man? I don't have a guy right now. You didn't like... Are you gay? Seriously, <laughs> I want to know. I want to know. No, I want to know. No. I want to know. Well, I'm telling you, you, But no. you've been with a woman, right? Brad, no. Let me ask you something. Come Brad. on. Never. You can't work on this show. You don't think we've not, covered that? Not, <laughs> Brad, let me ask Artie, you something. Artie, the clam chowder's ready. He hasn't stopped eating since you're here. What the hell's going on? I don't this know. This is like my fourth date it's on the show. If you, if you tune into uh, episode four, it's Artie, but with smaller boobs. Is it, is it really? It is. Artie, I got it. You know, this guy's an amazing comic. He's terrific. I, 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 no, no, I do have to tell you something. What? Really, not only do you draw like crazy, <laughs> thanks to Ronnie and his show, right? But you know, I followed him into a couple rooms, and it's this, he, this he guy, devastates. This, devastates. this, this guy's great. amazing, man. He is. No, no, no. I just want to tell you. Are seriously. you uh, really? Yeah, because oh, okay. you know me. I'm a hack. You know what do I do? It's like you know, what if Cosby was a pilot? You know, who needs? When you're 48, it should stop. Do you? Let me ask you a question. Anything? Anything? Why? You know, Ron's so... going to take his life. He's going to hang himself off a curb. If I you was know. so cynical like you. Why did you wait, get wait, wait. married? If you were cynical like, like you, me, yes, you are under, well, such a. She has you under a spell. Let me this broad must forget in bed. She wait. must be. She's she probably a levitate. Girl. She's she a probably, girl. What's great about her besides the sex? And she's a, what is great about her? Hey, she's huh? beautiful. Okay, uh, we said that. Okay, she's beautiful. Well, you asked Hot me, in bed. You want? She's great. Okay. In bed. Okay. She knows how they split the atom. She's, what else? She oh. is the only person I can think of that. In fact, I even said to her yesterday, we probably spend too much time together because I, I we know are you constantly do. together. Right. Maybe we're codependent. Well, it's because you're insecure. Okay. All right. Whatever it is, I enjoy being around you her. You enjoy showing her off. No, I'm home with her. You're I'm not home. home. I won't even go out. I have pictures of you everywhere. Well, no, I'm not everywhere. Really? You don't go anywhere? Not a lot. I mean, once in a while we do go out. It's like when you go, wh wh where do you go? Well, we'll go to a restaurant. We right. We like to go out to dinner. Right. Right. She's one of the few women I ever went out with who was yes. willing to go to bed with me at 9 o'clock at night. Most of the women would go well, out on their own. Well, that's because she's praying for you to be asleep. Don't you understand? No, no she goes to bed early with me. And that means a lot to me. She goes to bed to early with me? Yeah, yeah. Why do you go to bed early? I wake up at 4 in the morning for work. To do what? To do this. <laughs> You've got to be kidding. You, <laughs> this takes rest? You don't know that this I... This takes rest? <laughs> I, I, <laughs> to sit with one leg on the... Yeah. the this is unbelievable. It's not I don't know how you ever get up for it's it. It's not easy being this funny. No, it's... I hear you. <laughs> let, let me tell you Trust something. me, I got the reviews to prove it. <laughs> when you're with a chick that hot... I know what Because, you know, doing. you're an insecure I know guy. what she's doing right now. Yeah? What, what, what is she doing? She's running 10 miles. She's training for the New York City Marathon. She just raised 200 grand for the uh, North Shore Animal League. <laughs> Go ahead, man. You are the that. luckiest fuck in the world. She's you a know terrific that? girl. How did you end up with a chick who looks like that and runs 10 miles? Runs 10 miles. She's yeah. a terrific girl. They run 10 miles a day from me. But well, let me know. This is what they do. Like, they'll call me and they'll go, hey, Jew, 80 miles away from you. And but, they'll hang up. Well, you, first you, you mean, she very, runs and then comes back? You're a very intense. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she is. Seriously? You've gone out with girls that run and then they never return? They run. They run. I mean, they're, they're like, just bring the car down at 10 and I'm, I can get out. You're they must, do a you tuck must and be roll. a very difficult guy to live with because I see I you're very, very, very intense. Angry. Very angry. It's not angry. I'm insecure. You know what it Why is? Why did you get married the first time? I can't even imagine you being romantic with somebody. I mean, the first time. Can so I tell jaded, you something? Yeah. yeah. Can I tell you something? Go ahead. And this, be, this and be sincere. Okay. All right. And be honest. I'm very incredibly romantic. Are you? Very, very, very much. What went wrong in your marriage? Nothing. Me. Me went wrong. 
You run too many hot dogs. You're taking full credit. Me went wrong. Me went wrong. Jude, I said that. Me went wrong. Yeah. You bet. Fire, good. Could have been my conversation. Me wrong. You you touch it. Did you ever host Saturday Night Live? No. Why not? No, they don't want me to. You'd be terrific. I, they, look, you know, it's. It's not like the phone's ringing and I'm going, don't answer it. Right. You would do it if they called. Of course I would. I right. would that would be unbelievable. I think it's but, a good fit, actually. Well, what do you You're know? You're a funny guy. You know. Well, it's I can nice see you in you. a sketch. I think no way good. I could go to the wedding and save you from it. You want to come to my wedding? You want to stand up when they say, speak I now? Would, I wouldn't. Because he'll, he'll have shooters there. I know him. He'll, he'll, have, he'll, he'll, have, he'll have marksmen yeah. on the chuppa. If you want to come to my wedding, you can come. How's that? And you can laugh at me. I, I don't. I, it just, you know, it gives me, it just, I, I just... It I doesn't give it you just... hope. I know you want to get married again. You want to know something? Why would you say that? Why you would do. You, say... you want you to do. meet a great you girl. You got married once. Right. You want to get married yeah. again. You, you, you're not, you're not... I have a great girl. I have an amazing girl. Who and is I've, it? I've just... First of all... See, she I won't see, even I say. I don't do that. Huh? Who is this girl? She won't tell me. But she's... I follow her <laughs> with my <laughs> headlights <laughs> off. And she... Her name is Squeaky From. Her name is... is what okay. it, come on. Honestly. Okay. It's Who are you saying? Where did you meet this girl? SF. Where did you meet the girl? Um... I, I met her at a uh, at a benefit. No I, kidding. I met her at a benefit. Young girl, I imagine. Um, younger than me. How old? <sighs> Eighteen. <laughs> now old is she? No, she's uh, she's great. What's she in her twenties? Huh? Twenty two? No, no. Twenty four? Nope. What's the cutoff for you? Uh, a spry seventy. No, come on. How old is your girl? She's thirty nine. You're lying. I'm not. I can see it on your face. You're lying. lying. You're lying all over the place. I'm not, man. So you know, you know what? You're lying. You don't know men. You only know women. <laughs> Thank God. Now I want you to look at this mole yeah. and just go good or bad. <laughs> just look at the mole. Good. Thank you. All right. Ah, me bad. Now, what is it I said earlier? What was the benefit for? Hmm? What was the benefit for when you met this girl? It was it was for uh it was for acid reflux. Does she have acid reflux? Is <laughs> no, that why I, she's no, with I you? Do. No, but I do. <laughs> Seriously. I get around dairy and I, uh, I, I heave like a gene I, I said to you when so you came So you're never going to marry this wonderful girl? She, she, she won't marry me. No. And, and nor does she believe. It's great. See, see. She doesn't believe in marriage either, is which is awesome. Right? She's hot. She's How hot, much are you she's paying great. that first wife? Is it true what I'm reading here? You know what? Whatever I'm paying her. a month. Whatever I'm paying her is not enough. Really? The hush money alone. <laughs> is it worth is it? it? $55,000 a month. 55000 after tax dollars go to the ex-wife and the kid. That's a lot of I money. I want everyone happy. That's, that's a lot of pressure. I want everyone happy. Is everyone happy? <laughs> you know we're getting there. You are. We're getting there. The fact you that know? your ex-wife would be a part of a TV show with you. Well, that kind of shows you. That we're sure we're, we're amazing friends. You right. know, I'm a strong cup of coffee. Right. I see that. I, I know I you see. do. I but, see but, but But see, I was you when you were at your prime. The only difference is, you know, no one wants a market man. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only difference. I mean, you know, there was a time when they would go, Howard is this, Howard is that. D- don't don't ever walk this? in front of me. Oh, here's working. the girl you're dating. Oh, Whoa. Oh, very picture. nice. Really? Very Who nice. Who did that? Let me see. Uh-huh. Can I see? Go ahead and see. Am I right or wrong? Uh, I'll yeah. show you what's hysterical. Can I tell you who this is? Who is, who is that? that? Who is it? Oh, my God. This who is, is unbelievable. See, this is why, another <laughs> thing, I hate the friggin' paparazzi. You want to know who that Brad is? Brad Garrett, right, and guest. ALS Benefit, hosted by Entertainment Tonight's Mark Steinis. Here you are, June 4th, with it's your girl. It's a benefit. Girl. <laughs> that is not her. Who is she? That who is, is that? not her. Who is that? Who is that? A hooker. That's a hooker. Well, a lady of the evening. No. <laughs> she, I am her gentleman caller. Who is that? Huh? That's your boyfriend. That's your girlfriend. That's, That's your my boyfriend. boyfriend. <laughs> Sorry, you're Unbelievable. I might know. Unbelievable. <laughs> Artie, would you do that? Would you do that if she had a you know quarter chicken under the arm? Oh, would, you, would you do that? Yeah. Is that your girl? Huh? Is that your girl? No, it is not. Who is that? Who is it, it was someone that, well, see, this is what's crazy. That's someone that I, I dated over a year ago okay. who is now almost married. Attractive girl. She's, she's a, she was a lovely lady. Yeah. What went wrong there? Me. You. Again, Me. you're There's tough no to take. I'm tough to take. You're I'm tough, tough to take. To, I'm, I can see. I'm, 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 I'm tough to take, but, but can I tell you something? I am, I am working on it, and I'm doing a lot of things, and I'm working. What do you I'm, mean? What are I you could, doing? I'm in group therapy alone. Group therapy alone. This is, I have it done. No one wants to be in your group. Well, that, that's the thing. That's you were the in thing. a group, and then they all left. <laughs> that's, <laughs> they ran away. That's exactly what it was. So you're in therapy? Are you in therapy? I, I, oh, God, aren't you? Of course. Well, it's unbelievable. It. Why are you this in therapy? This couch 
his couch actually breaks into a bed. So what is it goes on in this therapy? You go three, four times a week? I go three times a day. Three times a day? I go three times a day. <laughs> and, uh, you when, barely have time yeah. for work. Well, no. I, right. Who works? Right. Who works? No, you, you work. Know. You have a big um, hit series, Till well, Death. Well, thank you. Thank yes. you. Till and Death, by till, the way, which, by death. the way, is really funny. Thank Brad's you for a that. funny guy. That's nice of you. See Thank Brad you. Garrett on You're getting Kill soft. Death. You're no, getting no, soft. you're funny. If you sucked, you. I tell you. All right. You're not All right. an asshole. You're nice. Thank you. Listen, we have Wednesday nights at nine after the Fox Show Boners. So we're on a. Uh, uh, <laughs> Is that right, Boners? Nine o'clock at. <laughs> Bones. 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 I'm sorry. Bones. Brad Garrett. <laughs> You are tremendous. You're, you're what nice. you're talking about is Till Death. This right. is a television show that is funny. Jolie Fisher, J.B. Smoove. Jolie Fisher's and terrific me. in it. Thank you. I didn't Thank think you. the two of you would work together well, but you do. Thank you. It is magic. Thank you. And Till Death premieres this Wednesday night at 9 o'clock on Fox. To give you an idea how good the show is, it survived one season already. Yeah, we're That's in our third. Major. We're in our third. Ray Romano's on the phone. Yeah, Ray, go ahead. Hello, Howard. Fred Romano. How Hi. are you? Good. This Brett Garrett's such a fucking douchebag. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. What are you, what are you doing hitting on that Sitsoon Rob in your asshole? <laughs> Sitsoon. <laughs> right, thank you. Ray. <laughs> that's funny. That's Ray's subconscious. That's what I love about it. That is exactly what it would say. Let me tell you something, Brett Garrett. Yes, sir. You've knocked the comedy world on its ass. Oh, boy. Your career is second to none. Really? I believe that you... Oh, you're on Lexapro. This Lexa is even the last stop. You're on Lexapro. Absolutely, I am. I know. I'm I heavily medicated. Some more. See Brad Garrett on Till Death. It really you. is a fun show. Thank it you. Premieres Thanks this for having Where me. Where are you going? Man. I'm not done yet. Sit okay. down. Sit down. All right. I am sitting down. I'm just really tall. <laughs> Nine o'clock on Fox. See Brad on Dating Brad Garrett. It must be hard dating Brad Garrett because you got to be a tall woman, right? You don't go out with short women. Uh, you know, uh, I, I am, I am You'll with take a five foot three person. No. Is yep. that right? Wow. Yep. The girl you're seeing now is Five three. Yep. And what are you? Six seven. Six eight. Six wow. eight. Wow. Is telling that true? You, it's like the. Uh, it's you like could the pick her up and. It's the. I do. That's the thing. I pick her up and do whatever that motion just are you, was. Does it look weird when you walk down the street with her and you're holding hands? Uh, only if I'm in a top hat. Let me see. Is this her? Yeah. Uh, Let's see if that's her. Let's see if that's her. You're wow. really good. Uh, is let this me see. really your girl? Let me see. Well, okay. Let me see. Now you're rolling. Let now me this see. is my type. That's the one, huh? Ah, that must be her. That's her. That's her, man. She's good looking. Let me see that again. That's her, man. She's hot. Let me see, this, you. You. Let me see this broad. She is hot. She is. She's, she's 39? She's, she's 39, man. Look at this one. And right, smart. Right. And smart. So smart, I oh. think she's leaving me. <laughs> you don't respect any woman that stays with you. No, no. Well, that's kind of, that's kind of, see, that's, that, that, that What hurt. do you think of that, Artie? Wait, wait, wait. Is, that, is that Newark Airport? Already picture with a side of greens. <laughs> no, she's hot. Yeah, she's got <laughs> she's sexy hair. Yeah. I don't like greens. <laughs> I'm getting, I'm, 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 yeah, this over here. Girl, my like favorite line, line when you went Jew Hefner, I, I fell out of the car. <laughs> when you did that today, I fell out of the car. <laughs> well, he is Jew Hefner. She's she's cute, right, Artie? Yeah, man. Artie, she's sexy. Artie, take the bib off. You can see it easier. Uh, <laughs> you gotta bend, I've been looking at this picture. What is it, a hologram? No, you got to bend over to... Uh, oh. How do you all. sweat just sitting there reading the form? <laughs> he's reading the racing form. Well, he just got off subutext, in all fairness. Oh, are, are, are you really? I'm having withdrawals. He's, go, he's going through withdrawals. Okay, really? He, yeah, all right. he really is. He's, you, go, you know he's, what? he's going through heroin withdrawals on no, no. the show. All right. Okay, so you know what? It's an interesting sub- show. <laughs> I just got to say that pales to my acid <laughs> reflux. I know. That I mean, really I, does. I'm are you all right to, today? Yeah, I'm trying to like laugh at your shit, but I can't. No, no, no. You don't have to laugh at my shit. You'll never be that sober. Don't worry. Listen, I wish you I wish you Godspeed with it. And I love that you got the balls to get it together because you know i used to hit the sauce <laughs> yeah, you know? Know. i know you did you were I, I did 11 years 11 years without it you're man. 11 years sober how are you 11, enjoying wow, your sobriety more than anything in the world and let me tell you one thing i know your biggest fear can i just tell you what it is it's been funny sober and let me tell you you will be funnier because you're brilliant <laughs> and i'm telling you, you know, are you being you, serious now? You're, you're an incredible stand-up man oh thank wait you. until and i know right, I'm just telling you, and I'm not the type to preach. I do more jokes about being drunk because right. I'm not, I'm not, I, I don't pontificate, huh. nor do I want to, nor does anyone want to hear What did you used to drink? Huh? What was your big drink? It was some, it was a, a, a drink called everything. Right. And uh, <laughs> I would do just a little of it. I've had that. And, right? and, and you had to go, what, did you go to a rehab? You know what I did? I grew a pair and said, for, I'm done trying to kill myself. That's it. 
And I was done. And you were done. And I was done. I was, I was a very high-functioning alcoholic. Right. Life was great. Now, Artie functions on people. heroin. Uh, but yeah, well, Artie's on I know, I know, but, but, but he shows it all on his sleeve. Right. He shows it right. all on his sleeve. You know, because I've, been, I, I've heard about, you know, he comes out You've on You've said yeah. something here that's profound, because mm-hmm. I think you got to the heart of the matter. Mm-hmm. That is Artie's fear. Yes. He is afraid he won't be funny. That is not. most artists' fear who are users. Right. And Art, did you hear what Brad Garrett just said? Well, I, uh, most of the what? time I'm sober in here. No, you're not. Yes, no, 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 you're not. <laughs> no, no, most of the time you're never sober. <laughs> no. don't, don't look. You don't, think don't, I'm on look. something now? Look, if you're not ready to look at it, then keep using. I am. But okay. don't don't bullshit yourself in the world because the bottom line is this: it's better on the other side. Right. And you know, I don't want to hear that I only have a beer, I only have a glass of wine. Please don't do that. I don't do that. Either straighten it up <laughs> or go back. Incident. But if you're not ready, don't waste your time. Don't w- waste don't anybody's time. Don't waste my time. time yet. Don't waste Brad's yeah. time. You know what you do? You know what? Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying well, to. Well, wait. You know, Brad gave you makes some sense very, here. very good advice. I don't know if he's serious or not. He is. I, I could be. Boy, well, look, I went. Artie, I'm over here. <laughs> I went through it, Artie. Him, Artie. Artie, I, I went know, through it. I, I, yeah. No, no, you don't know anything. I, I, I'm sharing something with you that is that is very, you know. <laughs> you, what do you mean you know that, Artie? Artie? You don't know that. Him, really? he's just, <laughs> no, he's I heard crazy. that he went through it. Peter Boyle told me while we were smoking a joint. You know what? <laughs> you with the Peter Boyle story is unbelievable. Oh, my God. I wish uh, I had a picture of that. It's unbelievable. It was right, by, unbelievable. It was right by ER. I think you got through to Artie. No, yeah, I, I, through to Artie. What? I think you got through to him. Uh, you hit it on the head. I even wrote this Pray. in the forward to his new book. I said, he thinks he's not going to be funny. That's if he not, gives no. But that is book. every artist's fear. I'll yeah. never paint like I used to. I'll never write like I used to. Right. He thinks I don't, he's every you know, I don't the... the, appreciate the patronizing from Brett. Patronizing? Uh, well, how would you know I'm a good comedian? You never saw me do stand Okay, on. first of all, I saw you on the bill with Dice when yeah. you were in, what was it, Newport? So he did see you. You okay. did? Wait, wait, you were at that show? No, yeah, I, did, I just didn't go backstage and, and fawn over you. I, I saw you. You got a lot of talent. Right. You're funny on the show. I don't have to tell you. I wish you Godspeed. I wish you were the at best. the show. I, I was sitting in the back and I, 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 I caught it. What? There you go. Mm-hmm. You what were? You say, yeah. Yeah, I was. Yeah, I get out a little bit. <laughs> Not a lot. I, I, wanted, I wanted to see what, because I hear Artie this, Artie that, and I'm like, please. <laughs> no, I, I got it. He's got a it very tell. accomplished stand-up, he right? He is. You're not just blowing smoke. He is smoke a funny... Ca- Why would I blow... Some- yeah, I'm trying to get in with Artie. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe yeah. I'll help your career. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm telling you. Take all I can get. So, in other words... Well, that's very nice. You're coming from a, a, a spot that is not from comedy. You're coming as a human being and saying to Artie, things will be better when you're sober. Like, you cannot believe. And when I started to get sober, people would tell me that. I wanted to, I wanted to put them through a wall. Right. Because it's the last thing you want to hear, and you think they don't get it. But I had sober people telling me... You know, and it's and does he bottom, have to be off everything? Should he stop drinking? Can absolutely, he, he has to. You can't. can't any other, it, it is the personality. It is the personality. Right. You know. I mean, he thinks he can go back well, to drinking. Huh? He thinks he can go back. Well, that's that. because I'm he's asking. not ready. He's because he's not ready. Or I'll smoke a joint once in a while. You know. Right. Or I'll, you, 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 it, it's it's the personality. It's the you, you gotta you know it's it. But you gotta be ready. See, I was I was ready. You gotta be ready. How do you know when you're ready? Tell Artie when he's ready. Is Artie ready? You stop. Are you ready? Well, I just want to th- the, the night he saw me, I was funny. I was wasted. <laughs> yeah, you were really, really out there, man. He was really, really out there. No, listen, that's unbelievably nice of you to say. And I'm, well, I'm, just, I'm just, look, the uh, main thing is I just, you know, I, 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 I think it's awesome what you're doing. And, and I think it's, you're continuing to work and you're, and you're doing it because a lot of people dig you and you're, you know, and you're doing it in public and you're doing it. In the, and you're saying you didn't I, I have to huge. go anywhere. You didn't do any rehab. You, you, you know, I, I, I went. Uh, but he's in therapy. Hold well, on. Well, I've been I'm in therapy since I was he, nine. I've been in therapy my whole life. Are you in therapy, Artie? I am, yeah. Yeah? I, I, well, I, yeah, for, for the past month, I've been. No, you just lied. No, he is. No, you just lied. What do you mean he lied? No, he doesn't go anymore. What? Ask him. Are you following me? Are you not going or not, Artie? No, of course I go. What was the last time you went, Artie? Um. Uh huh. Oh, wait, we have the same doctor problem. Uh-huh. Is he telling you what? What are you carpooling with Ronnie now? <laughs> no, 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 no. no. I, 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 you I, saying... I'm going tomorrow. I go Tuesdays. I'm going tomorrow. I go Tuesdays and Thursdays. Tomorrow, My dog tomorrow. ate the homework, Kevin. Well, why are you saying he's My not going? My dog, because he's not. I go Tuesdays and Thursdays. Let me tell you something. You'll drop the alcohol, but you can still have the isms. <laughs> you yes, know what that means? Yes. Racism. You can get rid of the stuff, but you still got the shit. I'm right. still working on my shit. 
I don't want to. You don't think he's in therapy? Huh? How do you? Why are you saying he's not in therapy? How come you went from every day to two days? I didn't go every day. Listen to the sister. I went every day. Listen to the sister. Give him an old fashioned back porch reading. Give it to him. Brad still has the racism. Let the alcohol talk. Marty, did you go to therapy last week? Well, I he, he canceled Thursday. He yeah, canceled. The shrink okay. canceled. He it. did. The shrink's done. Because no, uh, it's not done. Yeah. The I went Tuesday yeah. and Thursday. He's gonna lose his license. <laughs> <laughs> are you going this week, right? Yes, Where's I will be there tomorrow. Going? Why are you saying he's not but going? But what happened to the every day? What? what? He going well, tomorrow. the guy, the guy what, said, what, what, I don't have to go you, Wait, why are you saying he's going tomorrow? What because, does that mean? Because he's he's gonna avoid it, man. Yeah, what? How did he, what? First of all, he's right. He I'm, went from I'm going to I'm not going to I'm going tomorrow. Don't you listen? You got headphones. I, 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 <laughs> you're unbelievable. All I'm you're not, thinking about, oh, I can't wait to uh, to put this on Beth, which is in the... Just let it alone. You want to know something? What are you going to do when you're tired of the trim? When you're tired of sleeping with her, what are you going to we'll do? We'll get a divorce. Yeah. We'll get a divorce. I hope I'm tired you. of the I hope trim. You don't here's do 80, that. Here's, to her, here's 80% of my If mind. we're not having sex, what's the point of being married? If you're having sex, why get married? Because we're enjoying each other. Yo, you're it's right. So? Why throw a wrench in it? We're not. <laughs> why does it have to. Listen, if it throws a wrench, Beth and I have looked at each other. If marriage sucks, we're getting out. We're getting oh, out. There is not a woman in the world that'll make that agreement and mean it. Are you that naive? Yes. <laughs> Call me naive. <laughs> it's got to be love, I even man. believe Artie's going into therapy. That's how That's naive I am. Wow. All right. Wow. All right. Call me naive. You've gotten soft, baby. <laughs> Call me soft. I don't I care. I love it, man. Well, Brad, you are You're a great. delight. You think I'm fucked up? Look at my new assistant. Look at her. Is that, is that your assistant? <laughs> it's going to be. That's going to be? Yeah. Yeah. That'll put you right back on the smack. <laughs> Yeah, you get yourself a Puerto Rican broad like that, she's going to take a knife to your throat and you're going to take out the spoon and you're going to go, I don't care. You think I'm kidding? Brad, let's be... Of, let's, look at her. You don't hire an assistant that has an 8 by 10 glossy, you schmuck. <laughs> well, what are you, that's not an assistant. He keeps a hooker who can get a ride three days a week into the city. What's wrong with you, Artie? Listen to me. You're going to stop or you're going to start. Brad, uh, here's a good idea. Get an assistant you don't want to bang. How does that sound? How does that, that sound? That ain't going to happen. It's not going to happen. Listen I had to me. My first one was You've that. spoken a lot of oh. truth. All right. Well, and I, you've I also, the tea, man. You've also said some things that I are outrageous. Tea. I'm sorry. And that really should never have been spoken. You're right. Uh, <laughs> get any class. But look, you don't, and that's it. Look, Brad Garrett, you are a superstar. Oh, and you are on till death. And that's the show. <laughs> Watch this man on TV. What I'm kind telling of food you. you like, this what? I'm going to send you a little something. She's full vegan. She doesn't eat. She hardly. She has wheatgrass and. Oh, that, that'll never fly. Yeah. No. She takes enemas. Uh, Don't oh, ask what goes. Well, that'll on. work. That'll work. You like that'll that? Work. For sure. You to start. Anal? Are you into anal? Um, I'll be. I have trouble getting in the other end. I'm not yeah. going to lie to you. All right. <laughs> Brad, how'd it right. go in there, man? It went good. It went good. He's my man. You know, I have a good time in there. Dude, so you're really opposed to this marriage, huh? Well, look, it's going to work. Look, if, he, if he's marrying it, it's going to work. And what do you think about Artie? You think this is going to work out for him? Artie, Artie's done. This is going to be Artie in three weeks. You All gave right. him good advice. I'm, how are you? Good. Okay, take care. <laughs> no, that can't be the answer. It's Ronnie. Right? you got to follow Ronnie, your man. Ronnie, right? I was right. easy on you, wasn't I? You were good today. Right? I was okay with you. I caught enough shit before you got here. I, know, I listened, man. I feel bad. All right, man. Nice Lisa, to, nice seeing you. It's really a pleasure. I, I think he's hot for you, Howard. Did you ever have a thing? No, I'm hot for him. We all was hot for Howard, right? You Take know, care, Brad. Honestly. All the best, Polly. Good yeah. seeing you again. Take care. Thanks. Up for Stain. Came to see Howard today. Our record comes out today. Illusion of progress. Uh, always excited to come be on the show. All been listeners for a bunch of years, so uh, it's an honor to be here as always. Now, guys, it's been uh, quite a while since you've been here. What's anything has changed? What's new? New record. That's basically it. Uh, back out on the road right now. We'll be touring uh, the rest of the year, next year, and uh, just promoting the record. Working. All right, cool. Have fun in there, guys. Thanks. Thanks. Good morning. Welcome to Sirius Satellite Radio. Another morning, another fun show. And uh, our good friends from Stained are here. They're hanging out. They're hey, talking guys. over there. What are they talking about? I think they're high. 
I hugged somebody and I got high. Rock and roll. I was talking to Aaron. I got high. I was telling the, the pot is just coming off of them. Boys, we've been smoking this morning or what? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. You guys got some strong it's, weed. I mean, uh, oh, do you smell it? It's in my. Why can you guys act so normal and uh, be with weed? Well, if I do weed, it would be very apparent. Flat. I'd be paranoid. I'd be walking around here. Is everybody smoking this morning? No, just no. us no. two. No. Oh, just okay. comes from years of experience. Yeah. It's amazing. I could never smoke like that. You guys win strongest weed uh, from a guest ever. You just you just beat out Snoop Dogg, who had the record for four years. <laughs> At least we win something. <laughs> it's great because, you know, Aaron comes over next to me smelling like weed, and then he says, That's hey. in my pocket. He goes, this is for you. No, man, it's on you, man. I, I mean, it's in you. It's in your blood. It's like, it's like an Italian with garlic. You, um, then he handed me some new kind of vodka. What is that vodka? It's a uh, hammer sickle. Hammer sickle. It's a and new vodka. That from? I don't know, but Russia. Russia. But it's a couple of bottles, and I'm going to drink them. I, Very uh, good. It must be good stuff. That's a perfect gift for me, man. It's worth Thanks. drinking. Yeah, hammer and sickle. So, uh, how you guys been? Very good. We're going back out on tour again, or what? We're out. Oh, you're out for the new album. Been out since the end of June. And Howard, uh, uh, the yeah. new stained album. This is the coolest album, man. The Illusion of Progress. I uh -huh. like that. Hmm. You like that? I do, yeah. It's very heavy. What, what, do, we, what mean? do we mean, Illusion of Progress? It, it really means whatever the fuck you want it to mean. Uh, <laughs> Did you come up with this when you were no, stoned? No, it was, it was a conversation. We were, actually, we were fucking off, not doing any work, and we were supposed to be in the really? studio rehearsing. Right. And we were all standing around talking, and... and Johnny K, the producer, said something about it, like, you know, what the fuck, guys, are we going to get something done today? And I was like, yeah, it's kind of like the illusion of progress. It is. And a, I was just like... That's mm, a great title. That's, that's, that's a really good title for the yeah. record. The record business is tough today, man. I mean, even when you make a hit album, it's hard to even gauge the sales because everybody's busy downloading and stuff. From yeah. Terrible, it's, it's a tough business. It yeah. really is. I just saw ACDC themselves announce that they're going to do an album release just through Walmart or something Walmart. like that. But, so, they, but Walmart part, 300... Three million copies of it. Oh my God! Wow. That they can't return. So I mean, for ACDC, it's a home run. Yeah, yeah it's a good sure. yeah. 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 Wait a minute. So the, the album starts off triple platinum. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's yes. what, that's what they sold. Wow. Yeah. That's Imagine what the deal that. is. Wow. Yeah. And you have to wonder why bands are doing things like that. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Well, because <laughs> the record, because done. I got to tell it's, you, it's a non-returnable thing. Once they take them and you get paid, it's done. Yeah. Wow. Well, That's you guys have sold around 10 million albums or something like that, right? Maybe a little more. Than Maybe a little more. 13, 13, 13 million 20, albums, yeah. and and you got in just in time before all this free downloading started. You know, Kinda, who knows yeah. where you would have been? You know what I mean? It, it's it's upsetting to me actually. The, I don't like to it see is. this. The biggest shame to me is that we just spent seven months trying to make the best record of our lives. Right. And you hope that somebody downloads a single. And, right. and the single's not necessarily, to us, it's, I mean, they're good songs, I mean, because we wrote them all, but some of the most, you know, adventurous stuff that we've done, the, uh, the, the stuff that shows the most growth, right. people probably never hear because they download a song, and you don't get to hear the whole record. And, and we try to make a record that's listenable from beginning to end. Yeah, that, records you know, used to be a journey, even like yeah, the right, Who, right, like a, a story. rock opera. Exactly, yeah. and we try to make something that's, yeah. you know, it can entertain you the whole way through. It so. is much harder for bands today than it ever was in the history of the music business. It is really difficult, and somehow uh, the art of the album has been lost. Sure. That was my greatest joy in high school when I would go home and get these albums and open them up and listen to every song and know the words to every song. Sure. It's tough. It really you try is. to figure out why side one and side two were different. Why is the placement of a song here? Sure. That's all right. gone. Yeah. Yeah. Well, sure. uh, you're going to do the song Believe now from uh, your new album. The, al the album's uh, available now? Yeah. Is it, it's released. Today. today is the day. Today is the day. This big, is the day big day today. Uh, the song Believe, what do we believe in? What are we talking about here? Do we give explanations? Is it the Cher song? We Yeah, our Cher song was Believe, wasn't it? <laughs> do you believe? We are killing it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, why'd you write this song? What's going on here? Give me, give me some kind of... Uh, you know, we, we, I, I approached some songs on this record a little differently than I normally would have, where where me and Johnny K just kind of sat and had a conversation about about whatever it was. See, he wanted me to figure out what my songs were about before I wrote them, and I don't normally do that. So it was kind of a different process for, for some songs. I mean, sometimes you write a song... Always. ...and you don't even know... You yourself don't know what it's about. No. You mean, you just, these lyrics just come out of you. Yeah. And you say, gee, I don't even know what this means. Yeah. Can you figure it out after? Usually. Yeah. I don't buy that, though. You mean you, you, you like the sound of the lyrics more than the meaning behind no, them? No, it just comes out. I, I, it's not really, like, toiled over pen and paper and, right. and, you know, what's the perfect way, 
you know. But you write it down. You write it down. Um, You know, usually it comes out over the microphone and onto a recording first, and then I go back and kind of listen and so you and write you down. yourself don't know what believe is about. No, it's it's you know it's about a, a it's about you know wanting somebody to believe in you. Oh, okay. All right. okay. I'm high, man. Right, take it easy. Man. Sorry, I don't want to bum you out. Questions. I want to bring you down. It's like, you know how <laughs> if you believe something? Yeah. You know, you like know, when you like believe when you in believe somebody? Yeah. <laughs> and you feel like everybody <laughs> believes. Well, that's what Cher said about her song. <laughs> when someone believes in you. All right. The song is Believe. It's from the new album. We celebrate your new album coming out, the band Stained. Uh, the Illusion of Progress is in stores today. And by the way, Stain will be performing tonight at the Hard Rock Cafe in Manhattan. That's All a great right. place to see them. And you can always go to stain.com for more details. All right. Take it away, boys. Uh-oh. All right. Ready? Yeah. Let's do it. I'm not. Okay, cool. One, two, three, four. Trying to collect my thoughts All I think about is you And so I cry myself to sleep Hope the devil I don't need In dreams that I live through if you believe in me, I know you've waited for so long. Believe in me. Sometimes the weak become the strong. Believe in me. This life's not always what it seems. Beautiful job, boys. Let me ask you something. Thank uh, God you lost the drummer on that. Mike, what, what is that? <laughs> Just Mike, what, 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 what's this technique of yours on the guitar? What, what is that? Um, oh, that uh, what, uh, what are you doing? It's there? called hacking. Doing? Yeah, what is that? Yeah, what, is, <laughs> what is that? I like that. I like that. And then when you when you hit that little harmonic thing. Oh, yeah, that's, that's a little. I, those that's are tough good. ones. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, nice. That's cool. Nice stuff. Thanks. Really good. Now, Aaron, what do you do when you play guitar? You, you have an open E tuning? Is that what you do? Um, this particular uh, song is open tuning just so that I can play along with Mike. I'll tell you what. You guys are really talented. Now, now I should have this kind of talent with music, <laughs> but I don't. I can't do it. But you sound great, and the voice sounds real good, too, Aaron. Thanks. Yeah, with all the smoking, yeah. you're still... I mean, you're smoking. That's amazing. amazing. I mean, what are, you, you, what are you doing to yourself? I, I want you to knock off all this smoking and save that voice. It's, there's always either a cigarette or a joint at all times of the day. That's what I mean. What, what, when in you, the studio, in the studio, it's like... It, it just sometimes both. Sometimes both. <laughs> sometimes you get confused. Like, right? Even even, <laughs> even during the whole recording process of the vocals and everything, there's a there's an ashtray right there and a big bag of weed. And but why the cigarettes? All right, the weed I get. You get high. You why know the what? cigarettes? I quit cigarettes for for over four years. And then and what happened? It's such a dumb I, I habit. I fell off the wagon. You didn't yeah, look cool, it, you didn't it, look cool anymore. <laughs> no, it, you know, honestly, it wasn't that. It was it was uh, you know. Stuff going on in my life that was extremely stressful. And what went on? What happened? I, uh, you know, it, everything when, all right with the marriage? Yeah, well, that, uh, that's the kids? great. The yeah. kids are great. So but what the hell? Is when I, I can't imagine. When you my had wife to pick was up a when cigarette? my wife got got uh, pregnant this last time with Indy, um, in the beginnings of it, um, with the first ultrasound, they they said that there could be genetic problems. Oh, yeah, I that see. Sucks. And and the, the, what I then mentally went through. Um, could pretty much drive anybody back to having a cigarette. Having the cigarette. And then, and then we went to the second ultrasound, and the baby was perfect. And, and now you and were she hooked. is perfect. And he's still <laughs> smoking. <laughs> and I was Two smoking. packs a day now. <laughs> <laughs> the cigarettes, the cigarettes, the, cigarettes, the yeah. joints, <laughs> and the, <laughs> the smoke <laughs> that the record company blows up your ass. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is this, though. You got such a beautiful instrument there. 
to piss it away with these cigarettes. And also, cigarettes, you know, I think about the futility of cigarettes, because well, I used to smoke. And you smoke them, and you, and you, you realize it's, it's so silly. You're just dragging smoke into your It lungs. doesn't do anything. No, right. and it makes no sense. Yeah, but he didn't sound any better when you quit. I don't even smoke cigarettes that have all the chemicals and additives either, and, I, and right. it still doesn't do it. Aaron, these people are health nuts. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. right. You want some, I you smoke want some heroin? Come normal. see me. <laughs> this guy's on everything. Exactly. I smoke. Right. Look at me. Every you, you guys don't do heroin, <laughs> Picture do of health. Anybody do heroin here? No. <laughs> never tried no, it. No, not yet. Yeah. I, was always, I was always smart enough to not try it. <laughs> Only the great people. Because I know... <laughs> I know I would like it. Right. Really? Well, that's the problem. It would be really foolish for me to try it. I said right. the same thing. I should have been that wise. Because <laughs> the first time I did it, it was in a hotel room on the road. And my head hit the pillow. And I went, whoa, I'm in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> it felt too good, man. Uh, look, if blowjobs were that available, I'd get that. <laughs> well, you boys are great. I have to say congratulations on another new album. And if you want the album, it's in stores today. The Illusion of Progress. And you could sit there and be with Stain for an entire album, not just a single. Yeah, don't just yeah. listen to Imagine that. Huh? Imagine that. <laughs> an entire album, like a whole thing that comes out of the CD <laughs> that you can look at. And I know. I was just words. reading all this. Does it have case. artwork and the Sounds lyrics worthwhile. and all that? Uh, believe, believe is a, uh, a great song. Very, very, very good. I love yeah. it. Thank you. Thanks and, for having uh, Stain will be are... performing tonight at the Hard Rock Cafe in Manhattan for additional tour dates. Go to Stain.com. You were going to say... I just said, these guys are the greatest band and the greatest bunch of guys, too. They are a good really bunch of guys. 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 Friends, guys. Friends of the, oh, friends always, of the show. Yeah. It's yes. always sure. such a pleasure to be here. Yep. Well, great having you. It. Listen for years. Thanks, Howard. All right, guys. Thank you. So, uh, so how was it in there with Howard? You know, like he's a little concerned about your uh, pot smoking and uh, cigarette smoking. I think he was more concerned about the cigarette smoking than he was anything else. But uh, yeah. hasn't hurt you yet, right? <laughs> Uh, I don't know. As long as I've known you, you've been smoking nonstop. They have talent. I listen to me yeah. So what is it about Howard's show that you guys like doing? Because you come on all the time. It seems like you have fun every time. Because he's the fucking best. I, I listen. I have Howard throughout the whole house. And it's on when I'm home. It's on all the time. And uh, I love the repeat. I love that I can get it on my laptop now. I mean, we'll be in. He even has a Howard fuck doll. <laughs> we'll be in Australia. And I'll have it on my laptop in the room listening so I've just been a fan for I don't know about 12 years now when he first came to Hartford you fun. know because you can have those real dolls made to look or be anything <laughs> and he's got one in Howard yep. Stern yep alright guys thanks for something by thanks good luck with the album thanks thank you look better um i um uh, i'm still embarrassed about my performance on celebrity superfan roundtable am i saying that right celebrity uh, superfan celebrity superfan yeah whatever. i forget what it was but um and uh i'll be catching a lot of hell for that so i'm here to um i'm here to sort of redeem yourself redeem my name yeah that wasn't a good uh Parents, man. <laughs> that was bad, and I catch a lot of shit for it. But um, so, what's what's new, man? You got a new TV show. Got a new TV out? show called Do Not Disturb. It'll be on Fox. It's incredible. Um, and just in New York, coming by to see Howard. Wish him well. Sadly, I'm not coming to the wedding. I I did write my essay to try and uh, get in, but uh, I didn't make the cut. It's awful. It's really sad. Oh man, what was your weak point? You just not a good writer. Um. No, I think my essay was uh, concise. I think it was, um, I think it had good structure to it. Um, I just think there are there are people in this world and people here in Sirius that are probably closer and people here at Howard TV that are um, 
closer to Howard than me, and and and, and I understand that. No hard feelings, right? No hard feelings. When someone gets married, you're supposed to be there in support for them. You're not supposed to like give them shit. <laughs> this is a stressful time for Howard. All right, so you excited to be here today? Very. I'm anxious to talk to Jerry O'Connell. He uh, has become a, quite a friend of the show. He's a super fan of the show, knows more about the show than most Didn't people. He did do well in the super fan, the celebrity super fan segment. Uh, he did not do well no, in the celebrity well super all. fan segment. Uh, it was a great disappointment to his family <laughs> and to everybody involved. He embarrassed everybody Everyone, uh, I can't tell you how many times I'm... Uh, I'll just be walking down the street or walking my dog, and someone will be like, You suck, O'Connell! <laughs> you really? suck at Celebrity Super Fan! You shouldn't be there! They think- should have put Barbary in your place! I think it's a very hard game. I-, I would even have a hard time answering those questions. I'm not good rapid fire like that. That's a lot of pressure to be under, I believe. Yeah, that's not a good attribute as a human being. You're supposed to be able to react under that pressure. But, um... Listen, Kimmel is a super fan. He's a tough guy to beat. And it's difficult to listen to the older shows because, you know, all you can think of is the questions that I missed. But you got to move on with your life, Howard. You, and you do that you got to well. look forward. Still First of all, Still let me congratulate you on being a, an expectant father. Yes, thank you very much. I was honored that you, I was one of the first people that you told privately that yes. your, your wife, Rebecca Romaine yeah. O'Connell, yeah. is having a baby, but it turned out two babies. Yes. Twins. Yes. Now, when you first told Howard, did you know it was going to be twins? Uh, yes. Ah. Yeah. Twin twin girls. And at that point, we were pretty sure they were girls or boys with very small genitalia, which was <laughs> not a possibility. Are you concerned that Rebecca is going to get large? I mean, one of the great things about being with Rebecca <laughs> is that she's super hot. Yeah. Uh, um, as she gets bigger. You know, I'll tell you what's funny. Um, don't give is, me bullshit now. No, I'm not going to give you bullshit. Is um, when... Your wife is carrying your children. Uh, at this point, I'm not really concerned about weight. You just want... Um, You're you just excited. Want, you yeah, you, want you just child. want healthy children, you know? Kids have got to be good looking. I mean, I don't see how these kids can miss. Although... Do you think your children will be pudgy? They... <laughs> how so? Because he, he was, was pudgy as Yeah, a but child. that's more of a... Uh, I, the family didn't uh, feed him properly. Really? His mother didn't feed him properly. You don't think it was genetic? <laughs> No. Uh, no. I think it was uh, probably, I, th- I think it was a uh, bad diet. I yeah. think it was a lot of soda and stuff. Um, <laughs> but that's for another serious channel, not this one. Um, now, you've determined they are yours, right? There's no chance Rebecca could have been with anyone there, else. There, um, you know, it's not 100%. There will be swabbing that will happen uh, upon birth. But because they're twins, I only have to swab one, really. So, um, uh, and you, Are they identical? No, they're fraternal. Okay. They're going to be girls? Girls, yeah. Now, it says here in a report, you're, one of the girls will be named Dolly after Dolly Parton because Rebecca's a big Dolly Parton fan. Rebecca uh, went to see Dolly Parton in Dollywood a few months ago, and uh, <laughs> Rebecca is a very good friend of Dolly Parton. Uh, or th- actually, uh, they... It sounds like they just met. They did, but they spent time with each other when she was down there, and it was, uh, it was a very emotional experience for Rebecca, and one of our children may possibly be named Dolly. What Dolly... was so emotional about Dollywood? Um, Rebecca's a big fan, and... Uh, you have um, to admire that Dolly Parton could get anybody to go to Dollywood. Well... <laughs> But isn't um, there pressure on the kid to have huge tits when she grows up? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, I'm a little concerned about that. I mean, because yeah, if she's uh, attractive, you had a little flat chest, you, you're named after Dolly Parton. Dude. How could you be Dolly Parton? Yeah, where's your big tit? <laughs> where's your um, enormous tit? Dolly Parton O'Connell? Tit. She's well, going mean, to get the, tits at like three years old. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 I don't want to get weird, but Rebecca is very well endowed. And, and um, so are you. Um, but not, uh, not uh, no in the, the teddies. in the breast department. In Can the I say titties, something? Right? Yeah, I don't think. I don't you, think. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Doesn't it scare you that your wife gets that emotional about a person she just met that she wants to name a baby after? That you is know, a little <sighs> mental. That is. Listen, I love Rebecca, but that's a little yeah, crazy. Um, that's it, a hormonal. In thing. all honesty, yeah. I, I, I I can't deny someone who's a fan of Dolly Parton. She's very popular for a reason, you know. And but doesn't that get you freaked out? That you your wife family? met Dolly Parton no. on a weekend. No, and now uh, she's been a life. Name- she's been a lifelong fan. It doesn't freak me out at all. It's uh, <laughs> it's it's what she wants to name them. I get to name the other one. And oh, is that true? Yeah, because what I'm worried. I'm, I'm, worried. I'm gonna name the other one Cher. <laughs> Dolly and Cher. I'm worried about <laughs> your marriage, and I'll tell you why. When I got worried about it. Okay. Uh, I, I I love both of you guys, and I've, you. I've gotten to know you. And, and you know what, guy. Howard? Whatever you say, I will uh, I will listen to intently. Okay. I think you're a very wise person. Here's what scares me. I mean, it seems like 
Rebecca's calling the shots, and I'm going to tell you why. Uh, forget the fact that you have to play video games. I wake up an hour early and play your video games. Okay. okay. I think that's wrong. Okay. I think, you know, especially before you have children, who cares if you play your video games? Right. And I know Rebecca makes a big thing about that. You've changed your television viewing habits. Now you're watching every girl show there is because you didn't used to like watching that stuff, and now you're watching. Well, the, there, I, I, I don't want to say this, hour, but there are a lot of the same shows that you watch as but well. But I enjoy those know? shows. You're being forced to watch them. No, I'm not being forced. I enjoy them as well. You I'm, do. But you have been changed. You want to watch Dancing with the Stars. Uh you know, I would, I would probably, if I was by myself, watch something else. But I don't mind watching Dancing with the Stars, and I see the entertainment value in it. I don't. When it comes to shows on like the- Jerry, re- here's the real bugaboo. Okay. Jerry really wants to come to my wedding. I invited Jerry and Rebecca to my wedding, as I did John Stamos, by the way. Yes. And John was okay with it, and Jerry was okay with it, and Rebecca was okay with it. Now what? So I wouldn't have sat them at the same table, although I actually would have, but Beth wouldn't let me. Could you sit (laughs) me and them at the same table? (laughs) Anyway, anyway, I have to tell you, Jerry really wants to come to the wedding. Rebecca announces... I wrote an essay. That's right. Rebecca announces like a month ago, I'm going to be pregnant and I am going to be on bed rest (gasps) and I can't come to the wedding. So Jerry said, hold on a second. There's a lot to this story. So Jerry says, hey, I'll just come to the wedding. I, I want to come. And I think Rebecca shot that down. Now, No. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> and then, you know, we started thinking about <laughs> that it. That really upset Fred. Is Rebecca's right? not due till like January or February or something and like that. And why is she on bed rest? Exactly. How did she know a month ago she needs to be on bed rest? Jerry's not an invalid. And, and but by the way, Rebecca <laughs> could come to the wedding. Wheel her in in the bed. How, long, how far along will she be, Jerry? So what's going time? on, Jerry? Really? And I know this is important to you no to come to my rest. wedding. <laughs> you know, you, you're. You're a super fan, oh, too. I, I, you know, I, I have to say, Rebecca is um, going to be... She's pregnant with twins. It's doctor's orders. But no, no, it wasn't. A month ago, it couldn't have been doctor's orders. She, how would she know she needs bed rest? Tell hey, the truth here, Jerry. I, you know what? What's going on? Let's Howard, clean. in all this honesty... This is me. You... <laughs> you're smiling because I've hit into something. That's right. Here. You're on. What's you, really, how, Rebecca's whole thing doesn't make sense. She's going. I need bed rest a month ago. She's she wasn't even barely pregnant. Listen, the month I, of the, the month of the wedding, I'm going to need bed rest. I, he I doesn't need the, the rest. What, what's going on for real? Let me just uh, listen. Me I, you know, you put me in a very awkward spot, Howard. You put me in well, a very awkward honestly. spot. Let's talk honestly. You always said you'd be honest. I Ted, oh, and I always there. and I, I uh, you put me in a very awkward spot. Well, and let's talk. Um. You have to, you know, you work in journalism. You should probably cover all areas of this situation. Is it the Stamos factor? You should maybe, like, that's all I want to say. Please don't make me say anything because in all honesty... Is it the Stamos factor? You know, Howard, I have to say, as someone who is getting remarried, this is, I'm talking to you now. Go ahead. Um... Maybe there are certain areas that you don't want to really go into. All right, so it's not that Rebecca needed bed rest. I knew that was bullshit. Maybe there are other areas you just don't want to touch, do and you, you just really want nothing to do with. Do and you really think it's this right? is an area that I really want. Uh, personally, I want you can't nothing come to do with. You can't come yourself to the wedding. I, I know you, you're interested. In, you said to me, I want to come myself. And I would Rebecca love to. shot it down. We, uh, we purchased a gift. We, we, got the, we went on the website. Thank you. You're welcome. We're really excited. We um, are so happy for you guys. We cannot come. I'm sorry. Rebecca we will be on come. bed rest. Well, that is that. Rebecca said to I will me, Look at the pictures. I'm sad I can't come. Rebecca I really am. said, listen, I'm going to be on bed rest. I said, even Beth turned to me. And Beth's like the sweetest person in the world. She goes, The sweetest. Right. She says to me, that's total bullshit. I yeah. go, I, she, we don't listen. If Jerry and, and Rebecca don't want to be come, on bed rest? she says, how is that possible? Rebecca just is starting to show. Yeah. How does she know in a month she's going to need bed they rest? They told her in a month you're going to be in on October. bed rest? So it was a very bad excuse. <laughs> a bad excuse, better excuse she could have come up with. Yeah, Rebecca is going to be on bed rest. It is doctor's orders. That is For, my official. You know that, she's going to be on rest, you're smiling, rest? You're smiling when you say it. So we know you're lying. The doctor <laughs> it's told not her. True. You're lying and you're a bad liar. <laughs> the doctor told her whatever date house. Howard gets married. You're on bed rest that day. Yeah. <laughs> no. Do you think it's the Stamos thing? I know that Rebecca is going to be very pregnant. Please don't make me go down any other road. You roads. don't want to go down any other road. I just roads. don't want to because I just don't want. I don't want to. I don't want to. You don't want to get punched. Did you get? <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I don't want. I just don't want. You know when you reach a. You just, we're. 
we're at a different place, you know. Just let it, just let it go, please. Uh, let me ask. Uh, and I'm clear. sorry. And really, we wish you the best. And uh, I wish I could like be it. there. Whoa, man. It doesn't feel like you're wishing me the best. Oh, my goodness. You know, anybody who really cared would be there. <laughs> you guys don't yeah. really want to be friends, I guess. <laughs> oh, man. You're not real friends. <laughs> I guess you're just phonies, like everyone else. Oh, boy. On your happiest listen, day, they don't want to You see know you. I don't care if you come to the wedding or not, in the sense that, listen, if you got something going on, you got something not going on. But, yeah. but, they, but to lie and say bed rest come is silly. Say listen, what do, what do you want me to say? What do you want me to say? You pick up the phone and you say to me, listen, we don't want to be in the same room as Stamos. Well, um, what it's if not I really a, my place, man. What it's if just I not told my place. you Stamos can't make it? It's, you know what? Would you change your mind? Is she You're talking to me about something that I just don't want to comment on. <laughs> I don't even want to <laughs> say anything. Wow. I don't even want to Is say anything. Is it the holiday Sukkot? Are you celebrating Sukkot? Uh, <laughs> the Jewish holiday? I yeah no it's yeah. a it's a big day for wow, you can't for even, Rebecca. This is and and my the wedding. Thing. My wedding has caused something so top secret to go down that you can't even comment. There's been major discussions. But also, you know what, Howard? I he mean, wanted to go so bad. He yeah, even said he yeah. said to Rebecca, "Please, I'll go myself. I want to be there with Howard and Beth when they get married. It sounds like it's going to be so much fun." Yeah, it it would be great, but it's yeah. just not going to happen. I would have loved to have had you there. I know. But, you what know, you what can happened? I do? And in all honesty, Howard, I don't want to cause any stress for you because <laughs> not for as, me. as a guy who got married a year and a few months ago, like guys who make it stressful for you and they're you're not stressing me. I know, but there are going to be feel people bad for you. I know how badly you wanted to go. Well, what am I going to do? You know, I mean, such is life. I wanted to win Celebrity Superfan, too, but I didn't. <laughs> and, you know, that's just the way. But it also, what do you think went down, Howard? Well, I mean, you want to know what I think? The discussion. Go? Jerry, you mind if I say what I think? Yeah, sure. Okay. Rebecca got a hold of him. <laughs> and listen, him a, a she's ver- listen, she's a beautiful woman, and she's used to getting her way. Hey, you know what? I got to defend my wife. Go Maybe ahead. my wife didn't have everything to do with it. Whoa. Uh-huh. Maybe my wife was not. Honestly, I'm not I have Rebecca to. Rebecca the villain here. I have, uh, yeah, and, and please don't. I'm Just not. don't. I'm not. I love Rebecca. Yeah, and she loves you. But you know who she loves probably more than you is who? Beth. She really likes Beth. Rebecca does. She likes Beth more than me? I think you guys have a longer relationship, but I think because Beth is, you know, blonde and that sort of... They have that Aryan link. Is Rebecca feeling she won't look her best mm. at the wedding and competes with Beth for looks? And no. And feels that she has to... No, bingo! Something? <laughs> she doesn't want to be seen <laughs> pr- big and it. pregnant in front of John either. No, Rebecca looks great, and she's really happy. She she really does look great, and she, and, and she is really so happy. Rebecca, so, Re- I, here's what I think. Rebecca doesn't want to be seen at the wedding pregnant, that big. It's a, a pride thing with her. I also think that there's this whole John thing still, which is ridiculous. It's over between them. You two are in love. You're having a child. Who cares if John's two. there? Two. Yeah. I don't know. What are you going to do? Crazy. But what are you going to do? Uh, bed rest. You don't need bed rest. She's as strong as a horse, that woman. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of crazy excuses that you <laughs> Bed rest. <laughs> show business. You She's like an ox. Up. Robin, you, she, you should see her. I have her working around the house. If she she had carried us a week before and said the doctor says I yeah. need bed rest. But a month, she was barely pregnant, They're the doctor said it. bed rest. Bed. <laughs> this woman's not good. You wish you could get her in bed to rest. <laughs> so, uh, listen. I know she's a strong... Listen, you described on the wrap-up show, I was shocked the last time you were here. Oh, yeah. Listen, I got to talk about that as well. Rebecca punched you in the neck and you went down. I got to talk about that as well. And you Um, said you almost died. You almost had a stroke. I did not say that. Want me to play what you said? (laughs) Should we play it back? Listen to what you said. I'm going to play it. Okay. Hold on. I have it here. B495. Yeah, right. Gary, where is it? (laughs) Tell me... uh, Oh, here it is. Gary Page. I got it. I found it. Here, Rebecca punched Jerry. This is in Jerry's own words. And then I want you to explain this to me. This well, is I want crazy. to say, I love going on the wrap-up show because while this is the big show and this is the big leagues, those guys, man, they're really being funny these days. And it's almost like hanging out after school with the kids who smoke cigarettes because yeah, yeah. they're just like, it's there a little go. looser, you know, that's and it's a, a lot of fun. Right. I love it. I love listening to it. We did get into one argument and Rebecca punched me. And I swear to you, I was bruised for, <laughs> Jesus. I mean, the girl is strong. Well, what were strong. you fighting about when she You were in Holland. You? I, uh, I, I lied to her. I lied. I um, said I uh, had to go to a charity event. I had to go. It was something that my boss was putting together, and it was something that I had to do. And um, it was something that my boss organized, and it was a charity event. It just happened to be on a golf course for six hours. 
And um, <laughs> I, I went to go play golf, and Rebecca wanted to do something else, and I said that I had to do it. It was a work thing. And um, I stupidly, as I was driving there, called her up and went, listen, I got to tell you, I'm playing golf. You know, um, it is charity and blah, blah, blah. And when I came home, I mean, I, I, she had been Jesus. drinking a little bit because she was by herself. <laughs> is, is there a 911 call and, out there? Or? And Rebecca Benji. throws them back, you know? I mean, you guys know. I mean, you she's a beaten man. Um, and she just like really like stepped into it. Like I saw, I saw the weight shift from her back foot to her front foot, and then it just like unleashed. And it was, it was. Where, where, did, where did it land? It landed on the side of my neck. Wow. Oh my God. Yeah, and it really like it, 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 put, it put me down. <laughs> I like, I saw stars for a second. It did something to my, uh, not my breathing, but like my heart rate. Right, I guess it hit right. my jugular and it did something like it stopped the blood flow for a second and I thought I was going to have a stroke. What was that drive home like? Did you expect to walk into, well, probably not a left to the neck, but. Like... Yeah, Rebecca is, um, <laughs> you know, I, I guess the, the, the nice term is passionate. The not so nice term is. Hysterical. She's, she's had a lot of fun, you know. But I, 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 I have to also tell you, there's something. There's a sick, weird part of me that really like likes it, and I think I encourage. I think I encourage that behavior. You like the attention? No, I'm. I don't know. You know, I mean. I think my, my parents fought a lot when I was a kid, and you know, I mean, they're still together, thirty some odd years, and. Right. I don't know, you know, I mean, I think... Turns you on in a way all the... Yeah, I don't think fighting is such a bad thing, yeah, you know? Yeah, it's sort of normal to you. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I, 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 I don't want to you... alarm you, but we have the same, almost the same words coming out of Nicole Simpson in 1989. Oh, goodness. <laughs> I, mean, I don't want to see anything oh, bad happen to you. You're a good guy. Well, uh, come on. I, I don't yeah. think there's jealousy. It's just, it's passion. So no, um, I, I do have to defend Rebecca because okay. Rebecca was very upset when that came out. Oh, and, well, I bet. Did and I probably you? shouldn't have said it. And I was in the wrap-up show, and I got all caught up in there. But, um, <laughs> you know, once you get in that room and the heat is on. But, right. um, uh, you know, she was I mad did, that you said I, li that I lied to her. You, you know, did, it's yes. bad to lie to someone. That's true. Not. Yes, it is. Lying I mean, is... it depends. We <laughs> understand that you lied to her, but yeah. she the... punched you in the throat. But since then, have you been hit again? Uh, no. No, you didn't get hit over this, did you? No, I did not get hit. No, um, it we, was it was probably his body for bruises. <laughs> you know what he is? He's, Blink he's, once <laughs> if you really need me to step in. Here. You know what it is? He's, he's Jerry had a noose. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. Are you okay? Yeah. Everything all right over there? Everything's great. I don't want to see you getting beaten. I'm, I'm not getting beat. I mean, that's not right. You know, no, no, no man deserves to be a, hit by his wife. I can see the divorce papers now. <laughs> can I tell you something, Jerry? I love Rebecca, and I think she's one of the sexiest please, women I've ever met. Please don't bash me. <laughs> I won't don't. bash you. I knew a girl, and she. I heard once, the story. She, yeah, she, she smacked punched me. You. She opened at a party, opened, right? Yeah, at a party, and my mouth was always in the middle of talking. I thought my jaw was going to fall off. Hey, let me know, ask you, was this when you were dating post-divorce? Uh, yeah, sort okay. of, yeah. And uh, I got to tell you, I took her aside. I said, let me tell you something. <laughs> you ever lay a fucking hand on me again, I don't kiss you. Oh, I was kidding around. I said, kidding around, my jaw is killing me. I said, I will haul off so hard and punch you in the face. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care that you're a woman because now you're hitting me. I'm going to punch you so hard, you're going to fucking see stars. <laughs> yeah. I'm not kidding you. And well, she I, never did it again, I'll well, tell you that. I, I would and have I don't so care. Not. You're goddamn right. I wanted to hit her. She I said, can you're control gonna... herself. I, you know, yeah. I would have said that to Rebecca, but I'm, I'm genuinely afraid for my life. That's a joke, everyone. <laughs> that is a joke, honey. I'm kidding. I, I think Jerry... Police? Rebecca's yeah. sitting in her car right now punching the steering wheel. You, you know what you yeah. should do? You should be a color commentator for boxing, man, because that was the best description of a punch. Really detailed. It sounded like the punch that Hagler knocked out Hearns with. Like, right? <laughs> How many times has Rebecca hit you in the marriage? <clears throat> no, that's... Uh, that was it. That was only one time. That was it. Uh, I don't know You're how we got that on that topic. She's never going to do that again. You're like the battered wife. Oh, she loves me. She's never going to do that again. <laughs> no, she apologized oh no. oh, no. I'm so clumsy. I tripped <laughs> again. Uh, <laughs> Jerry. Things are different now. <laughs> now. She's changed. She's changed. She's better. That's okay. She got help. So let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. Your sex life is completely gone now. <laughs> You're not having sex. Well, no. Um, that, tell this the truth. This is... Uh, uh, well, I, I, a lot of women, a lot of times you'll hear, hey, um, 
get ready for pregnancy sex. It's crazy. Right. <laughs> Here it comes. It and I crazy. think, like, now I would that say, I'm who in are you going to have sex with? Now that I'm in the fifth month of a pregnancy, like, it's just, it's couldn't it's be happening. farther from the truth. It's, I think it's a, it's a ruse that, um, Women, women use, use to get pregnant. Right. You don't, it gives want, guys, you don't even want the sex, do you? Um, I want sex. No, uh, but you're not with a pregnant woman. I, I want sex. I mean, I, if I want... If Rebecca said to you tonight, I want sex, you would do it to her. I, I would, yeah. You would, with, with the pregnancy. Well, I mean, what then happens Why are you guys is, not having sex? She doesn't want it. Well, I think that, um, you know, when pregnancy, when uh, a woman becomes... Pregnant, they just don't like. F this is just my census. I, I, it seems to me that they don't want it. That they feel kind of icky and they don't want it. So, so I have. An, so you are laying away from her. You're staying away. Are well, I'm not forcing myself on a, on the woman who's pregnant with my twins. No, I know. Um, it would be great though to do that because you you'd be having sex with three women. <laughs> oh, are you play, are you playing with her tits at all, or like um, just, like hands off? I uh, I did inquire about. Um, uh, Possibly some uh, tit copulation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, what about like jerk? Well, can't she jerk? Which you I off? have never, which I have never done. It, uh, yeah. What they refer to as titty fucking. Yeah, it's not great. I've never done it. Um, it's just something. It's just never come up for me. Like, I hey, let me it. fuck your tits. It's just never happened. I've tried. It hurts my penis. I wouldn't know how to do it. I mean, it's in what, when I've seen it in porn, people, women sit and then you get above them. I guess. Well, if a woman, uh, uh, Robin's the exception. If if. if a woman has tits like that, like what Robin has. I can yeah. imagine you get a lot of action off that. Oh, yeah. You know, you put some grease in between the two tits right. and you go at it. But short of what Robin has, and she's unique, most um, women don't have that kind of cleavage. She's yeah, got no. amazing cleavage. But my wife's breasts right, are... No. No? Right, Robin? <laughs> my wife's breasts look amazing. Look, I know, they're big. Look well, great. now they're really big, yeah. right? Can but, I say you know, something? I, 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 so, so you're masturbating now, right? I'm um, actually I'm uh, I'm uh, watching a lot more porn. I went through a period uh, when I moved to L.A. and I got on television. I swore I would never watch porn again. Right. Well, you didn't need to. You were dating tons. And you also, I grew up. You know, I went to college here in New York during Giuliani's era. When if you went to go buy porn, you'd have to go to one of these stores which had like the XXX neon outside yeah, of it. But wait a second. And you felt dirty walking. But in wait there. a second. So and then you didn't know what you were getting. You take your it life home. Now. You haven't had sex for five months. Or, I don't know, four months. Well, that's not true. That's uh, not true. What do you mean? I mean, it hasn't been five months, you or know? Three I mean, months. It, no, it's just not as regular as it, as it once was. Uh, when is the last time you had sex? A couple of months ago, right? Um, that's not true. That's not oh, true. Oh, that's not true. No. It, it hasn't been a couple of months. It's Two just months? not as... It, for a period there in the first trimester, it wasn't as frequent as I would have liked. Why can't she jerk you off? Um, I inquired about that. It didn't... Um, <laughs> Who do you ask these questions. You have to apply in have writing? To, uh, no, I have, to, I have to talk to her assistant who then, uh, that's a joke, everyone. Right. I, I Call ask her, her attorney and say, why can't she <laughs> jerk me off? But, 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 so you're watching porn, and I was surprised to hear what kind of porn you watch. You're into hardcore, you like to see close-ups of the vagina. Why is that? I don't hmm. like that. Um, I don't, do you like you Hustler like magazine Hustler? when you they know spread open the, the lips and the whole thing? Uh, I, I, I just, you know, the internet has changed the porn industry dramatically. But why I, do you like to see close-ups of vaginas? Because I don't like to see dudes in porn. No, I understand porn. that. I don't, and you know what? The dudes, like, uh, they're just, like, they're tough to miss. They're just all, like, greased up and muscular so and the, all shaved. And it's just like, you. I just don't want to see it. So the type of porn you watch is just close-ups of women's vaginas. That's really all I care about. You just yeah. want to see the you actual just vagina. You see, like... Huh? Women's body parts? Uh, yeah, that's that's how I break it down. I mean, obviously, <laughs> so those are on those sites for reasons. <laughs> obviously, I'm not the only one who likes them. There's a whole section of just, uh, you yeah. know, close-ups of, of you, women's private areas. David, that's uh, why you're feeling okay about this? And, David, David Duchovny. And, and by the way, you don't have to break down what someone looks like. You know, I mean, it's just... It's so a, what sometimes you can you see to? Sometimes you can see a face. fat. No, oh, sometimes fat. you can see fat around the vagina, and you know a girl is really fat when she's got pussy fat. That's like really fat. <laughs> you know, there's a ma there actually the was oh a magazine. God. I don't know if it's still around, but this is the truth. It was called Assholes and Pussies. That was the name oh. of the magazine. And it's all it was. <laughs> <laughs> all it was was assholes. So you yeah. mean, that's weird. You know, it was weird. I had a subscription, but Rebecca kept seeing it. It was really, it was upsetting. Well, it was actually website? about the Mets. What is the website? <laughs> where, where is this website that you go to? What is it? Um, I don't want to give a plug to a, a, a porn website. Like? Um, one of the very popular porn websites. You do? 
Yeah. And and it's close-ups of women's vaginas. Well, one of the films that they have yeah. is, is that. What is it yeah. called? What is this What film? is the film? You know. Describe this film. Well, I don't think they have names. It's not like, you know, an Italian <laughs> cinema where at the end it says, Fiend. Is it's it free like, or pay? <laughs> it's free. Free. It's free. Free. Oh. What is it? You know, I just wanted to go back. I know Jerry doesn't want to keep talking about the punch thing, but it's really interesting because we found this picture of Jerry and Rebecca out. He's got this giant mark on his neck, and I'm trying to see, is this what she did to you? Oh, man. No, this is a picture. Yeah. <laughs> Let me see that's, that. uh, that's a picture that they said I had a hickey on my neck. Oh, but that's where she punched you. That's right no, where she punched No, you. no. That's a doctored photo, I promise you. Really? Yeah, someone did that as a doctor, and they put it in a magazine, and it looks like <laughs> I have a hickey. Funny. Okay. That's good. You have All the right. real photos in a safe deposit box. All right. <laughs> no, so you're I, not having sex. No, it's we're having sex, Howard. It's just, you know, I just wanted to, it's just not as frequent as it right. used to so be. So you're masturbating. How many times a week are you masturbating? Man, I can masturbate. It's incredible. I can masturbate three times a day. It's crazy. Wow. Well, you're a young guy. How old are you? 34. Yeah, that means I was masturbating three times a day when I was 34. You ought to get a job. You know, and it's funny. <laughs> He's got this, a job. He's here to when talk this about happens, it. When this stuff happens with yeah. David Duchovny, it's funny. Immediately you're like, whatever, that sounds crazy. You know, who has, it sounds like he's just living his life. But then... You know, I think you could sort of understand it. Like, the Internet is crazy. And what with broadband and well, wait a second. high speed? First of all, let's clear up something. I knew that David Duchovny story smelled fi it smelled fishy to me. Well, you know, it uh, sounds to me like maybe he got caught uh, doing well, something and somebody made him go. Today you know? in the paper, in the National Enquirer, they say, uh, it was reported in the straight press, too, that he's in there because they think he was fooling around. Yeah. And of course. So, yeah. So. Nobody goes but, for But can you imagine? I, I, actually, I actually know yeah. Duchovny, and I met him when I was younger. We know him, too. And he's a great guy. Great guy. He and just needs to get laid. He got married to, to Taya Leone 100 years ago. This fucking guy could get tons of pussy. He's, he's horny. <laughs> well, you know, I mean. He wants it. He's out there in Hollywood. He's getting bored. I, I I knew him when we were single, and we were both working in Vancouver for a couple of years. He, he got was laid doing like crazy. Files. And he, you know, women just really, he's just got an air about him. Listen, you get tons he's of like women Jared. too. You get tons of women Jared. too. This has got to be a big change of life for you. This whole Rebecca pregnancy thing, how, no how sex. How active were you before you got married? You know, this you, guy? Very. Yeah. Well, I was very. pretty active. He but, was out there. You know, what are you going to do? You get married. You want it to work out. You know, I mean, if if I don't want to be married, I won't be married. It's as simple as that. But I really want to be married. Yeah, yeah. but what happened to the old Hollywood husbands who just fucked everything, cheated? and You know, oh, I think it's the... it's not like it's the not good like old that. days. Yeah. TMZ ruined that. <laughs> Dolores, Dolores Hope put up with it. Yeah. Right. So now you had a, a problem, uh, another problem with my wedding. Uh, you had to, of course, we sent Jerry and Rebecca an invitation, and we said to people, listen, if you want to give us a gift, go to this website. This is where we're registered. And when you go on the website, turns out we're trying to, we said to people, please give a donation to Hamptons Wildlife instead of giving mm -hmm. us a gift. Yeah. Well, that's what you want us to do, really? Uh, yeah. Do you didn't see that? No, I, I don't got the computer. I never got any invitation. There's a website that you There's go to. There's a website you go to, and if you, you don't uh, have to even give no, a gift. No, I'll do, I'll do that, sure. Although, you know, it's a funny thing. What? When you tell people to give a, a donation or you ask them to, they think you don't know how much they give. Oh, no, you get a full listing, don't you? We find out. <laughs> and are know. people being cheap? Yes. Uh, a lot of people are being cheap because they know that, oh, it's a donation. They figure, well, yeah, we, why, you know, why, any, why give a lot yeah. of money? It'll just see, I think see people spend what think. they would have spent as a gift, I heard don't you, they? You, felt you were worried that I'd find out, and you actually gave more money than you wanted to. Is that um, true? Yeah. 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 Well, well, how mean, much did you end up donating? Uh, Not I, that you had to give anything. I donated $500. Wow. That's nice. Very generous. But Which, what did you really want to give? Um, what would I have? I would have like checked the twenty-five dollar box. Right. right. Um, <laughs> uh, helping, helping animals in the Hamptons. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> helping. You want to help a half-dead bird? <laughs> <laughs> there was a, we rescued a seagull. It was st stuck near a dumpster, just eating French fries from Gossman's dock. The fact is, you are you are working. You have a new series coming out. Is that correct? Yeah, it's called Do Not Disturb. It's on Fox. Very funny gal named Nisi. Nash is uh, is the star of it. Do not disturb on Fox when uh, Wednesday nights at nine thirty. It's uh, when does it start next week? Next Wednesday, yeah. Wednesday night, 
nine thirty. Do and not disturb. Is this a comedy? It's a comedy. It's a sitcom. Is it uh, you and a sexy gal? Um, it's me and a very sexy gal, Nisi Nash, and a lot of the crew and everything actually worked on the Norm Show with Artie, so they have really funny stories. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I bet. I, but great, let me yeah. ask you this. Is and it, actually, I'll tell you. Um, we have one guy who works with us who's like, uh, oh man, I got to tell you, those are the days on Norm. I mean, obviously, you guys had a good time and you you <laughs> talked to uh, everybody. I do have to say. A lot of us listen to your show there, and it's really funny because we all come in in the morning. We have one guy, i got to say hello to Gary Sherman, okay. who's our technical director, <laughs> listens to you every day, talks about you. He's a big fan. Michelle Harris, But tell me fan. about the show. What is, why is this funny? What, what, what do you mean, is it funny? What's what, the what, premise? What are we talking um, about? What about the a, fuck is so funny? <laughs> yeah, yeah, why are you so funny? Let me hear. It's about a boutique hotel in New York, okay. and um, I play the general manager, and it's a lot of fun because, you know, I'm sort of like a womanizer. I'm sort like Sam in Cheers. You're you know? the manager of a hotel who's an attractive guy who can get a lot of women. Are you yeah. married or not? Uh, no, I'm not married. And who uh, is the woman that plays opposite? Is that the one Nisi that you're Nash? always going to Nisi Nash, with, and you never get together with, but there's always the hint that you might get together? There's a little bit of that. Um, there's a little bit of that. You know, we've only done about five episodes, so... Uh, um, there's there's a little bit of that. She's if you saw her, she was in Reno 911. You would know she is. She's okay. uh, she's a very big personality, very funny, and uh, I should say it's her show. And I'm sort of, uh, you know, I'm uh, I'm I don't want to say her straight man, but you know, I'm I'm her male lead, I guess. You know, and there's a lot of hot chicks in it. A lot, and you know what? Wow. It's funny. I had a kissing scene ah. last week with Wait, a who? very attractive actress. How's that how, did you get a boner? Um, it was, uh, it was exciting, you know, yeah. it's exciting. When you're not getting laid at home for a while <laughs> and you're kissing this chick, is that, who's that? Niecy Nash. Oh, that's Niecy. Yeah. Oh, she's you a would... big fat chick, a black chick. No, that's her, <laughs> that's a prosthetic, um, uh, oh, ass I see. that she wore what? in what Reno. Oh okay. my God. <laughs> what is going on? Oh, uh, that is, oh, that I is know prosthetic. Her. I, I, you know what? I, I know that broad. I worked with her, uh, too. She's like a real, she's a funny broad. She is very funny. Mm -hmm. All right. So you're in the show, and uh, you're kissing this girl, and you haven't been getting laid at home. Did Rebecca get jealous at all? Um, I, you know, I didn't tell Rebecca about it. I just Smart. thought it would be best not to mention it. But... Be honest with me. Now I'm going to ask yeah. you a tough question. Yeah. When you were jerking off three times a day, <laughs> did you ever cross your mind, this chick? Did you ever think about her? No, because I was uh, my nose was right up against a uh, vagina on my mm. computer monitor. Come on. <laughs> When, you, when, you, when, they, when there's no computer monitor, right? You ever close your eyes and think about that kiss? <laughs> well, I mean, you know, uh, what what happens in your head doesn't get you in trouble. Right. You know, I mean, so you had a little fantasy. Act out. What was the fantasy? That you went back to your trailer with her? Like, and you no, it's nothing weird. Like you yeah. know, I know you have weird like Merlin fantasies and stuff. No, but uh, no you Merlin. Know, I'm, what was your fantasy with her? Uh, nothing. She, My, I, I don't. She came back to your trailer. I don't have fantastical. I just think pretty straightforward. You know, mm, penis stuff. inside of her. What would it feel like? <laughs> yeah, pretty yeah. straightforward stuff. Good nothing like you know we're on the mountaintop or Kilimanjaro. Let I know me you, ask something. You're, Rebecca, you're, you better give this guy a hand job. Your computer <laughs> is where. My computer is, um, it's a public computer. It's not a private computer, and there's no lock on the door. I know, uh, I know, uh, oh, man, I have a friend who moved in um, with his uh, fiance, and, his, and they were moving into a place together, and his one thing that he insisted on is that he had an office with a lock on the door. <laughs> I was like, how do you get away with that? And he was like, that's my rule, man. You've got to yeah. set boundaries early. That's right. Well, but we have, one of those public, we have one of those public computers, but... Um, in the library. I'm joking. Let's go to Ralph. Hey, Ralphie! <laughs> yeah! Hey, now. hey uh, I, I, I respect that about Rebecca. I mean, oh. pregnant women, you really don't need to see that, especially they, when they wear tight clothes nowadays and stuff. That's You're better. saying pregnant stay. women should stay in hiding? Yes. Yes, uh -huh. I agree. After the first three months, stay home. Listen, Why it's just... Go solo? <clears throat> he did want to go solo. I know that. He yeah, told so me that. So why not, Jerry? Because yeah. because I can't, man. Because I just can't. Wait. And you know what? I, and I understand. Boy. And I knew I was going to get this, and I was expecting it. Boy. And I just can't. And you guys know a lot of other people who are Dude, involved. Why don't you be, ask them? Well, who do we know who's involved? You know everybody who's involved. Well, it's only you, you and Rebecca. John has something to do with you this? know everyone here. You know. Wait, how would John know why you're not coming? You're asking me, and I gave everyone my answer. But I but gave everyone. John doesn't care. I talk to him off the air about. Well, he tells you. What did John say to you? To me, no, no. yeah, Ralph. I actually here, here's the deal. Honestly, I said yeah. to, I was saying to John, like I thought it was sort of, like kind of fucked up that you invited Rebecca and Jerry because right. it, it, uh, 
you know, I thought like John. I love John. I like I love Rebecca and and, and right, Jerry right, now. And the fact is, rap. that was my rap. And John it. said, "You know what? I don't care." And I say, "I'm not mad at Howard." And I knew John. That. And I knew John didn't care. He told me he didn't care. Yeah. But maybe that's not what he's saying mm-hmm. elsewhere. No, he he he, no, no, he, no, he, he could have put the kill on the Rebecca and Jerry invite. Yeah. And, and, but and, I'm saying he said that to you. Maybe he's saying something else. He would have said it to else. me. He would, he would have, have said it to Ralph. No, he wouldn't. Sure he would. He, he doesn't said want Stern's anybody fucked to know up. how affected he is. Yeah. All right. Dominic, what did you want to say? Go right. ahead. First of all, there's absolutely nothing wrong with her not wanting going to the wedding. If she's feeling a tremendous, and she's got two babies, why should she want to walk around at a wedding where everyone's feeling you know, hot and feeling great? That's normal. Thank you, Dominic. Number two. The good news is the boat is about to be launched on Saturday again. And I want to invite John, if you're still here, to take you out for a trip. Jerry. New York. <laughs> Jerry. Jerry He's such an asshole. He well, doesn't, maybe he doesn't want to invite Dominic. me now. You know what an asshole Dominic is? He just called you, you know, he just called you John, which is Rebecca's John. former husband. <laughs> but the funny thing is, is that, like, he'll spend entire weekends with people. And like like Ross name. Sapin's wife. He, we, went, we all went away together. He didn't know her name. The whole time. We got back, we asked him, what's her name? He goes, I don't know. I was on the show for a full mm. year and a half, and he yeah. called me Ernie. Ernie. For a year and a half. So arrogant. It's not arrogant. Has Rebecca it's... ever accidentally called you John? No. Did that ever um, happen? That damn. Uh, that can yeah. happen. No, that didn't happen. You know, um, they, had a, um, they had a dog uh, that when Rebecca and I first started dating, that was uh, a German Shepherd. And right. sadly passed away now, but... Um, when it saw me, it was really friendly with me, and I was a little scared at first, and um, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't understand why it was so friendly with me, and uh, it was mean to everyone else, and she said, he, he thinks you're John. <laughs> 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 there really is a big difference between the both of you, and I was teasing with the name, but there really is a big difference. No, no, you, yeah, he yeah, was yeah, teasing with the name. Liar. Anyway, listen, <laughs> the show, listen, you've got a lot going on on your plate. Yeah. Uh, you're a terrific guest. Uh, Jerry Thanks. O'Connell is on Do Not Disturb. That's right. It's a brand new show. It premieres Wednesday, September 10th at 9.30 p.m. on Fox. Mm-hmm. I know a lot Exciting of Exciting to work on Fox. You get Giants tickets already. Yeah, really? Yeah, they're yeah. really good about that, too. Yeah, well, know, we need free Giant tickets. Now. I know a lot of people enjoy you on this show, and because of that, I think they should give you a shot with the new show and at least tune in and see the first episode. Thank you, Howard. That's, That's very nice thing, of you. All right? And really, best of luck, you and Beth. It's going to be great. You know, and also, uh, don't worry about us. You're, it's going to get stressful. I mean, you've We're been married not before. Worried about you know you. how it goes. I knew it was important to you to come to the wedding. I knew you really wanted to be there. And yeah. again, like a blowjob, Rebecca could do this for you. I did, but you know what? It's not always about me, Howard. You know, well, it's, it's maybe honestly it's not it's about, about you ever. It's well, I mean, honestly, that day is about you and Beth. Right. Bottom line, we know that. So that's the big. Okay. That's the big thing. Well, you'll be missed. Thank you. All right. Now, Jerry is off to go do the Regis and Ke- that's right. Ke- uh, Kelly, Kelly Ripper yeah. show. Oh, my and God. Do you know this guy I work with? Um, uh, this editor that I mentioned before, Mr. Irwin, um, we make copies of your WOR show. Is that right? Yeah. Well, he I like him already. I, it sounds like good guys. Yeah. Uh, guys with good taste. <laughs> All right. Listen, Jerry O'Connell, Do Not Disturb, premieres Wednesday, September 10th at 9.30 p.m. on Fox. we got to take a break. We'll be back. Thanks, Jerry, for coming Thank in. Thank you. And we'll be back right after these words. Hey, guys. Bye, Ronnie. Jerry, how'd it go, man? Great, man. Dude, Howard uh, seems a little concerned about your situation. Yeah, he's concerned. You know, Howard uh, Howard does... I think Howard genuinely cares about uh, me and especially Rebecca. They're old friends, so I think he's he's concerned that maybe I'm getting pushed around a little bit. Maybe, uh, maybe Howard um, has been pushed around a little bit in previous relationships, but I assure you everything is fine with my wife and I. And there's, there's no chance you're going to this wedding? Oh, man, it's just not up to me to answer that, you know. I, I, I would, it would be a lot of fun. It's just not. It's just I don't, I'm not sure if it's in the cards. Keep your fingers crossed. Yeah, of course. All right, thanks, man. See ya. This is a Holly TV original production. Hundreds of Howard Stern fans audition. I'm here for Beat the Bowie. I don't know if I'll actually be able to beat the Bowie, but I'm definitely going to give him a run for his mama money. Gary's going down. And we're put to the test. 
Some were arrogant. You know more about the show than the guy who produced this film. Okay, he's a Others were absolutely clueless. Ba ba bo, ba ba bo, ba ba bo. Yum. In the end, 15 extraordinary contestants were chosen. Who will have what it takes to beat the buoy? <laughs> His breath smells like a toilet seat, but he's the man that you've got to beat. Hey, can you stop the monkey and beat the buoy? Hey, uh, I'm Steve. I'm from... Welcome to Howard TV's Beat the Buoy. I'm your host, John Hine. This is the game show where you, the fans, get the chance to test your Howard Stern Show trivia knowledge against none other than Gary Baba Buoy Delabate. These three contestants will compete for the chance to reach the buoy round where, if they beat the buoy, they can win a grand prize of $5,000. Now here's how the game works. There are three rounds of trivia to each game. The third and final round is the buoy round. More on that in a moment. Each round consists of 15 questions. The first round questions are worth five points. Second round questions are worth five or 10 points. And questions in the buoy round range from five to 25 points. And there's a little twist we've thrown in once per round called the buoy video vault question. It's the same concept as a regular question, except you'll look at a video clue to help you with your answer. Now remember, the three of you are competing for a chance to beat the buoy. Therefore, the contestants with the lowest score in the first and second round will be eliminated. Which means the remaining contestant will move on to the buoy round, where they go head to head with Gary Baba Buoy Delabate himself on Howard Stern Show Trivia. If you beat the buoy, you're five grand richer. And if you don't beat the buoy, well, at least you got a hell of a studio tour. Now it's time to get to know the people behind the podiums over here, and we'll start off with our first contestant, whose name is Steve. How you doing, Steve? Hey, John, how you doing? Good. How's everybody doing today? Good. Woo. You sound like a cheesy game show host. Ah, uh, that's it. I'm where glad you, to be here. Where are you from, Steve? I'm from Brick, New Jersey. Oh, lovely, lovely Brick. That's around Artie Lang, isn't it? Ah, uh, yeah, I'd rather not say where Artie lives. It's Sworn to 127 secrecy. on the parkway. Yep, oh, Sworn to Secrecy. Let's go over to the woman next to you, who is Iris. Iris, welcome to Beat the Buoy. Thank you. How are you feeling today? Excellent. You like your chances against these two guys? I do. Now, I do. Uh, one no, of no. your hobbies, it says here, is decoupaging. What is yes. that? It's, uh, you make a collage, and you use this, uh, it looks like glue, and you can, it makes it look shiny afterwards, and I made a tissue box dedicated to Howard Stern, so it's a collage of Howard on a lovely tissue box. And how long have you been doing that for? Not the collage, just the whole hobby. Um, I don't know, probably 10 years. Well, we're thrilled that you're a fan of the show, and Thank welcome you. to Beat the Buoy. Thank Our you. last contestant's name is Dave. How's, How's it going, going John? How's everything? Who's your uh, favorite person on the show? My favorite person on the show is probably JD. Just when they get him in this, in, in, when they get him in here, and he just can't speak, it's it's just classic. He's the best. Well, JD will be thrilled to hear that he's someone's favorite on the show. You, I'm sure you made his day. Steve. He is my favorite. Close second is Richard Christie. I love him too. All right. Well, Dave, Iris, Steve, I wish you all luck on Beat the Buoy. Thank now you. it's time to play. Quick reminder: when I ask a question, the first contestant to buzz in, that's the only person who can answer. If that contestant answers incorrectly, then the other contestants will be able to answer if they think they have the right answer. Anyone who buzzes in will have a chance to answer the question. And a quick side note, if you get a question wrong, we will deduct points depending upon how many points that question's worth. So it's possible that you can end up with a negative score. Hopefully that won't happen. And speaking of buzzing in, Baba Booey will be watching from his office and may chime in with comments every so often. Gary, any thoughts before we start this game? Get ready to get your asses kicked. <laughs> hey, Gary, you want to repeat the rules? Because I know your brain doesn't really register things as quickly as we can. So we, we've got it down. But if you'd like to repeat the rules, we'll, we'll wait. No, I just want your ass get hit by the door when you're first out. <laughs> oh, boy. Trash we'll talk, see. Trash talking already starts. That means we're going to have a good game. Good luck, Dave. Good luck, Iris. Good luck, Steve. Everybody ready to go? Yes. Go. Absolutely. John, it's always the loudest that go out the first. Well, yeah, you know, we'll see. Baba Booey. These questions are worth five points each. Good luck, players. Here we go. Who is Robin Quiver's current boyfriend? Baba Boo. Steve. Jim Florentine. Ooh, Jim Florentine is correct, and Steve has an early lead. What caused Amy Fisher to leave the studio mid-interview in March of... Yes, boss. Iris? Um, Mary Buttafuoco's daughter called in. What caused Amy Fisher to leave mid-interview in March 2008? Jessica, Mary Jo's daughter, 
called in. You are Damn. correct. You get five nice points. Good. And let's relive fast. what might have been Howard's shortest interview ever. Nice. All right. Look who's on the phone. Here's your first phone call. I told you, open up a can of worms. Uh, Jessica, Mary Jo's daughter. Oh, dear. Oh. Jessica, I can't talk to you. Uh, Amy doesn't want to speak well, with you. Well, maybe Jessica can well, talk to us. Bad. I didn't want Amy to come onto my front doorstep and shoot my mother in the face. The least she could do is you five minutes. I don't even have a lot to say to her. I said, what? Wait. You're leaving? You don't want to talk to her? <laughs> well, okay. Well, well wow. okay, we'll see you. Oh, this is. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. Well, uh, Jessica, Amy doesn't want to speak to you. She left. Steve's got five. Iris got five. Dave talked a lot of trash. Yet to get on the board. I know. I got to get my head in the game. I understand. But it's early. Right, Let's it's go early. to our next five-point question. Doctor Sal Calabro is what kind of doctor? Yes, boss. Iris. Plastic surgeon. Plastic surgeon or cosmetic surgeon? We would have accepted. Closet. And Iris, you're out in the lead. Ten points for you. Five for Steve. Dave, still with a goose egg. You're right. I'm just not. I'm, I'm not good at these game shows. I gotta go, I gotta get my head in the head in the game. Gotta push the buzzer. Well, to be honest, the only reason why I came was because my father's a dentist, and he asked me to get an apology from you because I'm not going into the family business. So, it's the only just, reason why I'm here. Just leave, Dave. Just leave. <laughs> Dave, you got plenty of time. You got plenty of time. Five points if you get it right, five points. Stamina, you, Gary, you, stamina. Five points if you get it right, you lose five points if you get it wrong. Next question. What is Jackie Martling's ex-wife's name? Yes, boss. Iris. Nancy Siriano. Nancy. Mm, Siriano. Judges? I'm sorry, that's incorrect. Steve. Nancy Siriani. Siriani is what we were looking for. Dave, you bust in, but you were a little late. How However, late? you lose five. God, Steve, you get late. five. Dave, you're still at zero. On to the next question. What is Beetlejuice's real name? Hello, hello. Dave. Lester. Lester is correct, and Dave go. is on the board Told with you. five. Slow and steady. Let's keep going. Who calls in with the weekly gossip game? Yes, boss. Iris. Mike Walker. Mike Walker is the man, and you are now tied for the lead with 10 and st with Steve. And Dave, you're only five points behind. <sighs> Which whack packer recently admitted to being gay? Hello, hello. Dave. Oh, God, why? Baba Booey. Oh, it's, uh... uh I'm sorry, Dave. Time is out. up. I am, really? Steve, I believe you buzzed in next. Joey Boots. Joey Boots is the one we were looking for, and he proved it by kissing a man on the show. And this if my words pathetic. can't convince you, take a look at that screen to watch this touching. What is it? Hold it, guys. What's going on right now? This I'm feel feeling his chest right now. Okay, go ahead. Feel his stomach. You're feeling his package? Oh, my oh. <laughs> oh he's gay. Whoa. He is gay. All right, oh, you're gay, man. Oh. Oh. Dude, you're gay. Oh oh. Wow. Oh. wow. Okay. Oh. You're both gay. Joey's playing with his penis. If you don't stop, I'm going to be gay, I think. Uh, okay, all right, all right. Oh, all you're right. gay and I'm nauseous. Okay, 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 okay. Oh, right, my God. Enough. Joey, I've you're in heat. Jo oh, whoa, oh they're God. back at it. Oh, my God. Oh, I think it's fun. I think you're oh, going to leave. Uh, <laughs> 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 oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Enough, what was enough, that? Enough. Did you see that, Rob? I told I you he's it gay. Off. Steve, yeah, what did you think you... of that moment? Oh, I think I just threw up a little bit in my mouth. Ugh. Iris? Uh, I think Joey Boots is gay. Dave? <laughs> yeah, you know, I thought it was a bit to get back on the show, but he's gay. No, Joey he's means definitely business. gay. He's that gay. That was a gay kiss. Joey is gay, as proven by that video clip. Steve, you're in the lead with 15. Iris, you've got 10. Dave, you missed, so you've got zero, yeah. but there's plenty of first round left. Let's go okay. to the next question. When Marianne from Brooklyn calls into the show, what... For hello, second? hello. Dave? Uh, bird? Can you be more specific? It's a, it's a crow. What sound effect does Fred play? The answer is a crow, and you're oh, right, Dave, and you've got up? five. D Steve, you'll have time to answer. Just let Dave I do his you. thing if I he buzzes you. in first. Next question. Which member of the show was goofed on for buying his mother a cookie Mama puss? Boy. Steve? Fred Norris. A cookie puss ice cream cake for Mother's Day. Fred is correct, and Steve, you've got the lead at 20 points. All right. What's George Takei's partner's name? Baba Bowie. Steve? Brad. We all know Brad, and Steve's got five more points. Get Brad on. is George's partner. Who was Howard's general manager at K-Rock? Yes, boss. Iris. Tom Chiasano. Tom Chiasano is the name we're looking for, and Iris, you're closing in on Steve, who's got 25. Dave, you're still there with five. Okay. Don't worry about it. And hey, it's time for our first Bowie Video Vault question. Okay. So take a look at that monitor. Who is Howard referring to in this clip? I don't want you to leave mad. 
Because I'm not. I do. But I'm, Tell her to get her fat ass in here. Oh, there she goes. Elevator door Give closed. me the goddamn microphone. I'll She's go gone. Get She's gone. A fucking cunt. Oh. Oh my God. Steve, you, you really must in first. Who the fuck really? is she thinks Rachel she Hunter. Is. Ah. Rachel Hunter is correct. Rachel call, Hunter is the name Steve. we were looking for, and Steve has 30 points and a big lead. Which Stern Show staffer is known for his yearly block parties? Baba Booey. Steve. Ronnie the Limo Driver Mund. Ronnie the Limo Driver, a.k.a. Ricky Man, is the name we were looking for. And Steve, you've got another five points. Next question. Who is Howard's clothing stylist? Baba Booey. Steve. Ralph Sorella. Ralph Sorella is yeah, the man Baba. with the clothes, and Steve's got another right answer. Hey, he's got his hand on there. Now I see how it is. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, Gary. <laughs> 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 Listen, I'm just trying to get your mama money, and I didn't realize I can keep my hand over this, and now I know. <laughs> All right, let's go to the next question. Who is known for saying, Arrivederci, cocksucker? Iris. Crazy Alice. Arrivederci, cocksucker. Now I get to finish it, and Crazy Alice is correct. You've got five points, and that is the end of round one. Steve, you're in the lead with 40. Iris, you've got 20. And Dave, <sighs> I hate to say that Gary called it, but you've got five points. I was humbled. Dave, sorry, Dave, I was humbled. Which puts I'm you sorry, in last place. What happened, Dave? I'll tell you exactly what happened was I had my hands here, Where my contestants you? had their hands here. I wasn't really game I wasn't game show ready is really what it was. Oh, Gary, any That's parting it. words for Dave? Don't let it speak for itself. It's always the guy with the biggest mouth that goes first. You well, know, maybe as a concession, I can get some floss from Gary, because I know he's got plenty of it in his office. <laughs> well, Steve and Iris, congratulations. You'll be moving on to the second round. Nice. Dave, I'm sorry to say, but your time at Beat the Bully is up. Take care. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> The second that Gary got on screen and started talking to us, I was hypnotized by his front two teeth, and I just couldn't get out of that. And to be honest, I, I just I lost track of where the buzzer was, uh, the lights, and just Gary, and I could smell his breath from the uh, from the room, and it, and I just lost it. It was over. Baba Booey. Well, we're sorry to see Dave go, but as they say, the show must go on. Actually, Gary, are you sorry to see him go? You know what? He really was talking a lot of crap, and uh, and now, you know, he's going to go home empty-handed. Well, uh, I could put my hand on the buzzer. <laughs> a lot of sympathy coming from Gary, and now it's time for Steve and Iris to duke it out in round two. Currently, Steve is in the lead with 40 points, and Iris is second with 20 points. There's a lot at stake here. Whoever has the most points at the end of this round advances to the buoy round, where they'll have a chance to beat the buoy and win $5,000. Now remember, questions in this round are worth anywhere from five to ten points. Everybody ready? Yes. Absolutely. Here we go. Round two begins right now. Eric the Midget aspires to be what? Baba Booey. Steve. An actor. Eric the Midget wishes to be Eric the actor. And Steve, you've got five more points building your lead. Steve Langford has a huge... Baba Booey. Steve? Penis, penis, penis. Penis, penis, is, penis. penis is correct. The echo as well. And you've Damn. got five more points. Next question. Sal's wife has an emotional... Iris? Friend. Emotional friend is what we were looking for. You buzzed in early, but it paid off. You get five points. Artie recently walked off the show after having a fight with... Baba Booey. Steve. Teddy? Teddy microphone is what we were looking for, and you've got five points, Steve. Oh, when Colin Quinn was in the studio in November of 2007, which whack packer called... Baba Booey. Steve? Eric the Midget? I'm sorry, that's incorrect. Iris, listen to the entire question. Which whack packer called in to have phone sex with him? Wendy the retard. Wendy the retard is correct. Steve, you lose five points. Ooh, Iris, you get right. five points. And please take a look at the moment that single-handedly killed the phone <laughs> sex industry. Hello? Hey. I want to have phone sex with you. You do? Are you going to get me excited? Yeah. <laughs> Wendy... The best way you can, I'll keep quiet because everyone accuses me of talking too much during phone sex. I'll leave you alone with Colin. Tell Colin what you would do to him. I will bathe the F out of you. You will? Yes. And will I enjoy it? Yes. What are you wearing right now? Tell Colin. I wear my One Piece baby suit. <laughs> Most action Colin Quinn has gotten in the last year or so. so but a, a memorable yeah. moment. From a cat, I believe, he got some action. Yes, Colin oh, has had a man. checkered past. Yes. Uh, 50 for Steve, 30 for Iris. Now these are 10-point okay. questions. 10 points if you get it right. You lose 10 if you get it wrong. 
What were the official radio station call letters when Howard was on K Rock? Yes, boss. Iris. WXRK. WXRK is correct, and Iris, you get 10 points. Next question. During what time slot did Howard have his show on during his time at WNBC? Baba Booey. Steve. Afternoons. Afternoon drive or afternoons is acceptable, 3 p.m. to 7 p.m., and Steve gets 10 points. What show staffer won VH1's Rock and Roll? Baba Booey. Steve? Baba Booey. Gary Delabate is the correct answer. That's 10 points for you, Steve. Let's go to our next 10-point question. What NBC sitcom did Robin Quivers appear yes, on? Boss. Iris? The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Fresh P Prince of Bel-Air is correct. Yes. 10 points for Iris. You're only 20 behind. What member of the show claims to be a former state hula hoop champion? Baba Booey. Steve? Benji? Benji is correct. Whoa. Benji Bronk. And it's time for everybody to take nice. a little break and enjoy the hula hoop skills of the one and only Benji Bronk. He did a great <laughs> job. Uh, Steve, you've got 80. Iris, you've got 50. Next question. What is the name of Fred Norris's band? Baba Booey. Steve? The King Norris Band. Judges? Yeah. We'll take that. King Norris, the King Norris Band. Steve, you're right, and you've got 90 points. In the studio, Howard used to keep a large bowl with Rosie O'Donnell. Yes, Iris. Jelly beans. With Rosie O'Donnell's face on it, what was the bowl filled with? Jelly beans is the answer Ooh, we were looking for. Dude, you so buzzed in early again, and it paid off, I Iris. Have to. You're only 30 behind. Remember, right, if Steve yeah. misses a question, he loses 10. Yeah. But if you miss it, you lose yes. 10 as well. Next question. Name all of Howard's three daughters. Yes, boss. Iris. Emily, Deborah, Ashley. Emily, Deborah, and Ashley are the names we needed, and you've got 10 more yes. points. What sport does Fred partake in three times a week? Baba Booey. Steve. Boxing. Boxing is right. Ooh. Steve buzzed in quickly, and he's got 100 points. We've saved the final question of round two for our buoy video vault question. Take a look at the monitor and tell me what event is this speech from? Baba Booey. Steve. His last day at K-Rock. His last day on FM Radio K-Rock, a historic moment indeed. That's right, Steve, and you've got 10 more points. And with that, the second round is concluded, and our score, what? Steve, 110, <laughs> Iris, 70. <laughs> Iris, I'm sorry to tell you, but what? your time on Beat the Bowie has come to an oh, end. Yeah, you yeah. put up a hell, of a, a hell of a battle there. You almost Thank had you. him at the end. Man, yeah, and he's quick on the buzzer. What can I do? Steve, congratulations. You're moments away from going face-to-face -face with the man, the myth, the legend, Gary Baba Bowie Delabate. How you feeling right now? I'm coming for you, Bowie. You like your chances? Absolutely. Gary, are you worried at all? No, I'm not worried. Like I said, a lot of these guys are champions when they're playing amongst themselves, but then they have to beat the best. Well, you know about playing amongst yourself, don't you, Gary? <laughs> we'll see what happens, Chubby. <laughs> well, <laughs> coming up next, Steve will try to beat the buoy. Iris, we've got to say goodbye to you, but thank you so much for coming down, and we hope you enjoyed your time on Beat the Buoy. I did. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Could have gone better. I really was. Because I'm standing here now, but... Um... The other dude was really quick on the buzzer, so I kept having to ring in early just to get a chance. But I was really fun. Baba Booey. Okay, we're back for the final round, which we like to call the Bowie Round. And now joining us is Baba Booey, a.k.a. Mr. Gary Delabate. Welcome, Baba Booey. A bit more. Well, this ought to be exciting. Here are a quick couple of notes before we begin. Both of you will begin the buoy round with zero points. The 15 questions in this round will be worth anywhere from 5 to 25 points. Are both of you ready? Yes. Absolutely. Yes. And by the way, you can put your hand up here. The other guy didn't know that. Wah. That's, uh, that's it. Wah. 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 I can put my hand up. Gary, Steve, let the buoy round begin. Richard Christie went to what weekend? Baba Booey. Steve. Rocklahoma. What weekend concert festival in Oklahoma to interview fans? Rocklahoma it is, and you're on the board first with five points. Five point question. Which whack packer was responsible for the song I Got Beers? Baba Booey. Steve. Jeff the Drunk? I'm sorry, that's incorrect. Mama Gary? Monkey. The late, great Kenneth Keith Kalabak. The late Kenneth Keith. Got to be careful, Steve, because yeah, yep, you lose right. five points. Gary, you get five points, and you're in the lead. Howard claims to want to have how many children with Beth? Baba Booey. Steve? None. None or zero would have been acceptable as well. Gary, why I thought you... that was a trick question. <laughs> I thought Howard said like 17 because he wants none. No, I no. knew the answer was none. Okay, the answer was none, and right now you guys are all tied up. 
What high school did Artie graduate? Baba Bowie. Steve. Union High School. To Artie graduate from, which happens to be the same high school where scenes from private parts were shot, Union High School is correct, and Steve, you now have the lead. Next question. What movie studio released private parts? Mama Monkey. Gary. Reicher. Baba Bowie. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. Oh, uh, Steve. Uh, that would be Paramount. That would be Paramount. Reicher what were you thinking, Gary? Reicher Entertainment. There's two, there, it's... So, Steve, you've got a big lead now, 15 to nothing, but Gary, you know there's plenty of time left, and now each question is worth 10 points from this point on. And here's our final Bowie Video Vault question. What was the contest that everyone was reacting to so visibly in this clip? I have to brace myself. Oh, 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 my yes. oh, my God. Steve? Get out of here. I oh, gotta my go. God. The I... uh, smallest penis contest, world's smallest penis contest? I'm sorry, that's incorrect. Gary, you don't have to answer. You can let the clip play out if you want. All right, please continue the clip. I have to leave. I have to leave. No, you're not. You're staying. It. Get it. Sit. It. Sit down in the mic. Run for the hills. <laughs> Gary, what contest are we looking for? I don't know. It was the world's biggest hemorrhoid. Oh. Uh, the yeah. world's biggest hemorrhoid. And thanks to the creative editing of Howard TV, we spared you from dis having to see the actual hemorrhoids. Ten point question. Steve, you lost ten on that one. You you're still in the lead though by five. Which whack packer appeared on the show with black Israelites and later walked out? Which whack packer appeared with black Israelites and then walked out? I have a guess, but I'm not. Time is up. What's your guess, Gary? Oh, yeah, often? No, I'm going to guess Daniel Carver. You're both wrong. It was Fred the Elephant Boy. Ooh. Fred the Elephant Boy. You never know who Elephant Boy is going to show up with. Steve, you maintain, your, <laughs> you maintain your five point lead. Next question, what was Howard sitting on when he first appeared on stage during his... Baba Bowie. Steve? Toilet bowl. During his New Year's Rotten Eve pay-per-view special, a toilet is correct. You buzzed in early and it paid off. Next 10-point question, according to the book Private Parts, what actor did Stuttering John say this to? Did you forget to pull out with Annette Benning? Mama Monkey. Gary. Warren Beatty. Warren Beatty is correct. Beatty, that was my fault, but you're still right and you've got 10 points. Score? You've got 10, Steve's got 15, only down five. During Cabby and Stuttering John's boxing match, what was Beetlejuice dressed up as? Baba Bowie. Steve. Don King. Don. Lost it. Um, uh, uh, Raymond Norman. I'm sorry, time ran out. Gary, Oprah Winfrey, Negro woman from the South. Uh, Raymond Norman. Hey. Raymond Norman is correct. Where'd you come up with that, Gary? I knew it. <laughs> the early buzzer cost you there, Steve, and yes, now you did. trail Gary by 10. You have 25. <laughs> Gary has 35. Next question. Who was the winner of Howard TV's Bowling Beauties? The name of the winner of Howard TV's Bowling Beauties. That was like last week. <laughs> that's, that's not a good commercial for Howard no, TV. I need, like, I need something that, that jars my memory. I mean, a hot chick. <laughs> Well, I, can you be more specific? Exactly. A very hot check. Right. Well, guy, I'm sorry, guys. You don't know the answer. It's Jackie. Jackie. Who oh, actually, Jackie. Who actually Jackie. came in on the show, and I think she might have had a crush on Artie. Our next 25-point question with Gary ahead by 10. What TV host did Howard tie up on... I'm a monkey. Gary. Bill Boggs. On Comedy Tonight yeah. in 1985 and stuff a red S&M ball into his mouth, it was Bill Boggs. And, Gary, that's 25 points for you. I may, be, I may be nutty, John, but I see you holding one card, and I see me ahead by 35 points. Well, Gary, you're right, but if you get it wrong and Steve gets it right, he will be our winner. Ooh, let me buzz in first. <laughs> Last question. <laughs> Spence is killing me. Before he worked in radio in Westchester, what ad agency did Howard briefly work for? Gary. Just to be a douchebag, betting the bowls. You are a douchebag, and you're right. Ben and Bowles, you get 85 points. And Steve, I'm Good sorry job, to say you were not able to beat the buoy. What happened at the end there? Well, I knew him, but I, I, if you see, I was mouthing the words, but I didn't buzz in quick enough. I'm just like Dave at the end there, that uh, <laughs> not quick enough. So, Gary, were you worried that he was going to take you down? He came. Once we got, when I was within five points of him at the 25 point question, I thought I had a good chance because the 25 point ones are very difficult, and that's my forte. Well, Dave, you didn't beat the buoy, but you don't leave here empty-handed. You've won a two-night stay at the beautiful, brand-new Alegria Hotel and Spa in <laughs> Long Beach, New York, which opens in 2009. Wow. And you, will, you and a guest will enjoy a spa treatment at the Alegria Spa and dinner at Alegria's Atlantic Restaurant, where you enjoy their breathtaking views. Go to AlegriaHotel.com for more information. You know what we're laughing at? It's not insulting enough that he got his ass kicked. His name's Steve, and you've been calling him Dave for the last five minutes. <laughs> well, Dave, Steve, that's not all. <laughs> Bell is now going to present you with the sign, Beat the Buoy Canvas. 
compliments of photo fiddle where you can transform your photos into incredible art it won't look like bell but it looks pretty damn good gary any final thoughts on the match you know what? He was really good. It's uh, it's tough when you get to the finals, oh, absolutely, man. Absolutely, absolutely. We appreciate it. Steve, did you enjoy your time down here? Absolutely, absolutely. Well, I, 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 I can't say enough. Everybody's been great, and it's just been an excellent time. Absolutely. Well, you didn't beat the buoy, but you got some great parting gifts. That's yours to keep. And that does it for this edition of Howard TV's Beat the Buoy. I'd like to thank our contestants, Dave, Iris, and our finalist, Steve. And, of course, the man himself, Gary Baba Buoy Delabate. I'm John Hine, and we'll see you next time on Howard TV's Beat the Buoy. For me, it went really great. For him, not so well. It, it went good. It, he, he had me at the end. Gary, Gary knows his stuff. I mean, I guess if I worked here that long, I'd know it too. But, uh, you know, he beat me. He beat me. Teams look with John Hyde and Gary Delabate. The best of the wrap-up show begins now. Hey, this is John Hyde, and on Tuesday's wrap-up show, we all try to figure out exactly what it was that made Ralph puke all over Howard Sheets in his house. Frickin' gross. Many people are skeptical that Howard will actually not invite Ralph out once again. Well, you know, I was thinking about this today, and if it were just up to Howard, it might be the difference. But, you know, it's not Howard's house anymore. It's Howard and Beth's house, and I think that she has a voice. I'm not saying she doesn't want Ralph there, but I think that when you're, you know, when you're a guy and somebody vomits all over your house, it's like, ah, uh, you know, whatever, I'm a guy. But when you're a couple, now, you know, you have to deal with the fact that, you know, I mean, Howard's having pretty nice parties out there, having some, you know, pretty high-end celebrities over. Does he want a guy yakking in his <laughs> guest room? So you think Beth's going to put the kibosh on this? No, I think it's a decision that comes together. You know what I mean? As opposed to if Howard just made the decision alone, it might be, you know. But I don't know. I, I do know that earlier in the year, which Howard sort of alluded today, uh, alluded to today, that he had, like, sort of an intervention with Ralph about, you know, being a better guest. And Ralph seemed to take it very seriously. But Ralph is saying, hey, I didn't do anything wrong. This, I, I didn't do something wrong on purpose. This just happened. Do you believe that it just happened? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, listen, if you wake up and there's vomit all over the place, I've never had that happen in my life, and that's that's a tough one. So, I don't know. You think somebody slipped him a Mickey? Well, I, 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 I know there was a whole roofie theory, but that was the last time he was out there. Benji, you got a theory? I think, by the way, I think he was slipped a roofie because you and I both saw that woman he was dancing he with. Probably... <laughs> <laughs> he was dead. I, I, Ralph goes, why didn't you stop me? Ralph was dancing with a woman who had to be at least 50 years old and at least 200 pounds. So I believe that someone slipped something in his drink. <laughs> Benji, you were saying? Well, isn't, isn't that a symptom of concussion? Throwing up, vomiting is a symptom of a concussion. Yeah, and it does not, that can happen like a day or two later. I Absolutely. Think. So maybe, True. I mean, maybe there's some truth to it. But I thought they had a point saying, why are you running he, down the beach and doing like all that? It could have induced it, too, right? You know, all that, you know, if it was post-concussion syndrome. J.D., what do you think of all this? Uh, I don't know. It's a lot of excuses, but who knows? It's, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what you think of it. I just told you what I think of it. I I uh, I don't I don't know, um, but he does have a lot of you know things going on to cause these problems possibly. Yeah. See, if this was if this were the first time, he'd be yeah. he'd be okay. <laughs> right. But it's you know it's a cumulative effort hey, of a behavior. What would you do? I mean, because Ralph at least is is they have a a level of friendship, Howard and him, that's different than most of us with Howard. 
if you were at Howard's house and you threw up in bed that night or, or crapped in the bed. I would I mean, take. Can you imagine that fucking nightmare? I know what I would do. I would have taken the sheets and rolled them in a ball, and I would have thrown them in the garbage. And I would have hey, found new sheets. Have... To put, I would have found new sheets to put on. I would have got the <laughs> housekeeper and said, "Listen, th- big mistake keep, keep between us." And then I would have quietly bought new sheets and replaced them. And you know, she, I'm sure she would have told Howard. But at least an effort. Like, I don't know, throwing them in the washing machine at that point, just get rid of them. But I guess he thought he was doing something good, right? No, by I, throwing them in the washing. He machine. was trying to do the right thing. But there, there is no good to be done with that situation. I mean, if you try to throw them out, where do you throw them? You know, the, like, the part that the part of the story that kept making me want to vomit myself was Howard said the housekeeper opened the uh, washing machine. He kept bringing uh, up the word carrots. He kept saying something about carrots. <laughs> that was nasty. Here's the tail end of that. Hit number one, Ted. Now there are these big white stains everywhere oh. where there was stains and all the bedding is ruined. Jeez. And I said, this motherfucker. So he, so I finally he emerges. I see him. Oh, oh, he stayed. He stayed. I gone. No, no, no. <laughs> then he comes in. He goes. Oh, I didn't feel good. He goes. I think he goes. It's from my head injury. I said, you uh, motherfucker. You're uh, going to uh, have a head injury. Uh, <laughs> I go, a head injury. There's not a scratch on you. A lot of skepticism in the room. Yeah, I mean, if you go through something like that where you're like, you know, really injured, I wouldn't, I would just stay at home. I wouldn't be going over to somebody else's house, you know, for fear of something like puking in someone's Yeah, bed. but wouldn't he have felt the night before, wouldn't he, have, wouldn't you start to feel... I mean, did you just go to sleep and throw up, or d- wouldn't you feel a little woozy or something? I would think so. Yeah, the other thing, by the way, you know, there's no winning in this situation. Robin's like, he stayed, I would have left. But if it went the other way, he left in the middle of the night? What a jerk. <laughs> Ooh, there's no winning. Ralph Sorella, you're on the wrap-up show. Uh, let me just uh, say one thing. Like, I didn't, I, I was supposed to go out there on, like, Sunday. I, I, I whacked my skull on Saturday. <laughs> and uh, I felt fine. And I woke up on Sunday, and, like, my head hurt, my neck hurt. And I, and I called Howard. I go, you know what, I, I, I'm, I'm a little whacked out. I don't think I should come and I'll see how I feel tomorrow so then the next day I felt better and I went and I don't know maybe this is an after effect of it I, I don't know so I didn't like you know what I mean I didn't go out there feeling like shit I felt fine right. is there any chance that this wasn't an after effect of it like did you drink too much that night or did no. you eat the wrong thing no no I mean I was burping like a pig because I ate all this garlic and stuff and that might have upset my stomach but I mean it, it was god awful. I have, mean, you, have you ever woken up? No, and no. Oh, oh, dude! It was like it was like it was like a nightmare. I mean, for, <laughs> you know, I woke. <laughs> Lucky didn't choke to death. Yeah. I know. I, I, I woke up and I like I, I, I get up out of bed and I look down and it's just like it's on me and it's on the side of the pillow and it, it was awful. Did you oh. expect Howard's reaction today? I didn't really hear it, but it, it, yeah, I mean, I I think. I don't know. I don't know. I, you know, how about a little? Uh, how about a little uh, sympathy? Sympathy. Once you I get... mean, I could have fucking died, really. That's what you should have done. You should have created a more serious injury. Oh, I should have died. <laughs> once, Ralph, once you got your head together and realized what the hell was going on, was your first instinct well, to throw I... everything in the washing machine? Well, yeah. Start I mean, that was yeah. That was my instinct, and I, I I thought I like got rid of everything before I threw it in the washing machine. But I, you know, <laughs> I, I don't know. And then I don't know. It's just horrible. I was afraid to go back to sleep because like. What if it happened again? And it, because this was like six o'clock in the morning, five six o'clock in the morning, I woke up to this. Hey, Howard said there was brown stains, and he thought it could have been that you defecated, but you said you didn't. Like, how do you know for sure you didn't? Now, I would know if I like I the same way I knew that I threw up and I didn't. You know what I mean? Like, I would know if I shit myself. But what were the brown stains then? I don't know. Probably just probably just throw up everywhere. <laughs> No, it was sort of like on the pillows and on the sheet, you know, and it's all these nuts. Oh, it's ho- I felt awful. I, I, I felt awful for days after. It was horrible. You mean, you, mean felt, you felt awful physically or felt awful for what you did in their house? Yeah, but both. Like, just a combination. Really horribly depressing. And, and you know, it was fun. I was like having the best day ever. It was like, it was beautiful weather. It was really fun and having a great time. And then, oh. Do you think you've exhausted your invitations to his house? Um, I, I, I don't know, but, you know, hey, it's the end of the summer. Who cares? <laughs> so on Wednesday's wrap-up show, I had to defend myself again. Um, this this time because I didn't sing on the way home from Artie's party. And um, again with Jared. So enjoy. <laughs> Ooh. 
wrap up show semi regular JD Harmar now joining us. Uh, oh. What was the deal with high pitched Mike and and showing off his body and that was uh, this guy named Wolf uh, who is such a, a brilliant genius, constantly trying to think of ways to get on the air and wacky topics to to bring out weird games to play, mainly with uh, Mr. Gary Delabate. Um, and he decided to throw in me and Hi- he decided to throw a curveball today and uh, do a game with me and High Pitch Mike because apparently I'm his monkey too now. Ooh, sensing a little passive aggressiveness and sarcasm coming from you. Well, that's exactly what you're getting. And he threw in a monkey joke about Gary. That's true. Oh, no, yeah, no. you went in and were proud to flex your arms in front of Robin. No, I wasn't proud to flex anything. <laughs> Why not? Because I don't, I know I don't have uh, a a great body, so why would I want to show it? Do you think you're a better looking guy than High Pitch Mike? I, I I I'm not gonna. Go, I don't want to go there. Why? Why? I, does. Yes, I don't know. You have an opinion. You do think so? I think I have. You know, I think in the sense that my eyes are okay and <laughs> I have a hair and, and. What's the name of your fantasy football team? <laughs> High pitch Mike's Google Eye. Oh no! Oh Jesus! What's after a song parody? Oh, no. He loves it. Do you feel better now that Howard defended you with Ganji singing in the car? Uh, oh, yes. What was with that? What was with his singing? It sounded so gay. It was awful. It was. Uh, I felt bad for you, JD. <laughs> as soon as everyone got in the car, I was a little lit, and you know, uh, and they just kept changing the radio station constantly to different songs like every two seconds the station was changing they would change it in the middle of a song so you hear you go from one song to the other to the other to the other it was like it was very annoying you've never changed a radio station like that you make it sound like it's the oddest thing in the world no but i mean it was songs they liked and but they would still switch the song you know what i mean like the, the thing i found more interesting was that you didn't know any of those songs uh, like you I, kept saying you didn't know the song. I knew the I knew the words to that Bon Jovi song or whatever it was, but no, I don't know the, the whatever the. Uh, I I might know the hook, but I don't know the full words. Listen, I only you know I didn't listen to I, I listened to rock radio a lot in in Florida, and uh, I listened to pop radio when I was in Fairborn. And I hardly remember those songs. All right, I'm not looking for bio, okay? <laughs> Sorry. Well, you want to know what I listened to. Sorry. When you were on the way from Fairborn to Florida. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what you listen to in Iowa? <laughs> John in Atlanta, you're on the wrap-up show. Hey, guys. How's it going? Thanks for taking my call. Hey, John. I, uh, I'm fascinated by the feuds like J.D. and Jared. I'd love to see J.D. team up with Jared to play DePace and uh, Jason in like a game of ping pong. Be great to see the dynamic of those two hating each other, but having to work together. Yeah, the, the idea is really good. Ping pong is the wrong, the wrong. They should have well, anything, something really. like a three-legged race or something. Yeah. Something where they really have to be, you know, teamed up together. Yeah, I think uh, anything. I, ping pong, I just threw out there. But JD, you're so angry, man. JD, do you think you could, angry? Do you think you could team up with Jared on something like that? If I had to, yes. <laughs> If we if 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 we paid you five thousand dollars to live with J- Jared for a month, would you do it? To live with yeah, him? live with him, live in the same apartment. And he only gets the five thousand if he makes it the entire yeah, month. Would it end- be Jared's beautiful apartment? <laughs> yeah, or JD's? <laughs> yeah, my- yeah, Jared's sprawling. And you have pad. to sleep in the same room room with him and listen to him bang chicks. No, that's, no, no. That's yes, you would do it for five grand. No, I'll do. it. Well, it doesn't matter. No, but that's funny because he wouldn't even have to be in the same room. No, he has sure, to sleep in the same room. It would be so great bed. seeing them coming in and out while Our, while, while JD's. Wait, I, you know, you really wouldn't live with him for five grand I, for I a month. I don't know if I. I Is it, it that be- bad? No, it's just, uh, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. What could Jared say to you? Could he say, J.D., I promise to be nicer, less arrogant, no, I, no, less beautiful, I I, I, no, less charismatic? I, listen, <laughs> I, listen, I, I, I got whatever. I, we were friends and stuff and whatever. But just during that, there were just times where I just kept questioning why I still liked him. And then, you know, he just... Uh, uh, got. Uh, so, I, I'm just tired of explaining. It. But he got a bit of an an attitude or whatever one day, and I just had enough. So I, I had enough. Fair enough. Ganji, you're on the wrap up show. Hey, what's up, guys? What's up? I don't know why Howard thinks that I was being so mean to JD. I mean, 
the whole time, you guys don't even know what the scene was like. You know, it was a two-hour car ride. He was sitting there with the angriest look on his face. What are you doing staring at me? <laughs> Dude, I'm sitting next to you in the car. No, you're not. Hyvitch uh, Mike was sitting next to me. And, and the whole time, he was just really, really angry. And everybody was trying to have a fun time to kill a two-hour ride. And, and he's, the whole time, he's texting high pitch Mike, I hate you, I hate you, I hate you. I was fucking we around. I do that to my brother all the time. Well, it didn't seem like that, and you just seemed angry. I wasn't picking on you at all. I just was I was trying to liven you up a little bit. Uh, well, I don't need you livening me up. <laughs> well, we were all having fun, and we wanted you to join in. I was having fun myself. Th- th- don't worry about me. Worry about yourself. <laughs> uh, you weren't having fun. If you well, were having again, fun, dude, you said you were miserable. I didn't say anything. <laughs> no, you did. You said you were miserable. No, you I did. didn't. You, you I said those really exact words. Yeah, you did. You said you were mad. You said you were angry to be in the car with us. Gan- no, Ganji, Howard accused you of uh, showing off, I guess. And- I wasn't showing off. I mean, it wasn't me. I didn't start the whole sing-along thing. I didn't start any of that crap. I was just going along, having a fun time like everybody else. <laughs> you know? I don't know why, I don't know why I'm the douchebag for, uh, for trying to have a little fun. <laughs> I mean, really. <laughs> Even when you were belting out Starship? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> belting out power, uh, the power station. I like, I, mean, this, I like this. Was he doing Was he doing Asia or was that power station? So no, power, like, power station. station. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, listen, everybody else in the car was doing it. It wasn't just me. High pitch Mike just happened to be sitting next to me and kept shoving the microphone in my face. So that's the only reason you heard me more than everybody else. Were you instigating, Mike? I wasn't instigating, but we, you know, nobody, I don't even think many people had drank or drunk at the party. And we were just having a good time. And I'm wondering if J.D. didn't sing because Jared was in the car or he just didn't want anything to do with anything. I, d- I, don't, I don't sing really all that much. Has anyone really but none of us, sing? None of us do. We all sounded horrible, but that was Well, the fun no, of Jared it. has a great voice, actually. No, but <laughs> Matter of fact, uh, J.D.'s song came on that he did in the song, you know, when he that performed with Stained, and he refused to sing that one. No, again. I said I don't remember the words. <laughs> Listen up. all angry. Huh? You were so angry when I'm angry on. now because you're, you don't know what the hell you're talking about. Hi, Patrick. You're, too busy, you're too busy singing and snapping pictures of me sleeping. <laughs> Will you please explain your feud with Jared again? Just one more time. I tried to get these two to talk together at the party. Yeah. I, I was, exactly. You I was tried. Interviewing Everyone's JD. trying to do stuff. I was Just interviewing leave JD. Me alone. Jared walked by and JD shot me a look because I stopped Jared to, to add into the conversation. JD shot me a look like. Because you know, I know what he's house. doing. He he wanted nothing to do with him, even near him. He's he an instigator. Inst- people are instigators around here. They just want to. You just want it left alone. Yes. So why don't you just go to Jared and say, "Hey, we're fr- you know we're friends and let's move on." Because we're not. It's like Artie and I had vicious, horrible things to say to one another, and we we said, "You know what? Let's <laughs> but move you, past it." You you sort of started that. Why well, we don't even need to get into that. But well, hey, in if, all fairness, you sort of started it because Jared wasn't mad at you. I don't know. This is all very. You guys are fucking. Well, like, there's not, even, there's not even. A, there's not even an event between you and Jared to kind of move past. Right. Uh, well, just, there's the Halloween the pimp costume. Oh yeah, the pimp <laughs> costume. The waiver move. I can't wait till I Halloween rolls around. It has this nothing year. to do with the waiver. Any waiver move. What's the waiver? I think move? it was not that. No, it was it's a fantasy uh, football no, move. Well, no, there was one case. Uh, well, it was a, a move. It was because I made a move and my uh, work. Um, Whatever was questioned, my work uh, ethic, ethic, whatever was questioned. Was that when you stole the kicker? <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Maybe that I was probably out of anger. Hey, we, hey, we and did, I gave Steve Randano his kicker. JD, we did this with uh, Scott and uh, Jason once. What do you like? If you had to pick an aspect of Jared's personality that you do like, what would it be? He is outgoing. He will do whatever. So that's there, and I'm not. Cool. On uh, Thursday's wrap-up show. John Hine, the host of the Rabbit Show, wished me a happy birthday. And uh, everyone thinks I have a big issue about it. I don't. You'll, you'll see it, and uh, you can decide for yourself if I have a birthday or not. Happy birthday, Benj. Oh, thanks. If it but is. Not, your I thought your birthday. birthday's the 14th, it says on Wikipedia. I, I don't listen. I, if, why you guys, if you guys want to talk about that, I'll talk about that. But, I mean. Talk about what? Okay, l- let me bring up this age thing real quick. Well, for, okay, okay, let me ask a question. Okay. When is your birthday? I, l- you don't have to give the year. Yeah. Okay. Is it when, September 4th or 14th? There's multiple. L- let me ask I you I don't this. care about your no, voter registration. Wait, wait, wait. When wait, wait, is wait. your birthday? I have a question. Sure. If someone didn't want something brought up in the air, 
you would respect that, right? Oh, get over. No, what if a like cop? Wait, 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 wait. If someone was gay and they didn't want to brought up the air, would this you respect not, that? Yeah, but this isn't gay. Why would you respect that? Because it's something that could ruin somebody's life. That how how I, to ruin their life? Because people will look at them a different way. Do you think I, people are going to look at you a different way? But if you're 37 or 41, what if I want? What if I, if you believe that, which you do, I think, I don't. Then you should respect that. I don't believe. If it. you believe, it bothers me. And he believe it could. I believe it could hurt. Benji, I don't know, but that's not the reason. I, don't know Benji, what, I can understand why you wouldn't want the year out there. I mean, a lot of women don't want the year that they're born out there for whatever reason. I get that. But to not reveal the month, the actual month and day, who gives a shit? Yeah, to keep from to keep me from knowing that whether you're a Libra or a Scorpion is just you know, <laughs> just just really cruel. But uh, I didn't hear. I'm on the, I'm on the AARP website. What'd you say? If bad joke. Yeah, but you know what I'm saying. I mean, what. If you could explain the reason without divulging too much of why you don't want to give the month and date of your birth, I'll respect that. Yeah, I'll say this. There is, there is, or there are, there is, there is multiple documentation of various dates about my birth. Right. Various years, but, but, various dates. So I'm if gonna, you confirm one of those, and, and, and it may put you in a bad position. I can't tell you this. I, I will soon be 37. That's what you say, but when, when will you soon be thirty-seven? In a week, a month, a year? I'm a Virgo. I don't even. You know what? Again, that's meaningless to me. I, I, I'll tell you again. When, if it when bothers you, hold on, me, when, when you ask me about whether it bothers you and do I respect you and all this stuff, the truth of the matter is, for as long as I've known you, I can never tell what's real and what's not. And I and, and I really feel that this is one of your Andy Kaufman bits. I'm really fat. Okay. <laughs> I can I can confirm that. No, I'm just saying I like like if I really felt it bothered you, but I really do feel like this is one of those ongoing bits that you won't let go of, because you know this is like I, I won't say it doesn't bother the other the other Bronx I, it, name it, that begins with a D that whole bit. Well, I, I don't even know. What See I'm... again, you know what I'm saying? Like like well, let's not go there. Let's stick to one bit at a time. If it is in fact a bit, so go ahead, Benji. What were you going to say? I don't know. I mean, I don't know where we were at. I really. What don't. day is your birthday without the year? Uh, you can celebrate it on the twenty-first of September. So the fourth, which Steve Langford says it is, and the fourteenth, which Wikipedia says it is, are both incorrect. Uh, yes, but there are documents that have multiple dates on it. Right, but forget about. And the there were reasons. For forget that. about the documents. You know, wh when would Benji Bronk get a cake out and say today's the day? I don't eat cake. Apparently, see, is, apparently the twenty first, according to what you just said. If we got you a birthday, no, he cake, said he's. But see, this is why he's so. He's you know so what's interesting? Wiley and cagey. He said you can celebrate it on the twenty first. Oh, is that like Washington's birthday celebrated? I don't know. President's Day. Yeah, and... it should be on Monday, of the, the first Monday <laughs> of September. Uh, IMDb says September fourth. Also, no, it doesn't. Oh, IMDb does. Yeah, yeah. You see, I do think Benji, you do enjoy maintaining maintaining this. Air of mystery about my, your my birthday. My hot mystique. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. You know what? Like, like, I understand why. Like Angie Dickinson it's not my, doesn't want to say not, when she was born because she looks horrible. That's now. my point. She doesn't look. She looks great for seventy three. She's seventy three. We don't know that. It's oh, been I documented. About Angie Everhart. That's why I was. It's been documented in different places at different uh, ages. But go ahead. Uh, I I well, I don't know what the question is. The question that you came in and you By said way, you really want to talk about this. No, no. What I'm saying is like if someone has a problem about their age. It's no different than like the gay thing, which is supposedly respected. Yeah, but, it's, but, we're not, but you, you we're, don't see the difference. And we no, you, you don't see the difference no, because it could really it could da it, it could damage someone's career same way. But we weren't asking you about I, your age. We were asking you about the month and date you were born. That doesn't reveal your age. And by the way, what's the damage, Benji? You don't think there's age discrimination? All the time. I, I mean, I'm okay, being Benji, absolutely okay. serious. When you were 25 and you were masquerading as my 21 year old intern, I almost bought into it. But now the difference between 30... You say you're 37. Steve Langford said you're going to be 40. You say you're going to be 37. He said you're going to be 41. That four-year difference, tell me what the discrimination there's is that, not, you, that it's you not. It's not, it's not a big deal. How will it affect you? He's saying that there's documentation out there that may cause an issue if he revealed his true birth date. No, no I'm not. Okay, well, that's what I, I looked in. That's how I saw it. No, Benji, Can you explain not, it? You know, ben, Benji's saying that he's going to be 37, but if people believe he was going to be 41, it might hurt no, him no, in no, some no, way. No, no, that's not what I'm saying. That's not exactly what I said. I said, if you, you believe I have an issue about my age. No, so, I don't believe you. You have an issue. Uh, okay, can, let's you say, assume, can you say I have an issue about my age? Is that true or not true? It's not true. But, but if you believe that, you should respect that and not, and not reveal it. Okay, I don't believe you have an issue about your age. Okay. I don't believe it. You, you just said you don't. So okay. now why should I believe it? I just I think in your heart you think I do. But, why, but, why aren't you going after Langford then? 
what, what do you mean going after him? Like, why don't you... you know, I, I know stuff about him. I, I've been told things about him. No, but if you tell... By people Langford that know him... has a big penis. No, no, I'm, I think I mean, about his tell, marriage. If you tell Steve, look, you keep saying this, it's wrong, I... Pre, you know, because, because there is documentation. There is, there is things, but that doesn't prove it. I mean, but there is documentation. All right, I have to get he out of this. trying to be world. nice. I had to beg him to wish me a happy birthday, Ben. That's all. John so, Benji, be nice. if, if, if age is not an issue to you and it doesn't matter, why can't you just tell us your date, your birth date, and year? I, I, I did. What is it? September 24th, <laughs> 1971. <laughs> 24th? <laughs> John in Pennsylvania, you're on the wrap up show. I think Benji's hiding his age because he's hiding the criminal background. Benji, is there a criminal past that you're hiding? Um, no. no, I mean, I've, I've been, I've gotten arrested like everyone here. But. See, I think, I think that the hiding the age thing goes to the whole other sort of Andy Kaufman bit that Benji does. That you know, he wasn't born, but he was hatched in some sort I've of. I never weird said I was well, hatched. It, it, well, you imply that some weirdness is in your That's family. Is, is this one of the, is this one of those situations, Gary, where he's literally just sticking to the bit and playing right. it through till the end? Absolutely. Jason? Well, I was gonna, Gary actually kind of made my point, which was that Benji strongly suggests that he was like a test tube baby no, or right. something. That's that, 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 that's wait, the, wait, wait. Do you know what a test tube baby is? Yeah, that means in vitro fertilization. Yeah. Test tube right. baby. But, but that, that, but that, that didn't no, occur until no. 77. Oh, so now you're saying you're, you're 31? I didn't say I was well, in wasn't vitro. your father a scientist? My dad is a, a scientist. He still is. A great, he's a, good, a great biophysicist. Right. And what can you tell us about your grandfather? That The guy who I don't even want to mention... Is not my grandfather. I happily mention my grandfather's name. I love my grandfather. So who's the other guy? That's his father. That's the one you can't mention. No, I I love my dad, and that's not true. I I don't want to say my dad's name just because I don't want him on the thing, but that's not the D thing. It has nothing to do with my dad's name. That's what you always told me. You said that's my dad's name. No, I have never said that. That's what You're lying now. This is an official lie. Show me any tape that I ever said that was my father. The the, the D guy that we can't mention, which then who is he to you? That I've, I've told you guys not to go into. Right. But you never explained it. It's again. It's part of the bit. It's the weird bit. It's the the mystery. It's almost like a weird. Have you ever had, told me, so, like, Gary? Have you ever said, Ben, just don't bring that up on the air? Have you ever said anything about that? Have you ever? Has there ever been a time you said this should not be brought up on the air? You, right, but but the point. I'm trying, and and I've respected that, Ben. The point I'm making is I've tried to have this conversation with you off the air, and I can't have it. Right. So, I, in other words, I'm bringing up the fact you don't have to tell me everything. But even when I try to talk to you off the air, when there's no microphones around, no cameras around. And I'm trying to have a heart to heart to figure out who you are, or what you're about. I can't get to the bottom of it. Right. We don't even know what generation you belong to. How can we bond with you? See, here's the, and, and again, here's the weird thing about Benji, and we should do this on the wrap-up one show one day. Uh, um, you know, and I don't know if it's part of the whole bit that he's doing, I'm not doing but Benji has no sense of pop culture. Okay. You ask Benji about that, like you ask him about a, a line from a movie, and he looks at you blankly. You talked about the Brady Bunch, and he looks at you blankly. Like, there's things that people who are around our age just know. Lines from movies, and Benji goes, "Yeah, we didn't have a TV, or or, or we didn't go watch that movie." Or well, clearly, that would that. tip you off to how old he is. But but then on the other hand, with that, Benji could talk to you about peanuts for eight hours. Like he knows everything about peanuts. And, you mean and, the peanut or the cartoon? No, I mean actual peanuts that you eat. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm a I'm a peanut trivia expert. You are. I saw you have a conversation with an intern one time. Benji, about Washi- eight hours. Benji Washington Carver. Yeah, that was right, yeah. <laughs> no, but it, but it's like this thing. Like it's I I since the day I met Benji, I've always been amazed at some of the pop culture things he just doesn't know. Well, actually, that's true. most of my pop culture knowledge is since I've worked on the show. Right. Like like you'll you'll quote, like have you ever seen the movie The Godfather, in full? I I've read the book. But have you ever seen the movie in full? I don't. I, you gave it to me. It was really nice, of you, but I don't. I don't know if I've seen right. it yet. Have you? How many episodes, if any, have you ever seen of the show The Brady Bunch? Brady Bunch, I know pretty well. Okay. actually. Because I remember asking him a Brady Bunch thing early on. He didn't know it. But you know, if you start to, if you gave Benji a pop culture quiz for people around our age, he would fail miserably. Patrick, well, you and, know, I'm. Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay, Jace. Go ahead. No, I was just gonna say, like, I'm so sick of hearing though Benji use this, uh, you know, I, you know, there's stuff that you guys don't want brought up on the air, so I don't want my birthday brought up on the air. There's a huge difference between some personal stuff that people has to be kept off the air. Shouldn't it be up to the person? Well, not to him, Jason. 
Well, actually, but oftentimes it's not left up to the person. I mean, oftentimes if, if, if Howard or somebody around here deems something stupid, I'm he'll not just saying bring it up Howard on the air does. anyway. Not, I mean, that's his choice. I mean, people but... do respect you. You you know, we talked about two girls that you slept with and no one's brought their names up on the air. What are you talking about? We, you said the Craigslist girls. I mean, we talked about that and no one brought their I names up on Cra- the air. I said it was J-Date. And oh, other, J-Date. And other multiple websites. And other multiple websites. The, oh, ICC, my bad. the ICC. The ICC, of course. But what I'm saying is, is that you've Wait, told, what do you mean their names? You've told oh, stories no, about I people. no, I haven't. The truth, and you've asked their names not to come up on the air and their names haven't come up on the air. That's the reason their names haven't come up and maybe they will one day maybe they'll be a guest one day that'd be neat if we try to book him as a guest who that woman that jason's talking about well how would i get in touch with her without you no you i i can give you her number okay Apparently you go on I'm benji's fine. website <laughs> <laughs> i don't know if she'd do it though i mean I, she doesn't know yet as far as i know but it's just can you explain then what what is it about your birthday that would hurt you if it came out Besides right. the young writer thing. What is it that you... Like, everyone has a reason. Like, don't say this because it'll piss off this person or it'll hurt me uh, personally. Right, it would hurt my... Like, Sal, right. Sal would say something. I can't talk about that. That'll hurt my I've family. I've said my birthday. Yeah. Oh, okay, whatever. You... But you can't answer a question. You can't answer why you wouldn't want your birthday on there. I've said... I just said my birthday. When is it? What year? Day, month, year? September 24th. September 20th. Yeah, for... for September 32nd. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's no September 32nd. So, but seriously, what's the reason? I mean, just give a reason why you Let don't want it on Let me ask you guys this, talking about months. No, 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 stop changing the subject. What is the reason you don't want your birthday mentioned on the air? Just I, I want one it reason. mentioned. I'd like it mentioned on the correct day. I, I, I'm no, you fine. don't want to mention. I don't really care about that much. Then, this is like, you know, like, like, you, like this is, I guess this is... Yeah, but you're being backed into a corner of shitty lies, dude. No, you, I'm not. You either, you say on one hand, hey, listen, there's information I don't want on the I, air for... I really don't Because care. other people don't want... So then just say your birthday. Hey, I know something you don't want on the air that I just heard the other day. Okay. Well, I have to know what it is before I give you permission right. to say it or not. And 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 if I didn't want it on the air, I'd tell you exactly why I wouldn't want it on the air. Like okay. it would hurt somebody, or it would bother somebody, or it would hurt me. So what is the reason you don't want your birthday on the air? I, I'm fine with it. Can no, I say the thing that? Can I say the thing that you didn't want mentioned? I don't. Or? I don't know what that is. You have to tell me. <laughs> I never should have wished you a happy birthday. Yeah. <laughs> wrap-up show, I stopped by and uh, talked about our upcoming wedding. It is going to be glorious. Greg in Pittsburgh, welcome to the wrap-up show. Hey, George, big fan. Hi, how are you? (laughs) Good, how are you? (laughs) Hey, George, I wanted to ask you, uh, have you and Brad picked out a wedding song? Oh, well, we, uh, yes, we have. Uh, we're going to, you know, instead of the wedding, well, before the wedding starts, there's a, a wonderful, beautiful singer who's going to start out singing uh, Climb Every Mountain. And then uh, when uh, we come in, uh, they're gonna be, we're going to be marching down to um, one singular sensation from the chorus line. <laughs> Uh, we're show people, you know, we love show uh, mu- uh, musicals, and um, uh, we have a back by, you know, it's, it, it's rather eclectic. Um, we want diversity to be the theme of our wedding. So uh, the wedding, as the guests are arriving, there is a, a Japanese horizontal harp, a harp called koto, and that's playing throughout the uh, arrival of the guests. It's a beautiful, uh, well, relaxing, calming, uh, serene sound. I think the question he was asking, because traditionally when you go to a wedding, when the first time the couple dances as a couple, they choose a song to dance to. Have you chosen that? Uh, no, we haven't. Well, I'm getting a lot of uh, first-time suggestions <laughs> here. <laughs> it's just, you know, ladies and gentlemen, for the first time ever, Mr. M- and Mr. George Takei, <laughs> but they introduce you, then you dance to a song that you have chosen. Altman Takei. Exactly. And then you dance to a song that sort of... Oh, you know, uh, no, we haven't chosen that. We haven't gotten that far yet. We, We've gotten the uh, entertainment part. Right. Uh, we're, uh, the uh, koto player 
is also a wonderful jazz koto player. Uh, and she's going to be accompanied by this guy who's invented this, uh, uh, this very interesting, intriguing instrument. Uh, uh, he's a Latino um, uh, called a cajita. Uh, and it's a, a very dry wooden <laughs> box. And he's going to uh, uh, play the box uh, uh, while uh, she's uh, doing a jazz uh, koto piece. And then, after she's done, the uh, gay men's choir is going to be up on the balcony, and they're going to sing a piece. And then we have... Uh, this uh, is a major Fred. stage <laughs> production, George. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it is. Have you hired, like, a stage manager? Do you have a wedding, oh, yeah, we have have a a wedding planner, right? Yeah, we have a wedding planner. We have a stage manager. We have a, a media consultant because, you know, when we went to get the license, right. we had no idea we were going to be swamped like that. So. Wait, is yours more or less the first celebrity wedding in California? Uh, I think uh, Ellen got uh, married in uh, Beverly Hills. Oh, did she? She got yes. married over the weekend. But right. th but theirs wasn't a very public wedding, right? No, theirs. Well, ours is going to be private too. But um, you know, we have two hundred guests. Now I got to ask you because this happens all the time. Has have you sold the photos to InStyle or anybody? Has anybody approached you about photos from the wedding? You no, know, we haven't sold it. But we wanted to be able to control the media, and so what we did was we made a deal with. Um, CBS, um, we have one uh, videographer right. to uh, record the uh, wedding ceremony. And um, CBS gets an exclusive on uh, their selected shots. But However, uh, the, the rest is put into a pool so that we eliminate, you know, this uh, bevy of, uh, uh, right. of, of uh, video cameras. But and we have uh, one still cameraman and uh, we've agreed to give uh, an exclusive to People magazine. And the rest of the f uh, photos that we don't use goes on AP's uh, pool, so everybody gets it. So if I'm, if I'm not out of line asking, are you paid for the exclusives? No, no. So you should tell your publicist to get paid for the exclusive, and then you could donate the money, because you can get paid for those. And then, never thought of that. And then yeah. donate it to charity. And then donate it to charity. In other words, somebody might be willing. You know, InStyle Magazine is a perfect example. They do all these weddings. They might be looking for a. H gig. How much would they pay? It could be up to a hundred grand sometimes. A hundred dollars. A hundred grand. Oh, oh, 100 thousand. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you really should look into it. That Probably. might cover the wedding. Exactly. No, exactly. <laughs> now, George, for that first dance we were talking about before, do you guys, do you and Brad have a special song, or have you had one over the years? Uh, we've we've got uh, uh, more than a few special songs. We agreed on uh, one singular sensation coming down because uh, we love uh, uh, chorus, line? chorus Line. And uh, yesterday we saw a, a matinee of uh, In the Heights. And uh, that's a fantastic show, and I recommend that highly. It, it uh, won the uh, Tony uh, this, uh, this year. Uh, we love um, um, that Barbara Streisand song. Um, uh, um, oh, I'm blanking. Um, a well-known one? Or yeah, a well-known like one. Evergreen? Or, Evergreen. Uh, um, Funny Girl? Um, no, no. Um, oh, I'm blanking. I can't even It'll think of the two The way we were? The way we were. The way we were. Blowing up every stereotype. Right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, guess when you well, walk you know, in? Stereotypes are stereotypes <laughs> yeah. because there's a grain of reality. Right. When, you, you when you walk in, there'll be an ice sculpture of Judy Garland. <laughs> <laughs> you guys were talking about the traditions. Will you do the traditional? Will you lift Brad's veil and make out with him? Uh, no. Uh, it's not. Uh, we're both going to be wearing white dinner jackets. You'll both have a veil on. A veil on. No. Nobody's we wearing won't a veil. Have, uh, okay. No, no, no. We're bird? guys. <laughs> we're guys. We're dudes. And uh, when uh, the ceremony's over, you know, they're, they're, we're getting married in the democracy forum. We love the idea of our union being, being in the for, uh, forum of democracy. And there's a great big plaza between the democracy forum and the uh, main building of the museum, the pavilion building. And uh, uh, a bagpiper is going to lead us from the uh, democracy uh, forum to the uh, pavilion building, and our guests would be out there throwing uh, confettis on us. Now, I have one more question for you about the <laughs> wedding. It sounds like you've got a, a really a beautiful wedding plan. Is there any, um, will there be any Star Trek element in the wedding at all? Um, no, you know, this might look and sound like a Star Trek element, but uh, they really are our good friends. My uh, best man's going to be, our best man's going to be uh, Walter Koenig. Oh, great. Who played Chekhov. And the uh, best lady, uh, initially we were calling her uh, matron of honor, but she didn't like the word matron. 
so we decided on best best lady, and that's Nichelle Nichols. Oh, that's great. That's um, awesome. Uh, but but it's but it's it's got the Star Trek element. But you're doing it because they're really they re- genuinely. You know, you know, we have them over for dinner, and we've been over to their home for dinner parties at each other's house. And they, and you know, Walter was the first one who kind of uh, smelled who I really am. Right. And uh, you know. That was all right with George. Him. I'm telling you, if you can get Shatner there, you can totally sell tickets. I was going to say. <laughs> Did you extend an well, invitation Leonard, to Shatner or Nimoy? Leonard is coming. He's oh, that's uh, great. responded already. It's like a Star Trek convention, except there's something <laughs> happy going on. Well, we have a U.S. senator coming. We have the who's the have senator? A city, uh, a senator from uh, Hawaii, Senator Danny Noway. Nice. And um, you know we'd all be there if it weren't on I know. a day that doesn't work out for us because w- when I got my invitation I opened it up and I thought I'm totally going to this and it just it just doesn't work out date wise for us because it works because it's uh, but we'd, we'd be there in a second afternoon and yeah uh, you got to be working on uh, yeah. Monday morning yeah we you know we that was the thing that made it difficult for scheduling but with the relatives and all the Sunday worked best Great. for them so. Uh, Oh, I we regret that week because you guys are dear friends. Yeah, no, we, we really are. We really we wish you best of luck. Thank you very much. All right, back to the phones. Wolf, you're on the wrap up show. Hey, good morning, George. How are you? Just great. I guess it is still morning. It's not noon. <laughs> <laughs> I actually have two questions for you. I just number one, curious to see if, if Brad has attempted to phone, give you a phone call or text you since you've had that prenuptial agreement. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, he hasn't. Uh, okay. I didn't bring my cell phone with me today either. So, uh, I, and he wouldn't be phoning. He he'd want to have that discussion privately. He doesn't want. Yeah, me. but so, I, I get what Wolf's getting at. Sometimes, because I've been down this road before, sometimes you call home after the show's over, and you may get sort of a bit of a cold shoulder, and you're just not sure why. Then you start going through the you know the file of what went on the show that day, and you go. Maybe it was that prenuptial discussion. <laughs> well, you know, I know what what you mean by that because uh, when I played that game with <laughs> Cell, you know, I called him. I, ha- I did have my cell phone with me, right. and I called him to make sure he was all right with that. <laughs> and I <laughs> discovered immediately <laughs> when he said, "George, I think we got to talk," <laughs> that it did not. Uh, <laughs> he did not take well to it. Ralph Sorelli, you're on the wrap-up show. This wedding is sounding better and better. <laughs> is, can I go, George? I, is like Spock is going to be there? You general? know, we've had so many people e- uh, emailing, phoning, offering to bear witness to our wedding, you know, and all they want is an invitation. Yeah, I don't really want to see you guys. I want to see you know, Spock. And oh, I, see. I don't care about the wedding. I just want to <laughs> go to a Star Trek convention. No, no, no. We're going to be in uh, white dinner jackets. Was it tough for you to decide who to vote from, the, who to invite, excuse me, from the show? Like Ralph wants to go, for example. Yes. Um, well, you know, uh, we were interviewed by AP before we finalized the uh, list. And they asked, you know, is Bill Shatner on the list? And we, uh, and I, that stopped me a little bit. And Brad caught that pause. And so he um, chimed in immediately to fill that uh, void and said, well, we have uh, a long list and a short list. And, uh, you know, I, I had revealed that Leonard was on the short list. And Who did you invite from the Howard Stern Show, I think is what John is asking. Oh, oh, from the Howard Stern Show. Well, Gary, Howard naturally, mm-hmm. Robin, mm-hmm. Uh, Artie, uh, Fred. Um, you know, we, we, we wanted to let our, our, our dear friends here know that we th- thought of them. But, you know, we knew that they couldn't make it because of uh, the election. That's why you Sunday. invited them. <laughs> what? That's why you invited everybody. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, I oh, you, you cynic, you. If I went, I'd wear Spock ears. Would that be wrong? That would be wrong. <laughs> and that's why you don't have an invitation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, on Tuesday's wrap-up show, uh, we talked about the staff karaoke contest. Um, and everyone was yelling at me for not trying or whatever. I don't know. I got angry. Sucks. See? See who has to get involved in everything? You want to do the Ronnie show? See? See, when it comes back at him, he doesn't say anything. Should I start over? <laughs> you just going to do that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you just want to do that? Yeah. All right. Well, uh, there you go. Enjoy me getting angry. We should start with the big contest. 
with the house band stained, and it wasn't JD, it wasn't Tim, it wasn't Jason, it wasn't Ronnie, but Scott the Engineer emerging victorious in a karaoke contest. Well, Scott did something that was really smart. He sang a song where the chorus was everybody singing, so he wasn't hung out there to dry, which is fine, which is fair. He was still singing his heart out. You could still hear his off-key singing during it. He also picked a song that everybody likes, and he did do the best job. J.D. shaking his head in anger. What? Everybody likes it. Okay, whatever. No, not whatever. What? I, uh, the, my, the Who song wasn't my first choice. And I so why don't you tell everyone what you Okay, let's get into this now because Ronnie brought it up. Now the complaints are coming. The guys came to me with songs that they wanted to do, and I explained to them that you have to do songs that people in the audience have heard of. So in Ronnie's case, he wanted to do Sweet Caroline, and the only reason we got rid of that was we were afraid it was going to be, you know, that's a song that everybody sings at the baseball game, and it's, you know, too much fun. We wanted a song where Ronnie had to sing. Okay. You know, so that's why we sent them to share. What did you tell everybody what song you wanted to do, J.D.? Urge over kills, Girl, You'll Be a Woman Soon. I think that's an excellent, excellent well, choice. I agree. I think it's a great song, but I will tell you now that I bet a large portion of the audience is unfamiliar with that song. I disagree. I think if you say the title, they may, but if you play a couple bars no. of it, they know exactly what song you're I talking disagree. about. I disagree. I just didn't think we, and Howard and I talked about it, we wanted some more of a mainstream song, and Won't Get Fooled Again was his choice. It, what, he said, I have two choices, either this or that. We said, we don't like the Urge Overkill Why song. did you pick Won't Get Fooled Again as your second choice? Yeah. I, I didn't know. pick that song. Did I pick that song? No, but like uh, I was just going through all these like songs that I sort of... That I know the uh, the the beats or the ca- the, you know the way the lyrics the ly- the lyrics go and stuff, um, and you know working these arty shows that's all you hear is the who, and that's that's his closing song. So and it, it, there wasn't like screaming or anything in there. But it didn't seem like you wanted to sing it at all. It sounds like you put as much effort into choosing the song as you did into performing it. Well, it, guess what? I'm not a performer, all right? I'm not a singer. Neither is I Jason. I never looked at me. Jason's not a performer. Oh, well, bullshit. Jason tries to get on the... <laughs> no, what, Jason what? wants uh, to perform, and so he performed. I am not a performer, so I don't perform. I'm sorry I can't sing, and I'm not good. Th- that was my first time singing in public. Okay. It probably whatever. was a lot of people's first time singing in public. You know, oh, wow. bullshit. A, a fucking uh, Scott sang three times. Ronnie sings all the fucking time in his karaoke. <laughs> Jason. Uh, Jason what? Jason what? sings that Aerosmith song all the time. When right. Do you, where does he when sing? Do you see hold me? on a second. Where does Jason sing but, that Aerosmith song? Where? Where does he sing it? He sings it in the office. But when okay, do you, okay well, hold on. When do you see me singing in the office? That's not the point. Oh, the well, point okay, is, that is the point. I'll just say it Everyone sa- else sings. It sounded like you were sleepwalking through the song. You didn't put any inflections in it. Ex- well, exactly. And I told John this, and that's exactly what I was afraid of. And, but that's how it came out. I'm sorry. I, 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 I tried, and I'm not used to, uh, you know, doing that. And that's what happened. So. First of all, everyone tries to sing. They don't necessarily sing. Well, and, yeah. And, and secondly... Why were you upset at Robin? Oh, well, I got upset with everyone when they started yelling at me that I didn't try. So, what? I, and I did. Well, whatever. Do you think he gave it a fair try, Benji, Gary? I, I thought he could have put a little bit more excitement into it. <laughs> no, really. Gary, when do you see me excited about anything? You're excited right now. Well, yeah, because you're accusing me of not being excited. I'm just excited. saying you're capable and of excitement. I, I am when, it's, when I'm being accused of stuff, and, you know, this was just... Singing for was, looking like an asshole. Was it the Jared ball busting that got under your nerves? No. <laughs> Enough of that. You should hear him sing that. Good. Let him fucking sing. Uh, 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 let, uh, have someone suggest his name <laughs> for the next karaoke instead of throwing my fucking name out there. Benj? So, uh, I, I just yelled Bubba Pooey during the uh, Mad Dog press conference and security tackled me. So I'm a little out of breath. But, uh, J.D., um, what would it sound like had you not tried? Exactly. <laughs> Uh, I would have read. I would have literally read the lyrics. I would have been like, uh, I don't have the lyrics in front of me. But well, didn't you get a chance to meet with the band before? How did that discussion go? Well, I mean, I didn't know. I thought Gary. Uh, I can, I'm going to I'm gonna take over a second and let him finish explaining. Okay. I had everybody come over because so, I see there's a call up. They want to know how do we prepare for this. We told everyone they were doing a verse and a chorus, with the exception of Scott for Ohio, because the song's really short. And Scott does a funny thing at the end. We work out great. So we, I gave the band Lance. all of that information, right? The band, w- you know, came here last night. They've been rehearsing, and I brought everybody by. Like I said to Scott, you know, come on by. Met with the band, and like even with uh, with Ronnie, they said Ronnie's doing. If I could turn back time, and 
Aaron goes, okay, you know, it starts with the chorus, if I could turn it back time, and then it goes into the verse, and then we'll do another chorus. So I brought everybody over to go with that. So I brought J.D. over, and they even said, listen, we didn't do the whole long intro because we know we don't want to bore everyone. And I knew that. I knew that. And he goes, you know, we're going to start fighting in the streets. Great. J.D., you got any questions? Nope. You you know what you got to do? Yep. Okay. J.D. walks away. The band goes in the studio. J.D. goes, so what am I doing? First course, I don't understand what am I doing. I go, I had you no, with the guys. No, no, no. I knew what I was doing. I didn't know when to when the ending was going to be. Like, I, I assumed it was at least going to be. What like, does a verse and a chorus mean? Uh, I, 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 that's what I thought you meant. I just wanted to double check. I'm very paranoid, <laughs> paranoid about this stuff, Gare. All right? But you should have said to them, hey, so I'll start with this, and we'll do Tip My Head to the New Constitution. They had the intro. I thought they knew. They definitely knew when to stop. So, J- J.D., do you feel like you put your heart into it and tried your best, or did you feel like, you know what, I'm not going to do that well. I'm not going to put a lot of effort I into it. I feel like you didn't want to be there in the first place. So no, you didn't I put, didn't. You didn't put as much effort into it as you could have. That's what, And you're acting like you put a ton of effort into it. We're giving you no, shit for I, that. I, well, no, no. And there was 500 bucks at stake, too. It wasn't just for pride. 25 lap dances. <laughs> oh, is that what I can do? Had no, you known no, yesterday you there that. was 500 <laughs> involved, would you have tried harder? I, I would have done the same thing. I, I can't. I, I just, with stuff like that, with, like, me singing in public and whatever. Hey, J.D., I, I could, you really let did, everyone did down. You not oh, listen, shut the fuck up. Did you not listen to Michael Phelps, who, who? said, hey, Michael Phelps, if Ooh. you put your mind to it, shut you up. can do anything. Hold on. Was I at least better than Ronnie? No. No. Oh, fuck no. off. No, no, no. The fuck Absolutely yeah, Everyone not. can go fuck themselves. With that. You, 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 you he barely took it. Play, play, play him. Let me hear what he sounds like. We already played him. Oh, I missed him. I'm sorry. You guys were in the same ballpark, but you weren't clearly better than Ronnie by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, Ralph Sorelli, you're on the wrap-up show. Well, first of all, with J- J.D., first of all, did not volunteer for this. And then you, you especially, Gary, you sit there and badger him and torture him for not giving it more effort. I mean, he you know, can't even... Ralph, but here, <laughs> let me finish. Okay. He can't even talk. What makes you think he can sing? And here's the great thing. We'd have done the show today, and J.D. wouldn't have been part of it. And you go, you call up and go. Why wasn't JD there? And I go. He didn't want to do it. Then you go. God, JD's not a team player. No, that, no, no. And then you know. And then Scott gives it a lot of effort. And then you give him shit for giving it too much effort. We're, just, we're teasing I mean, him. We're, no, yeah, you Ralph, can't fucking. I mean, you guys are just, you just, you're just throwing out bullshit. Uh, listen, I think. Ralph, let me, listen, just, finish, let me just finish this thought, and then you can yell at me. <laughs> um, I think Tim was the worst because if he had given it, he he had the makings of doing something great, and he just. He just went in and mumbled more. You know what I mean? He could have been really. Right. We're giving Scott shit not because he rehearsed, but because Scott. there's so little in life that means something to Scott. <laughs> we found it funny that this is what he took so seriously. The other thing Ralph, Tim had going yeah, for him was. Changed, the, you sort of changed your tune there in the, in the middle of that. You kind, you kind of veered off and t- took a different angle with that because you were just. Everybody was giving him no, shit. No, he spent for a lot of himself t- in there and practicing, and good for Scott. Thank you, Ralph. Ralph, what I was going to say is you missed Tim's outfit. He had a uh, suit, he jacket and tie on, which definitely added to the performance. I oh, think. that must be like, like Tim should have, if he, he would have practiced a couple more times, he, he probably could have done that really good because at times he sounded great, and then he just, you know, he didn't fully commit to it. Ronnie, <laughs> Ronnie, is J.D. feeling sorry for himself? Is what? Is J.D. feeling sorry for himself? Nothing new point? about that. Uh, I'm just trying to defend my, I'm just trying to get everyone off my back. I think it's so funny that Ralph is like, I can't believe you made J.D. do it. We always make J.D. do stuff publicly. It's just part of the gang. Wow. J- let me, J.D., be serious. Be totally serious with me. Yes. If we'd have done, say it was like Will and Jason and Teddy and Scott and a bunch of other people, and you weren't included and you weren't asked, would you have felt a little left out? Be Really be honest. Uh, I don't know. Would you have thought, gee, I wonder why they didn't ask me? Um, Maybe. I, I don't know. It just depends on how I'm feeling at the time, I guess. I don't know. Nobody made J.D. do anything. We're all vo- we, we, none of us volunteered to be in this contest. We were all asked to be in the contest. And at any point, did you go to Gary and say, man, you know what? I really don't want to be in this contest. Well, I said that at the meeting. and then uh, All right, whatever. But that's that's when, that's when, that's when, and, 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 and then that's when Howard said, yeah, get the joke. So, yeah, I mean, I said, so I, meeting, I said at the meeting I didn't want to be in it. And then they're like, nah, just do it. I mean, if you really don't want to be in that, that bad, Gary would have let you drop. Yeah, if you concept. really don't want to no be in that band, you, you should have gone to Human Resources. Uh, well, listen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what were you going to say? Well, I, I, I mean, I, no, I, I, I did it uh, to see if I could do it, and I 
t- try whatever. No, you didn't try. And you found out you can't. Jason, can. shut the fuck no, but up. You said all in right? the office you didn't try. I'm not. I mean, you came over and you said in the office and I don't sing. All right, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm I singing. Do? Yeah, you do. <laughs> Listen, you came into you singing. You've been a lo- you're blowing you, your fucking harmonica you, all goddamn day. <laughs> <laughs> you came in with the attitude. I suck. I'm not going to do any good, so I'm not even going to try. Well, that no, was your attitude. I, no, I, 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 I. Go ahead, JD. No, I'm done. I, I just, I, I didn't try. Okay, there. I didn't try. I sucked. I didn't try. Please, please don't, don't. Please don't cry. Shut up. I gotta cry. Why is Jason getting on your nerves more than Ronnie? Because they're nerves. both here. <laughs> they're both <laughs> squawking in my <laughs> ear. <laughs> don't touch me. On Wednesday's wrap-up show, we talked about George Takei's gay bachelor party. And I'll tell you, oh my, it was a sight to see. Steven in Arizona, you're on the wrap-up show. Hey, what's going on, guys? Hey, Steven. I just I got two things, and maybe one's off subject, but I just want to think, uh, do you guys think George is going to get in trouble for, like, making out with that guy? I mean... Oh. I know he's gay and all, and I know <laughs> they have different rules, I mean, but isn't making out like cheating? Well, you don't know the understanding that the two of them have right. between each other. All we know is that Brad said he was not going to listen to the show today. Of course, I don't know if George realizes that the show replays, that we talk about everything that happens there, on the I show think George here. forgot we were on television. <laughs> yeah, Howard TV will have I'll it tell you, I've heard the most ridiculous things for bachelor parties. I've heard guys who've gone to bachelor parties who said, you know, their wife said they're allowed to get you know, do a lot of stuff up to guys who's, you know, I, not, one guy's wife told him, you know, you better sit on your hands the entire bachelor party. Just sit on your hands. Yeah, but George did, and a few people said, George did seem caught up in the moment oh, yeah. oh. with what was going on with Jonah Falcon, Ben. I, I almost thought like he was thinking maybe that's what he's supposed to do at a bachelor party. But unless they have some understanding that we don't know about, I, I can't imagine this is going to really come back to haunt him. Well, here's the hint. The hint is that Brad was upset some months ago with Sal when George touched Sal's penis. Right. So that would give me the heads up that he may not be too crazy about this, but he might have also said, hey, at your bachelor party, you know, don't do anything too embarrassing, but go have fun. And George had plenty of fun. Uh, Plus, maybe, oh, I'm sorry, John, maybe this gives Brad a free pass to go out and have some fun, too. See, the thing is, I don't think Brad's looking for a free pass. Yeah, it's like, that's the whole thing. George is a horny one. It's like (laughs) when you cheat on your girlfriend, she's, she's not just, oh, great, now I can cheat. Yeah, she's not a dude. Yeah. yeah. JD, was George caught up in the uh, moment, you think? Uh, he was caught up in a lot of things. But, uh, <laughs> yes, he was. He, he saw stars. You know what I mean? Like, he, oh, was, his, he was woozy. Uh, he, I don't think he closed his eyes. His eyes were wide open. Well, on wrap up the other day, you know, George said, I'd, I'd like to touch. We all thought, you know, <laughs> I, I thought he was kidding. Stage, or maybe yeah. not kidding. Clearly today he wasn't kidding. I mean, the second Jonah Falcon came in, he was giving him a hand job. He was he was yeah. re- he was ready to go. It was the it was the male the gay version of like if a guy was getting married, and we brought Carmen Electra and we said you could put your hand down her pants like that look. That was the look that George had on his face. <laughs> None of us have ever gone that far with a chick. No, well show. that's no. that that's what I was gonna say. Let's let's flip things for a second. When chicks come in and they're naked and they get felt up, or whatever else, how does that compare to what happened with George and Jonah? The closest we've done is like on a stick. We've had a vibrator. We've never actually. You know. You're the dirty one on that one. We we came up with the idea once to, that we would put vibrators on a stick. So we had this girl in the tickle chair. <laughs> so everyone's like, you know, they're touching her under her arm or you know, touch, you know, on the inside of her leg. Benji was like trying to fuck her with the stick. Well, I was trying to get like, her off. But that was cool. I love too that Benji had his toe in somebody. Once. Oh, I forgot. But do you guys remember the first meeting before we started at Sirius? When we're talking about George and how Howard was like, okay, we got to be kind of like, you know, George is a different than us. He's not as crazy as we are and <laughs> keep things kind of. Little did we know. Yeah. It's so true. John in Detroit, you're on the wrap-up show. Hey, guys. Uh, quick uh, comment and then a quick question. How did, my question is this, how did you get Jonah Falcon to actually come in as much as you guys fuck with that guy? Oh. And second, it scares me because I see how guys act at bachelor parties listening to George on the air. I'm going to hang up and listen. Thanks, All right, man. thanks for the question. Gary, how did Jonah Falcon find his way back to the Howard Stern Show? I called him. Um, you know, I'm sure he was glad it wasn't Richard or Sal. I'd spoken with him before over the years, and I said to him, I was right up front, I said, listen, all that other stuff that goes on, we're really not interested in discussing that. You, we, you know, the reason you were on the show the first time because of the size of your penis, and I told about George Takei's bachelor party, that's why we want you here. As soon as he heard George, 
He was already going to do it. As soon as he heard George's name, he's like, oh, my God, I'm a huge fan. I goes, I'll be there totally. I'll be there. No problem. And, Richard, how would you describe Jonah's outfit today? <laughs> <laughs> he had, like, little short shorts on, and uh, he had his penis, like, tucked in and, like, wrapped around something in there, and... When he pulled that thing out, it was man. He unleashed a monster. Yeah, yeah another fucked up thing. It's like again. a snake. You have yeah. to you have to see it on TV, but I'd say ninety five percent of guys that you've ever seen that like go to adjust themselves, <laughs> they put their hand in the front of their pants and they make some adjustment. Oh. His hand went all the way to like his <laughs> hip, and you realize that he was still touching what's attached to his. Uh, yeah. Like it went all the way to his hip. It's just well, crazy. he was using both hands to adjust. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it really was like somebody went on Johnny Carson with a huge snake, and it was in a bag, and they were like adjusting it, <laughs> and the snake was running away. Yeah. Now George had the opportunity to uh, greet Jonah, I guess, and if you missed it, here it is, number two, Ted. Want to go touch it? You do? Okay. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead over and touch it. Go ahead. I want to be touched by George Decay. All right. George is going to touch it. Actually, uh, George, I was actually present at the 2006 Gay Games. <laughs> oh, were you? Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, gay, I, saw your, yeah, I, saw your, I saw your speech during the opening ceremonies. I oh, believe it was. Yeah. What get, what get, hold on. Let me get a word. You, so you were at the Gay Games. Oh, yeah. I was invited. Uh, oh, trust my. me. I have... I have Plenty of gay friends. Well, I should think so. All right. Well, uh, George, it's well, very nice. Now, let's see. Oh, my goodness. Uh, well, well, you guys want to take this again? in a back room? I, I, I thought you were going <laughs> to... Oh, you, you just want me to feel like this. I want to feel it. Uh, what? Absolutely. Yes. Oh, my. <laughs> oh, my. How does Trust it feel? <laughs> Well, it's all scrunched I, up. Yes, it's scrunched up. It's hey, not it off, 14 inches, but there's it's not enough substance What the fuck are there. we doing? Oh, <laughs> oh, I don't know what we're doing, Artie. Oh, my God. <laughs> George, it's like you're milking a cow. <laughs> See, and, and, and the funny thing about that is there's totally like a double standard here because none of us, first of all, George was the aggressor. None of us have ever gone up to a girl where, you know, she says, oh, you could squeeze my boobs, and we just stick our hand in her pants, right? We would never do that. And if we did, Howard would totally go, what are you doing? That's way off base. But George just stuck his hand right in the dude's <laughs> pants. <laughs> Richard and I were kidding. Like, could you ever envision a Howard Stern show where Jonah Falcon and George Decay yeah. are in the same room it together? Was like yeah, next week, uh, Kathy Lee and Spike Lee will be here. <laughs> yeah, it was like a Twilight Zone episode, uh, episode. I couldn't believe what I was seeing on the monitor, you know? Uh, and then, of course, Jonah followed that up by singing a ballad from the Muppet movie, <laughs> very earnestly, I might add. Yeah. And, and again, George, maybe because he's a performer, he seemed genuinely touched. Well, George explained the other day, we're show people. <laughs> <laughs> Jim, it's Scranton. You're on the wrap-up show. Hey, guys, what's up? Hey, Jim. What a fucking show. Hey, George wanted that thing in his mouth so fucking bad. Oh. <laughs> John, Jonas Cocky wanted that in his mouth so bad. <laughs> Yeah, I was curious, uh, did Richard or Sal want to uh, cop a feel on that thing, or what? No, just looking at it was enough for you me. You would be interested in just j just touching it. No, Richard. not I know what a pecker feels like. Well, it doesn't matter. You, know what, a, you know what a fourteen inch pecker <laughs> feels like. I don't need to know. I, you know what? I'll I'll take George's word for it that it feels good. Now, were you worried that Jonah was going to realize who you were and what you've done to him in his uh, public access television career? Well, I mentioned to Gary, should me and Sal go in and maybe with a few other people and see if he can pick out who are the guys that fuck with him? But we wanted to be real gentle with. Jonah today because we didn't want him to leave angry. Yeah, or... no, I sort of promised Jonah that today was about George and his penis, not yeah. about his talking Yankee show. Now, how do you, what's the conversation you have with Jonah before he goes into the studio? You know what? He's a, he's really interesting because he's he's not easy to communicate with. You know, he doesn't look you in the eye, and when you talk to him, he doesn't necessarily answer the question you ask all the time, and he always seems like he's in a rush. You know what I mean? But um, no, I just I mean again, we went over what we were going to do. He said he was fine with it, and uh, and that was it. Did you promise him that no one would uh, jerk him off and make out with him, start making out with I him? I made no promises. Hey, it's Sal, and on Thursday's wrap-up show, I got into a little bit of trouble because sometimes I just don't know when I'm crossing the line. It involves me, it involves Katy Perry, it involves a few other people. Check it out. Katy seemed to be a bit of a fan of Sal's version of her song. Well, here's my impression. We, she was in there practicing, and we weren't sure what she knew. We, we thought we were going to play I Pissed on a Girl for her. And when she was rehearsing, right before we came back for commercial, she goes, I pissed on a girl. And we were like, oh, you know that one. She's like, yeah, I heard about it. But I think that somebody might have told her about that line. 
I think once she heard the entire song, <laughs> oh my God. it was much more jarring to yeah, her. Don't one you of think? the record company guys said he told her right before her appearance today. Uh, right, but I don't think he so. told her that I pissed on a girl right. I liked that I held her down and she tried to fight it. <laughs> yeah. I peed in her asshole. I, I thought she, she was going to have a great sense of humor about it. I was a little disappointed in that point. It's a little, you know, listen, this, this song is, is what's making her money right now. And it's one thing to parody it, but he, you know, and listen, I think it was really funny with Sal. Don't get me wrong, but you know, to expect her to love it, you know. Sal, what did you think of her reaction? I, I was flattered. You're, you're supposed to be repulsed. If you're a woman, if you're a, a halfway decent, respectable woman, and you listen to that song, you're supposed to be repulsed. It's not meant for women. It's meant for the, the creeps that listen to this show and and get a kick out of it. Did you? Because get to- the majority of people listen to that song. It's like a bubblegum pop bullshit, you know, chick uh, song, and then you hear me completely demoralized it and you know and uh, taint it so it was well tainted and uh, sh- it, it came through did you get to talk to her about it no well, okay. that's not true well what had happened <laughs> uh, after she came I have to thank Jason Kaplan for this because uh, he was my voice of reason when she came out of the studio I went up to Jason you know, because we have that uh, relationship with the song, I thought... What relationship do you have with the well, song? I, my song and her song. And my, that's the only relationship that... We don't See, have a relationship. That, no, we, have, a, we have a, a commonality, I guess, is, if that's the word, of the songs. So I said, Jason, you think I'd get a picture with uh, Katy Perry? And he goes, did you ask Gary? And I said, you know what? I didn't. Thank you. Could you please, because you were in the studio, ask Gary for me? So I have to thank Jason uh, for giving me the voice of reason, for being the voice of reason. And then, of course, uh, he, Jason did ask you, and I got the no, and I, I walked away. Well, but no, thank I, pulled you to you, Jason. I pulled you away from her. You pulled me away, and, I, and thank you. Thank you both for looking out for me. I saw, I saw something really funny happen in the hallway. I don't know who it was. It was her manager or whatever was standing there, and Sal was like walking by. I mean, he didn't walk up to him or anything like that but he goes like the guy it was almost questioning he was like you the pissed on the girl guy and sal's like yeah like he was so excited that you know <laughs> and he, he was said the- awesome pleasure to me I, and i thought the same thing the way he said i'm like i thought he was gonna say like that's awful but when i said yeah he's like oh that's well, awesome that's a great song so well, it was pretty cool well the funny part was jason came in while we were in a break and said, Sal wants to take a picture. Is that okay? And I said, Ixnay on that. Right. So Jason went out, and then he came back in, and he goes, too late. Sal's already talking to her. So Howard goes, get get him away. Right. So I motioned for Sal to come in. But the most really humiliating part was he goes, <laughs> Sal goes, I get it. I understand. I'll leave her alone. I go, why don't you just stay here until she leaves? <laughs> oh, yeah. It was, what are you gonna, so, no, it, it, was, it was funny because actually what Gary's words were, get, he goes, make sure Sal's not anywhere near her. <laughs> and, and, and I open the up the door. door, and I see the two of them walking down the hall together, and Sal's blabbing away. I'm like, well, oh. that was the point, actually, what John just mentioned, where the manager stopped me. I said hello, and she was standing right there, and then she chimed in on how gross the song was. She said the song was really gross and offensive. Okay. Nice to meet you. That was brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. Know, you, should, you put anything in there about how like it stings when you feel the pee? No, that's no. a good idea, though. That's a really good it's idea. Acidic. Well, I, I just thought you were great. Oh, thank I love you. you. But you know, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if it's right. It's okay. No, I need you. Okay. This my girl was one of the better ones. What do you guys think of his uh, rendition of your song? Suck. Don't tell him that to his face. <laughs> I don't think he's going to. I don't think he has a future in this. I don't think he has a future. I don't think he's in it. Katie Parody future. His parents are so disappointed. So disappointed. Your parents were so disappointed in him? Yes. That <laughs> was an terrible. official statement. <laughs> But Sal's initial thing would have it would have made sense a photo for the website. You guys, right? You never know. But that's Jason's call to make. No, no, I get it. That's cool. I'm still, I'm still right. like, in my mind when I see Sal with a guest, I still think of Sal telling John Stewart he's not really that funny. <laughs> Jason summed it up best for me. And uh, I said, I said, I said, he goes, Sal, he goes, you know, I can't trust you. Gary can't trust you. You can't trust yourself. And I said. I go, come on. I mean, at this point now, I go, you know, I respect the fact that you wanted to ask Gary. You, you kind of saved me a lot of trouble. He goes, no, it's not that. It's that we don't mind you taking a picture. The problem is we don't know where your head is going to go, and you won't realize that you're going in that area thinking you're doing something good. It's absolutely true. And I said, now I get it. Like, I've seen, Wait. I've seen you tell me how you're going to compliment somebody, and it's so <laughs> offensive. Remember, and you really think it's a compliment. I know. Do you remember Russell Simmons right. when uh, right. Sal went up to him in the oh, hall God. and apologized for white people oh, and said God. that, you know, I, I know that white people no, are the I devil. Said, I, said, I, hey, ni- I said, nice to meet you. I'm the, by the way, I'm the white devil, <laughs> the white devil. And, I've got no, and I've got no problem with you. That was <laughs> to make him feel comfortable, you said. That was, it was because... <laughs> to relax him, you said, I think. Well, in my it's mind... To relax him, right. In my mind, I think that 
I think every black guy who sees a white guy, they think that they're racist, just like every white guy sees a black guy thinks, cracker, get out of my way. But see, that's an inherently bring, racist thought. <laughs> it's not a racist thought. It's more of a realistic thought based on things that you see and hear on TV and on the radio. So <laughs> the whole, remember the whole thing, the whole, wait, wait, the whole interview was Russell Simmons using the N-word. That's why, that was the whole thing. Russell called Howard a nigger. And how it's like, I thought Russell defended, was against the word nigger, and it was a heated discussion over the N-word, and when he came outside of the studio, here I am as a white guy with a racist reputation, I figured, let me break the ice, I saw Russell go, hey, I'm the white devil that you hate, <laughs> but, did, but I'm good with you. Do you how is the white devil an icebreaker? Because in his head, he probably saw me and said, what a white devil. But wait, wait, you got to reel that back. Maybe, little, maybe wait, not, but... Here's where you got to move it back. Yeah, but you so, know, wait, Russell Simmons left thinking like, wow, that's so nice, a white guy finally came up to me <laughs> There's and no, broke the ice out. It was a wait, joke, you but know. Sal, there's 30 people that work here. There's TV guys. Right. There's Gary, the producer. There's Robin, who's one of the co-hosts. There's Artie, Fred, John Hine, you know, Will, Jason. What makes you think that you're the one who needs to break the ice? That's where you have the weird thought. Uh, like, you've taken it upon yourself. Uh, hold yeah. on. It's I think a t it was a timing issue. He was walking out, and I was walking no, no, in. Wait, wait, wait. What, what, was, what would the right oh, time have no, been, Sal? Wait a minute. I think Sal, what would the right time have been to, to have done that? Any time that I probably would have passed him. Uh, that probably that was just my way of greeting. And listen, anybody could say. But no, hello. you're saying it was timing that the right timing it would have been better. It was just it wasn't the right timing. No. It was a timing issue. It was just it was fate that brought South us together Bendy. at that moment. And I, you know, <laughs> if I never would have seen him, I wouldn't have <laughs> deliberately gone out of my way to say, "Hey, look at me, I'm the white devil, and I'm cool with you." Benji, the point is, Sal thought that was the right time. Right. That's what that's what the right. deal. Is. But I think Sal has the story a little bit wrong, and I don't remember what the what the real story is. I I don't know remember what the conversation was on air, but Sal was involved in it somehow. I think through a bit or something, um, and that's why you felt some sort of connection. Like, oh, I'm yeah, the devil who did that bit. He played drops. Yeah, you played some drops. Oh, okay. There you go. So yeah, that's even. So that even justifies my actions even more. No, Thank you, don't. Jason. No, it doesn't. <laughs> sure, it does. Because if it was if it was a, a racist, humorous bit, he doesn't know you from a hole in the wall. Right. He would have left and never known who made the call or who the white devil was. You took, as you would say, took it upon myself. I guess so. To tell her who I am. Right. That's what I'm saying. Right. I think this this but is another instance where I finally get it. But it, it comes that's across why, a little patronizing. No, you don't. I get it. But that's why I like you. That's why I think you're funny. And that's why I keep you this away from the, Katy Perry. This is like the end of the 26 <laughs> minutes. Like, <laughs> like it's the end of the 26 minutes sitcom. Sal's learned his lesson again, <laughs> and now let's I'm move the, on. I'm the Jack Ritter of the Howard Stern show. <laughs> exactly, Jack Ritter. Uh, Teddy, let's Jack Ritter or Jack uh, Jack Tripper. Tripper, whatever. <laughs> Ngắm nhìn biển rộng bao la, một màu xanh biếc cho ta say lòng. Lắng nghe sóng vỗ di dâm, như lời du thua ta nằm trong nỗi. Ngắm nhìn mây lượn lờ trôi, bồng bềnh là lướt như thời đôi mươi. Nắng vàng như miệng ai cười. Cho hoa đùa đó Cho người thêm xuân Ngắm màu xanh thấm nuối ngàn Chúng chúng All right, Joe, have fun in there. Yeah. One of my favorites uh, is here, Joe Walsh. Good morning, Howard. God, you look good. You you sound good. It's the... so, it's so different. Like, 
waking up to come in here rather than know. like <laughs> to be dragged in or, or being up all well, night. Yeah, being right. up all night. You look great, Joe. And how is it that the James gang got together? Because as I pointed out to Robin, the last time it's I saw all your you, fault. I really feel somewhat responsible. I said to you the last time, why doesn't the James gang go it's on another tour? Another fine mess you got me in. I'll tell you that. <laughs> and you said you would not go on tour with the James gang, and yet here you are on a major tour with the James gang. What is going on? Well, I, you know, it sank in. What happened to make you this happen? You got me thinking. Had you guys not spoken in a while? Was there was there an uncomfortable? Oh no 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 no. We've always been we've always been buddies. You you weren't sure a commercial success could be had with the James Gang going out on tour. Was well, that it? I didn't know. It was a lot of momentum. I didn't know if I had a a window in the Eagle schedule. Uh -huh. but, but some stuff came window? together. There was a window. <laughs> there was some a big stuff window. Came together in the old uh, days, Joe would have jumped out of the window, but now <laughs> he you climbed in the window. Are the other guys thrilled? You've got to be thrilled to have a James Gang reunion, right? I mean, you're ready to make some dough here. Thrilled. Totally thrilled. Uh, what were fantastic. you guys doing? That's a good Boy, call again. Thrilled. It's great. What, what were you doing before Joe gave the phone call that he wanted to get the James Gang back Still doing music here? stuff. We, we were waiting yeah. for the phone call. Yeah. <laughs> it's a long wait. 35 years. Standing by the phone is a real drag. <laughs> we carry it everywhere we, we go. We cobwebs all over us. <laughs> when you stuff. wait for a phone call from Joe Walsh for 35 years. But, but be serious. Did you ever think it would happen because Joe went through his drinking stage and his crazy stage? Age. Yes. Did you really? You did think. Yeah. You held out yeah. hope. Yes. Yeah. Really felt it like would you happen. Because like we were friends the whole time. So I, we knew eventually. Is yeah. it exciting to be back on tour? It's fabulous. Completely. And uh, uh, what are the audiences like? Are the groupies? Right. Are, are Unbelievable. They, the, the, yeah, there are groupies. What are they Well, look they're in like walkers. Now? They are <laughs> walkers, but they're we over there. We have our own now. <laughs> they're over there. So, uh, of course, you got Joe, and you got Jimmy, and Dale, and Bill, and you've got three beautiful women working with yeah. you. You sing uh, uh, backup. Is that it? Uh, backup singer. Uh, you got Stacy, Robin, and Gia. Is that correct? That's correct. And girls, do you find the sexual tension between yourselves and the James gang? <laughs> Are there... you required to do more than sing? What is going on? I mean, I'm sure jo in the old days, Joe would have had all three of you back at the hotel. Joe, you're, you're still happily married, aren't you? Oh, well, yes and no. <laughs> what do you mean, yes and no? What does it mean, yes and no? Well, you know, it, uh, yeah, sometimes it's happy. Are you tempted out on the road to, to cheat? Like all men would be tempted, especially working with these three beautiful women. Well, what do you think? Uh, yes. Has Joe been inappropriate with you guys? I would hope so. <laughs> <laughs> There's something going on I should know about, Joe. You want to come clean? Howard, you should just come on the bus with us for Is it a wild? bus ride. Girls, I'm sure, being with the James Gang, it is tempting. You know, Joe, I wanted to say something to you. I was reading the Rolling Stone magazine piece on you I thought was great, but you were overlooked in the top 100 guitarists of all time. Yeah, what the hell? You are one of my favorite guitarists, and you know that. Do, did you feel a little slighted when they didn't they put you... They found 100 names and didn't think you of know, yours? You know, just a little bit. Just just like an honorable mention, I thought, maybe Shit. might be in line. Do you think but, you were 101 you know, or something? Yeah, maybe you were 101. <laughs> Don't you think, I mean, Jimmy, tell me if this was true, Jimmy Page uh, was taught slide guitar by you. He came to you to learn slide guitar. No, I don't, I didn't really uh, teach him slide, but I did give him the Les Paul that he used for the bulk of the Led Zeppelin work. Oh. I didn't know. Well, that's not as good a story. Oh, yeah, I was, I was uh, Okay, offended. yeah, Tom Slide, too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I had a much better story that you taught Jimmy Page how to play guitar. Isn't it true you taught Ted Williams how to hit as well? As <laughs> hey, is it true? Did you did you invent, like, one of the early versions of that thing where you put the thing in your mouth and make those wacky <laughs> noises through the water box? You know, uh, Dottie West was a country singer. Her husband was Bill West, and he was an inventor, but he never got patents. He invented the first fuzz tone, uh -huh. and he invented the talk box. But it was in his garage, and he, he just gave it to me. He said, here, take this. It smells awful. <laughs> and you started using it on stage with yeah. the Eagles, yeah. didn't you? Yeah. Was that the first time you used it? Mm hmm What was the song you used it on? Um... You know, I think it was just in the middle of, of one of the one of the songs that we did at the time. And you still getting along with the Eagles? Oh yeah, they're yeah. gonna do an album. Every, right? Everything's cool. A new album is everything's coming. Everything's good. Yeah, we. You know what? We gotta we gotta do an album. This is an amazing transition. We've you know, everywhere, I and uh, we don't want to turn it into a cover it, band. We it, don't want to turn it into the Beach Boys. Was that your daughter sitting out there uh, in the green room with you? Yeah. That's Lucy? Yeah, that's Lucy. And Lucy is a musician as well. Mm -hmm. And she toured with Ashley Simpson. She did. And, and now uh, she's got her own record deal. She's got a record deal with Island. Is she and good? she did it all herself. 
that, because you were like like she is how old now? Twenty something? Yeah. All right. So she was growing up while you were in the crazy Joe Walsh. Yeah, I was going to say, how long have you known her? Yeah, I mean, when did you <laughs> get reacquainted? Well, she was about twelve when I got sober. Are you going to introduce me to her? or Are you going to keep her out there? Well, I'm going to keep her out there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good move. <laughs> <laughs> You're a smart man. No, but but uh, she evidently is very beautiful and a musician. This She's is a great musician. Holy it, smokes. And, and But growing up, you didn't have much contact with her, right? Because no. Yeah, right. So do you think it was like a case of I want to be like my father? Maybe I'll get to know my father through music? Yeah, I think so. But she's she's got the music gene. And now you guys hang out together and you're reestablishing... Oh, there she oh, is. Oh, good. There she there is. There she good. is. Hey, Howard, baby. this is Lucy. I'll be polite. Don't worry, Joe. Lucy, Hi, Lucy. How are Howard. you? Hi, Robin. Hi there. How are you? I'm very well. So, Lucy, you have your own music career going now, right? And you have an album coming out? I do. I'm uh, a uh, recording artist on Island Def Jam. What kind of music are you doing? You rocking? Or? It's definitely going to be pop radio, but it's. Uh, I think it's a breath of fresh air for artists my age, these girls that are kind of... Do you go by the name Lucy Walsh? Yeah. Is it hard being the, the daughter of a, the great superstar Joe Walsh to, to actually go out there and try to make a musical career while you have a father like that? I think um, that the name gets you in the door very easily, but if you don't have the talent to stay there, nobody gives a shit, really. Do you think that it was a, a way of connecting with your father because he wasn't around because he was, you know, he was high all those years and everything? Well, I've definitely learned a lot about the ways that he is. Right. I'm doing it myself and seeing what it's like to be on the road and seeing how freaked out you get when you come home and you just want to be left alone and so you understand your dad you understand he probably loved you he just he just wasn't capable of dealing with you oh this must have been some group therapy session <laughs> wow. you two were oh, yeah. Yeah. oh man yeah, so when did you sweet. start to get to know your dad again i mean i'm, I'm pleased to see you guys uh, running because i love joe and it's nice that his daughter has a relationship with him in my early teens in your early um, teens we what? kind of made the big commitment to reconnect. How was that? Did you yell at him a bunch first? Yeah, I were did. you really <laughs> angry? Yeah. Yeah. A little bit, yeah. Was Joe able to <laughs> we take had a it? Good, oh, yeah. He was over. He, well, he just sat and listened, and then he. Uh, oh, I had it coming, didn't I? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you for being able to handle that. Yeah, that's not easy I to handle. I don't do that yeah. anymore. She that pretty much you... taught me how to, how to be a dad. That would drive me back to drink, that yelling uh, situation. <laughs> <laughs> so now you guys have a good relationship. By the way, you're a very attractive girl. Thank now, you. Which wife was uh, Lucy's mother? Was it number one or number two? Number, number two. two. Number two. Plaintiff. 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 <laughs> Plaintiff, yeah. I mean, yes. <laughs> and, now, and now you have a nice relationship with your father. It's wonderful. That's great. It's did, very did, interesting, and, and it's definitely a learning process. Did you have rebellious years where you tried to get his attention by acting out in bizarre ways? I think those are uh, now. Now. I think well, that's starting now. Right. You are, a, you're, you're shooting a pilot for a reality show, right? We've been working on an MTV pilot. You're yeah. in it, Joe? Yeah, well, I have to be. Yeah, it, it's kind of... <laughs> you want to play her dad? <laughs> no. No, okay. Well, uh, do you, do, Joe, you're, you're, you're very private, actually. Very uh, private. Does it bother you to be on an MTV reality show being yeah, Lucy's a little dad? Bit. It does. A because bit. there's a lot of shit that still needs to be worked out, right? A little bit. Does it, is it all honest and come out? Is there embarrassing moments? Well, I don't know. They, they're going back and forth. I mean, for me to be me, it's got to be unscripted. Right. And it, when, as soon as you say Joe Walsh and unscripted, guys with ties get really nervous. Right. <laughs> yeah. did, did, you, did you have video cameras in your home following you around? Like, yeah, oh, yeah, we did a pilot. We oh, did you did it? That. Yeah. And that didn't disturb How you? How was that? Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's kind of weird. Yeah. I mean, you're used to it everywhere you go. Not in my home. I don't think I could handle that, to be honest with yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah, the house is it's all kind lit of an up invasion of like, privacy. Yeah, but. yeah. yeah. But uh, you did it to help your daughter out. Yeah. So uh, this is the beginning of a career for you. When is your album coming out? Um, next time, next year, spring, tentatively. Wow. Is it done, or are you still working? I'm about seven songs in, and it's... The, the experience is nothing like I thought it would be. Yeah. Well, come and see us when you're promoting the <laughs> record. I definitely will see you again. Yeah, has Joe it. heard the music? I mean, he what has. You think, he has. Are you all right with it, Joe? She's so far ahead of yeah. me when I was her age. Uh, I'm just really, really proud of her. And, and she, and you were the keyboard player for Ashley Simpson. I was. I toured with her on her first record. Does she have any talent, or were you? She does. She's well. A great Lucy girl. also sang. I oh, did she actually I, sing I, the vocal? With Ashley. Yeah. I see. So you doubled her voice. 
Ashley sounded really good with Lucy singing. <laughs> I see. Does she really have a Obviously, you? Obviously, you weren't there that day she was at that stadium. I came in right... Oh, yes, I was. <laughs> you were? For the Orange Bowl. Oh, you were. What was that there. like? Whoa. That was insane. It was over 70,000 people booing. No. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and we had no sound in our ears, just the... The uh, bounce back from the music uh, in this huge Where'd stadium. you grow up? I grew up in L.A. You must have been real popular with the boys, huh? Oh, I'm very popular with the boys. I, I bet you. Say. <laughs> oh, poor Joe. <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> Stay away from that Ashton Kutcher. You're not uh, acting out sexually, I hope. <laughs> I'm, I'm a good girl. You are a good girl. I'm You're not giving yourself girl. to a lot of different rock I'm musicians. I'm totally in love and a very With good what, a rock guy? With a, with a pop star. He's nice. the singer of the Click Five. His name's Eric, and he's out... In the uh, other room. Are there any videotapes of the two of you making love that are oh going to end up on the internet? None, none, have have, to... none have leaked yet. But... <laughs> There's a few of your father, I think. <laughs> well, uh, congratulations to you. Thank in the you nice so That's much. Lucy, who is Joe's Pleasure daughter. Pleasure to meet you. Too. You know, Joe, when you stay out of the parenting, you raise lovely children. Yeah, your children turn out well. Isn't it great? <laughs> <laughs> you, got, you got a good one there. No, nah, that was a, a great surprise when I got sober. Right. Holy smokes. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, anyway, I'm excited about this reunion. And, and by the way, Joe, you were not an original Member, member of the yeah. James Gang. No, I replaced a guy named Glenn Schwartz. And who, when you replaced Glenn, the band became successful. Is that true, guys? Very true. Very true, yes. All right, well, good for you. Then Joe decided to leave. Then oh. Joe had to leave to discover himself. <laughs> he wasn't comfortable being part of a trio. Yes, I had to head out into the great unknown. <laughs> Rather than leave the guys, couldn't you just add more people and then not be part of a trio? I probably could have. Right, and it was the Eagles' greatest break getting you, wasn't it? Because it, it really, uh, it hipped up their sound somewhat. Well, it, it made for some interesting chemistry. All right, here is uh, the James Gang. Uh, first of all, your backroom uh, singers there are intriguing. They're great. Yeah. My guess is Joe is openly doing the blonde, secretly doing the brunette in the He's middle. He's got them all, but they was, don't know. And was rejected by the third girl. Uh. Uh, there's got to be some... Are, you, are any of you in love with Joe? Is that what's going on back there? Because uh, I don't know. I'm I, not squealing. Are you being faithful, Joe? Yes. You are? Yes. All right, that's good. You should come on the bus. It's, it's fun. Tell me about your guitar stuff. We have style. a Tupperware party. I bet. <laughs> what is faithful to you, though? Is oral sex faithful? <laughs> Girls, you're allowed to give Joe oral uh, sex? No, it's no, not. You're not. Okay. No, See, not. now, would I make a good president or what? You, well, you did run for president. I did. I'm running again. I think I'm thinking of running, too. I, can, I You think should. I'm going to. I'll be vice president. Well, wait no, a minute. If Mrs. You and... Earl the Pearl Monroe is going to be my vice president. Oh, okay. If you and Joe both run, you'll split the vote, the crazy vote. <laughs> no, no, no. This is. I'm being very serious well, about this. The United I'll Nations. get us out of the war in Iraq in a day. How long will it take you? Uh... Two days. Two days. So I'm a better president. Yeah, you would be. I would be. Yeah. I, I, I secede. Why are you thinking? Why are you thinking of running? He's Seriously, thief. I'm thinking of running. I would just get in and get us out of Iraq in a day. It'd be over. Well, and then I, you won't want to be president anymore. Well, so what? I'll make my vice president uh, the president. I think that this country should have quality problems, and I would intend to have us have quality problems instead of awful problems. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> You always make a good candidate. That's pretty good, isn't it? <laughs> Joe, tell me something. And think of the pussy if you're president. My right. God. Yeah. You think rock star pussy is good. Forget about it. Uh, Joe. Yeah, you get Monica Lewinsky. Oh, my. Joe, tell me about your guitar style you're right. for a second. I was shocked to read that your guitar style, your, Pete Townsend was your hero, and your guitar style is not just rhythm guitar or lead guitar. It's rhythm lead guitar, right? Yeah. And that's why it's, 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 it was easy for you to be in a band of three guys because you're doing the part of two people well that that kind of uh i never planned on being a singer you always wanted to be a guitar player. well see our singer quit is that what happened is that the on James the way to a gig yeah. And, yeah, and so and you we guys couldn't, we couldn't uh <laughs> we had to play because we didn't have gas money to get back home oh my and so i was the singer so you became the guy and be, being the singer i had to modify my guitar playing so when when you got sober, did you have to do that whole apology thing? Did you have to apologize to half the women? Make you amends. Screwed? Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. I still got a few to make. You're still working on that. Howard, I'm sorry for everything. Me and I just <laughs> you don't have to apologize for a thing you did. Okay. Anything you did on my show, like passing out. When I was taping a pilot for Fox Television, you passed out in the middle of the the pilot. Well, it was boring. And yeah. And, <laughs> right? and he fell down. He fell down during. I was interviewing someone, and you just slept during the whole show. It was yeah. the greatest thing ever. If you could have sat there and slept, I think the show would have gotten. Well, up. probably a little nap was in order absolutely so um uh oh i was going to ask you you recently played a bar mitzvah 
which I was shocked. Right. You and Henley. Oh, yeah, that. It was a tremendous amount of money, though, right? Did you get something like a million dollars? We got a lot of money. Was it a million? Uh, maybe between us. So wow. a million bucks for the two of you guys to show up. And how many songs how, yeah. did you play? Oh, we played about six. Six songs. Yeah. Holy shit. That's about, that's about I don't know, $300 a note. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's pretty good pay. And all the free gefilte fish you could eat. Up. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Were you shocked when you got such a... Uh, uh, <clears throat> An invitation. I mean, and you accepted yeah, it. Yeah, it. It, it, it's weird now. Billy Joel said he got invited <laughs> to the same function. And he said, I don't do bat mitzvahs. Like, that was his thing, his rule. He didn't care how much money right. someone paid him. But you're willing to go do a bat mitzvah or two for a million, right? Well, sure. Why not? Were you shocked to see Fleetwood Mac backstage? They were there, too, right? Right. Oh, yeah, all kinds of Steve Tyler came. I mean, it was unbelievable. That was amazing. People. It when really heard was we were crazy. Getting a lot of money. Did you, did you wear a yarmulke? <clears throat> no, I didn't. You did not? No. Well, I'm this good. wasn't the, the religious part. This was the party, right? It was nuts. This poor girl. <laughs> this poor girl, all she wanted to do was, like, have some people over to her house. Right. <laughs> and her dad throws this huge party. Right. Yeah, well, I actually know the family. And the whole place was full of intoxicated 14-year-old people. Oh, my. <laughs> and I didn't know quite how I fit into all that. But Well, what songs did you do at the Bob for? We did a couple of Henleys. Right. Uh, Boys of Summer, stuff oh, like that. Nice. A couple of mine. <laughs> the Life kids speed. danced, and uh, it was a good time. Yeah. Right. A lot of 13-year-olds into the Eagles of Fleetwood Mac. Right. I right. wish, I wish uh, they um, would have videotaped that for that reality show. That's I, a great I reality show. Daddy, I want to hear Rocky Mountain Way. <laughs> so, all right, this is exciting. The James Gang is back together. Joe Walsh, Jimmy Fox, Dale Peters, and Bill Appleberry are here. Stacy Plunk, Robin. How do you say your name, Robin? Robin Kermsey. Robin Kermsey. 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 Oh. little egg goo over that E. Yeah. You married woman? I'm engaged. You are engaged. Well, I wish you luck. To Joe Walsh. Not to me. <laughs> Not to Joe Walsh? <laughs> well, to somebody with a lot of money. That's a big rock. this big... ring on my finger before we went on the road. Well, you're He's a good-looking woman. I'm sure that it was not hard Thank for you, you to get a husband. Is that correct? <laughs> Pardon me? Is he a rich guy? Um, I think that he's accomplished. What yes, does he do? Say that. What Rich is, in spirit, though, the most. What kind, of, what kind of work is this guy into? He's in cars, car yeah. industry. Cars. I knew I should have gotten into that. <laughs> so is my father, too. <laughs> yes. And, uh, and uh, also uh, Gia, and I hope I'm saying this name right, Cambodi. Chimbodi. Chimbodi. You engaged, too? No. Well, you can be with Joe tonight. You'll be a lucky woman. <laughs> be with the whole James gang. <laughs> what about you, Stacy? What's your That's story? You got a boyfriend, or are you, uh, you, you playing the field? Um, that's my answer. Oh, you're a lesbian. Oh. Are you a lesbian? No. No. That's too bad. All right. Well, anyway, let's, um... Leaving a lot of questions out there. Stay yeah. away from John Bode. She sounds connected. Right. Are you in love with Joe? Is that what's going on here? Who, me? Yeah. Be honest. Be honest? Yeah. I'm in love with the world. Well, then... Joe's up. in it. Line up for get ready for all of us. What is it like for the rest of the James gang now to be back on the road? Uh, Dale, when, when, when Joe broke up the band because he had to leave, because he had to go find himself, it uh, had to be devastating for you, right? It was hard. It you, was hard. You, you were know, living Joe's the life. a huge, huge part of this. It was difficult. Did you go out and try and find someone else to replace him? We did. Him? We found a whole bunch of people. <laughs> <laughs> we tried like 14 different people in the band. Was there a lot of resentment at the time when it went down? Uh, no, not really. I mean, not but, really. He but he took away your livelihood. He took away your no, job. He no, took not, not really. Uh, no? Boy, no. musicians are very nice. I mean, we nice. understood. You know, it was, it was pretty grueling at, the, at that time. And then when you saw Joe move on with the Eagles, were you like the jealous wife? Were you like, no. oh, my yeah, God. Yeah, like he didn't want to be in a group, but he joins the Eagles. No, no. No, not at all. Would you, yeah, right. We he couldn't be in a group, but the Eagles, he could be in. Right. It's a funny thing. No, that, that, was, that was a while later. We were, we were very happy for him. And when Joe called and said, let's do this thing again, you just said, okay, who cares? Absolutely. And did sure. you stay in touch with Joe all these years, or was this, yeah. the, this was the first contact? Or no, 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 you did. No, we've always, we've always stayed in touch. Well, that's nice. Yeah. Was there a lot of um, a rehearsal required for this reunion? You know what? We had trouble rehearsing because we could never play anything the same twice. <laughs> so we didn't know if we knew it or not. We just, well, let's go play in front of people. And it, and, it, and it's sort of, how many concerts have you done so far together as the Seven. Jam? Seven. Yeah. And this will continue for some time. 
Yeah. yeah. All right, good. Uh, Jeff, go ahead. You're on the air in Boston. Uh, first of all, I, I saw Joe at the Boston Garden with uh, the Eagles, and, and, and Joe stole the show. He did seven songs solo that night a few years back. Joe makes interesting facial oh, movements yeah. uh, while he plays. You're, you do steal the show, even with the Eagles. Is that an intentional thing, or has that always been that way? It's almost like a facial tick. Uh, you know what? My grandfather saw me on TV, and he said... I had to change the channel. Ah. It was so disturbing to him, you yeah. mean? <laughs> hey, Howard. Why can't you stand there like everybody else, he said. You know, uh, Artie and I went to see the Eagle show last year, and Joe steals the show just Unreal. because of the songs. I mean, yeah. the, the, you know, it's funny. The Eagles had, what, eight or nine albums out before Joe joined them? Run. And what, two or three with you? Is that how many? But it's almost like there's a whole group of people who think the Eagles are Joe Walsh. I think that's where some of the animosity in the band came from. That but, would be me. But when you do Life's Been Good, yeah. Yeah. and when you do Rocky Mountain Way, those are the songs that make everybody jump out of their in seat. In the city. Yeah. A uh, life in the fast lane. Well, thank hey, you, uh, everybody. Uh, but, uh, real I mean, quickly, I... I, Don, Don I and saw, Glenn uh, are the Wait a second. You guys are talking over each other. I'm, I'm sorry. Let I Joe saw, talk. I, He's the one being interviewed. You'll get your question. I just want to say Don and Glenn are the Eagles. And uh, it's they, a well, you've been to trained. play guitar they never for let such him brilliant it. singers. <laughs> they don't let you forget that at all. Boy, they got you trained. Wow. Uh, well, you're the Eagles, too. Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. What were you saying? I've seen Lucy perform with Ashley Simpson, and I think Lucy could probably uh, uh, square away some rumors on uh, Andy Dick's sexuality. Oh, really? Uh, what does what? that mean? What's about? Uh, well, what are you saying? I guess, I guess that would be a question for Lucy to answer. Lucy went out with Andy Dick? Oh, please uh, Joe, don't do you know anything, do you know anything, about, anything that? about this, Joe? I don't know anything about that. I don't... I'm stunned. Yeah. If, uh, that even ago. shocked Joe. <laughs> what, what, but is that three years ago what? Three, four years ago, from what I understand, in L.A. Yeah. She was seeing Andy. Really? You're kidding me. That makes me sick. That Andy got. Uh, if Andy got Lucy, I'm very, I can't very wait sick. to see Smokey snap Andy Dick's neck. Yeah. Oh. I see Smokey still with you, Joe, right? Joe, is he oh, your manager yeah. now? He's right there. Yeah, I know. He's your manager now, huh? Well, he's a road manager, yeah. I mean, he, he uh, keeps me out of jail and stuff. Smokey was the guy, I remember, for years when you were drinking. He was in charge of keeping alcohol away from you, and I always thought Smokey oh. did a pretty bad job of keeping alcohol away from you. Well. you know? Smokey had a tough job. Smokey had a tough job. <laughs> yeah. And Smokey, uh, Smokey, your whole job was keeping Joe sober, and you have been a success at it now for a couple of years, haven't you? Nobody thought he would win this battle. Joe, uh, Smokey, <laughs> I never thought you'd win the battle with Joe, to be honest well, with you. Well, some say that, you know, the difficult I'll do right away, if possible, takes a little longer. <laughs> right. Uh, and Belushi you were with, too. That was your yeah. job. Him you didn't have so much success He didn't give with. him enough time. No, it, I, we, we, had, we were good friends, but he was just a bad boy. He was and, a bad boy. And, yeah, but... You know, when he was together, he was fine. When I when we parted company, he was uh, 210 pounds, clean, straight, together. Mm. Yeah, he, had, he had lost, like, 20 pounds and yeah. was talking about the future and stuff. Yeah. And, uh, Are you uh, shocked to see Joe in this kind of condition now? And, and, uh, and, and fi Did you yeah. ever imagine this would happen? Yes. You did? No, you oh, have yeah. to pinch yourself every day. Come on. Going, I'm dreaming. No, no, would you no, mind I... taking Artie for three months? <laughs> Artie's got many problems. I'm a lost cause. No, no. Artie, I could work with Artie. Yeah? You and could. I, think, I think the thing that scares Artie, he would say, you know, he could make me a better person. Yeah. How do you I'll get I don't you think up, Artie's huh? ready. Smokey, real quick, how do you get a guy like Joe Walsh or John Belushi, how do you get them to, you know, stop drinking, to lose weight, to It'll behave? Be in my book, Howard. I, You're writing yeah, a book? I, I'm doing it. No, I, it's all up here. It is a miracle. Yeah. It is. Lucy, real quick, Joe Walsh's daughter, are you, in fact... Do you is, know Andy Dick? Do you know Andy Dick? I do know Andy uh, Dick. Yes. Uh, no, we did not date. And the answer on his sexuality, coming straight from him, is that he's trisexual. He will try anything. Okay. Right. So, you did, so you did not have an affair with I Andy I did not Dick. have an affair with Andy Dick, no. All right, good. But there's pictures on the internet on the red carpet and All things right. like so that. So the exclusive no, is ones. that Lucy Boy, we does... we feel better, don't we, Howard? We oh, sure God, God. <laughs> so do I. <laughs> Lucy does not know Andy's dick. I do not know Andy's dick, <laughs> no. Good for you. All right, that's what I wanted to make sure. Well, uh, let me tell you something. That was that, that has to make you breathe a sigh of relief. Yeah, yeah. It sure does. It's a good day. <laughs> well, James, gang, uh, I love it. I, uh, I truly do. I love that you were here. Oh, Captain Jenks has a question. We'll let him have the last word. Go ahead, Captain Jenks. Hey, good morning. Actually, I have two questions. The first one is, Joe, who do you like playing with? Who do you enjoy playing with better, the Eagles or the James Gang? And second question is, would you guys play Desperado? Uh, <laughs> I don't think they'll be playing Desperado. We won't be playing Desperado today. You know, I, I love being in the Eagles. I mean, Hotel California is still uh, my favorite. It's really hard to play it good. It's right. still a challenge. I love being in that band, but what I do is... Uh, 
I've got a part to deliver right on time, and that part is important to the song. Right. And, uh, and we do that as good as anybody. Right. But in this band, I get to improvise, and there's no real, uh, there's no map drawn out jimmy just counts off and we go right and uh like that's the old rock and roll days i wish there was more of that today right you know yeah so it's a it's a refreshing break and i get to I are get you depressed to, by the state of music today there isn't a lot of improvisation yeah i think you were i think you definitely made the right move let me put it that way yeah do you listen to anybody today yeah, but they never say who they are. Oh, that's the problem. You don't know them. Well, yeah. the music's like the Goo Goo awful. Dolls. Goo Goo Dolls are getting me. The, you like those guys? Yeah, they're pretty good. You well, know, Howard, you talk about Joe's facial tics when he plays guitar. When I was when I played high school baseball, when I was on deck, I used to use the bat as a guitar and do Joe Walsh. Uh -huh. That's why I was like a horrible student athlete. <laughs> and people in the stands used to yell, "Artie, do Joe Walsh." Well, let me see you do Joe <laughs> do Walsh. I, I mean, it was just. I mean, I don't know. I just, <laughs> I used to just the Hotel California, like. I'm not even aware. Of that. You're not aware of it. No. Because it's entertaining. I mean, because the Eagles, especially. Oh, it's are, unreal. They all stand there like wooden posts, and you're moving around yeah. and putting the camera on your head. I mean, it is fun to watch. It's you. easy to look animated next to Timothy right. B. Schmidt. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that, that that one video you guys put out a live Hotel California when you're doing you're going back and forth at the end guitar right. solo with the eh, eh, eh. <laughs> <laughs> It's a little cooler than Artie does it. Well, well yeah, it is. But, you know, I'm a fat guy. That's because what Joe does it. He's actually playing Hotel <laughs> California. I used to do that on deck. That's why I didn't bat 300. My senior. <laughs> Go ahead, Pete. Quickly say hi to the James Gang in Wellington, Florida. Howard, how are you, sir? All right. You are once again the absolute god. And Joe Walsh, I just got to tell you, I used to play in my 40 years old, excuse me, 40 years old now, before I became a partial, partial quadriplegic like I am now, I used to be a pretty decent guitar player. And I can absolutely say you are unequivocally, unequivocally one of the most underrated guitar players, singers, songwriters in music today, period, bar none. Well, that is true. I have to agree with that, Pete. There's no question about Thank it. Thank you. And thanks to Joe, Jimmy, Dale, Bill, Stacy, Robin, and Gia. Really, thank you. That it was, was a, a real treat. treat. Thank real treat. you. Great seeing you guys, and we'll be back. We'll take a little break, and then uh, we'll get back and do the rest of the show. Great for job. You. All right, thanks, guys. Joe, how'd it go in there, man? Pretty darn good. Had a good time? Yes, he was, uh, he was gentle with us. He was. He was pretty gentle with Lucy, too. Were you, uh, yeah. were you nervous? No, I wasn't. by you, the audience. The show will consist of three rounds of comedy, and after each round, you guys will eliminate a comic. Let's get the show rolling. Before we do, I want to bring out your judges for you. He can't spell Ralph, but he sure is funny. Let's hear it for the Reverend Bob Levy!
Hey, I'm Johnny Rizzo. I'm here for Kill or Be Killed for the Howard Stern Show, and this for me is an epoch moment, a uh, a high moment for me. This is a, this can launch you across the country, and believe me, I need to get out of the East Coast. I got bookies up my ass. I swear to God, and I need the money. I need the money. My mother needs a leg. She needs a leg. Her legs. She, you know, it's like the dragon mother around the city with one fucking leg. I got. I need the money. I need the money. It's not because. All right, I need some melanin. All right, I'm from the albino. Uh, from Albania, and uh, I need a little melanin transplant, so, and I need to have my ego shortened. So that's why I came for Kill or Be Killed, because here, this is, this is the grand douche of it all. This is where you find, this is where water floats or flots on jetsons, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm trying to fornicate to you? What do you think your shots are today, Johnny? 125%, dude. Because I, I give it all. I give my heart, my lungs, I give the artery. I pull the shit right out like David Blaine. I'll show it to you. Beat like that. Like that. See? Beaten. And I'll, you know what? I got a face for radio. Fucking deadly weapon, man. Fucking deadly weapon. Take a good look, because I get uglier as the night goes on. This is my peak right here. By 3.30, I look like shit. I like a girl with a big ass. Big ass girls, let's hear for a big ass girl. Come on, big ass girl. I love girls with big booties, man. Yeah, I'll put my head right in there. I don't care. Right in there. What are you doing? Back up. I'll hurt you. Break my neck, bitch. I mean, look, you have to have a hobby. At least I'm not collecting stamps. You know what I mean? Those fuckers bring two guns. One for him, one for you. They start showing you stamps. This is my 1952. Oh, you fuck. I'm looking at the stamps. I'm going, mail something, you fucking cretin. I love... I'll fuck you up. You know, I like... I like girls that drink. That's my favorite type of girl. Honesty, right? Honesty! Girl that drinks. What's your name, babe? <laughs> Whoa, get in the car, bitch. Hurry up! Get in the fucking car. Put your sweater over your head when we drive out. I got a fucking rep. I hang out with Levy. What the fuck? Because beauty is only skin deep. I never get past the skin. I just fucking... You know, what I'm trying to say is... I jerk off a lot, but I had to stop because I, I let it build up. Now I blow a load and got fucking legs on it. It runs into the tissue itself. <laughs> Fuck you, that shit's funny. You know what? <laughs> My asshole's whistling like a teapot up here. It's fucking hot, isn't it? It's fucking hot. You got a hot bit, man. Can I smell your finger? You know what? <laughs> Because we, we cut slack with pretty people, man. Ugly people get the short shift. You know what I'm saying? You get that ugly waitress, you cut a no slack. The pretty one, sweetie, stop. When you get a chance. No, no, when you get a chance. <laughs> it's all right. Coffee. It's a little tepid. You know what I mean? Maybe you hotten it up. Make it a little hot. You know what I mean? That old middle-aged lady, no slack at all. Yo, troll. <laughs> you want to waddle over here, Sasquatch? <laughs> Uh, this shit's more fucking cold, like fucking ice, you know what I mean? Maybe you can make it warmer. And don't put your big greasy fucking thumb in. I love your work in Lord of the Rings. Fucking dude. <laughs> you should have gotten a water. Well, I like the nervous energy, and he's got the look for comedy. <laughs> uh, I thought the material could have been a little stronger. You had your moments, but a little stronger. Yeah, a little more flow. A little, yeah, yeah. Reverend Bob. Well, thank God this is radio because you're an ugly motherfucker. <laughs> it was hard to live. It was like looking at a burn victim on stage doing comedy. <laughs> I mean, I think he did, he did a good job, not a great job, you know what I mean? I've definitely seen this motherfucker do better, but it was okay. Party Lang. Well, somewhere in the back, there's a Coke dealer who's $50 richer. <laughs>
original, but you know, you can tell you sort of at, at the beginning of it maybe some uh, some unnecessary lulls in there. But an original delivery, the material could have been better. I mean, I don't know how we're scoring this. Sal didn't tell us so. I mean, good job. I keep it up if I were you. Let's hear for Tony Rizzo. This is my funeral pyre. Okay, you now I should be laid out like this. No, it was good. I felt good. I felt really good, you know. Uh, I had the energy going. A uh, little, little, um, wasn't sure about what to go with, but then I stuck to what I originally planned, and uh, I was rushing a little bit because of that two-minute, uh, you know, situation. But other than that, I felt really good. I felt, you know, felt funny, feel good. Uh, I think I had an outside chance, you know, still in the race. I don't think I'm completely out yet. Uh, I'm looking forward to the second round. And hopefully, uh, you know, it'll come out uh, in the wash, you know, and they'll see what a true comic genius I'm not, and was, could be, uh, possibly, well, you know, there's moments, I, have, I need a fucking sitcom, I'm the neighbor, I'm the fuck, you know, everybody else fakes it, I'm, I'm the real fucking, you know, there's the McCoy, what the fuck, there's a real, what I'm trying to say is, I really have nothing to say. Your next contestant for Kill or Be Kill on Howard 101, ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Keith Pernell! Come on! Hi, this is Keith Pernell. I'm here for Kill or Be Kill, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm killing. I don't think I'm going to lose. I'm confident. I'm ready to rock this shit and turn it out, all right? I come from Delaware, and I'm the only black guy in the competition. The only black guy. You know what that means? What's I'm that? cleaning up after the show. That's fucked up. All right, good luck today, man. Thanks, man. Are we doing all right? All right? It's funny, a white guy talking about he like ass. That's the funniest shit right there. I'm a titty man. Where my titty man at? Breast man, where you at? Titty man. I love breasts. I like them. I get a hard one drinking milk. I just like some titties. I don't care how big or small. You can have two little nibbles. I play connect the dots. I don't care. I'll put Clearasil on them. I like some titties, man. They're fun. I don't like them too big, though. Just because I like them, don't mean they gotta be real big. You know what too big is? If you get deodorant on the side of your nipples, that's too big. But you know, secret, strong enough for man, but it tastes like shit. I hate that, man, it's bad. And we always like to put it there, don't we guys? We always wanna put it there, you know? We're like, hey honey, let me put it there. They're like, no. Like, come on, let me put it there. Like, no, the more we ask, we sound like goofy. Oh, come on, let me put it there. Like, no. Guys, it does nothing to a woman if you put it there. It does nothing. If she lets you do it, look, it's her way of saying, here, have some fun, but hook me up later. That's all that means. And if you think you're doing damage, look down, because they be sleep. <laughs> Read the book. We know how to get your attention, though. Like, hey, 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 okay, okay, okay. <laughs> it's fun, man. You know, they make a lot of noise. Did you ever get into it? You're all hot and sweaty, and you hear that <laughs> sound? I'm the only one having hot 20 sex in this room. That's a, fart sounds are funny to man during sex, period. That's some funny shit. But we cannot laugh. We can't, we try and hold it in. Ladies, if the lights are out and that <laughs> happens, turn on the lights, we're like this. <laughs> we want to laugh, but we can't, because look, if we laugh, you will laugh. And if you laugh, you'll contract and squeeze our dick out. Like, <laughs> and we sit there with a limp biscuit in the hand, right? We try to be men and push it in, but we can't. We got a soggy six, it ain't going in. It's like putting a marshmallow on the coin side, you forget it. We get it going again, everything's fine. <laughs> happens again, we laugh. Ha ha! Ladies, you want to hold in your lap. What happens? You fart for real. <laughs> it's comedy night after that, you can forget it. Ladies, be careful. Y'all be wanting to get on top too during sex. Y'all want to get on top. Be careful. You get on top. Because look, when this is erect, it's a vertical object. It doesn't twist, curve, or bend. You can't get on top and be like, yeah! Or if you're small, they hum. Mm -hmm. They look back. You like that, Daddy? You like that? We sit there like this. <laughs> but we are so happy to get some. God, what do we do? Yes, I like it. That's our time. Keep it up. Thank you very much. That's it for Keith Burnell. Come on. Artie Lang on Keith Burnell. Well, I'm deducting two points for borrowing my G Unit shirt for the performance. <laughs> natural on stage. I, and again, I, you know, some of the material was great. I would really concentrate on writing killer stuff because you're such a natural on stage with, with better jokes, you just would destroy. So, I mean, you know, you're, you're a pro. I think you're good, you know. All great. right. 
Do you want to go through you? I don't know what Artie's talking about. I heard the mercy laugh. Oh. Uh, you gave the mercy laugh. No, you I tried. You tried to find something funny, and you gave a mercy laugh. I know it wasn't real. Yeah. Right, so. Oh my God! <laughs> black on black, black right, Robin. Yeah. I got news for you. Robin ain't black. <laughs> no, he does have a, a natural stage presence. He was yeah. a little nervous. And so maybe that messed up your timing. You rushed through a lot of things. And so it started to become a sex education lecture <laughs> and not comedy. So that's what I would, I would say. You need to just, you know, be grounded and believe in your material and then deliver it. Deliver it so that people can enjoy it. Just kill the bitch after the show, will you? <laughs> I was going to have sex with you. <laughs> Thank you. Reverend Bob Levy! I mean, I thought it was good. He looks like Michael Jordan without a career, but I think he did a good job. I mean, I was just happy he didn't do white people talk like this, black people talk like that, so I give you credit. For that. Let's hear it again for Keith Purnell! Our wallet's still here, very good. I did all right. I rushed it. I was rushing a little bit because, like, for two minutes, I'm just trying to. There's so much I wanted to say in that short amount of time. You know, I wanted to get everything out. I rushed it. I think I did all right. I hope I can make. I can make it to the next round. You know, I was a little nervous only because I wanted to get everything out. But next round, it's on. It's on. It's on. It's on. Ladies and gentlemen, your third contestant for Kill and Be Killed. Give it up for Matt Bridgestone. Come on. How are you guys doing? Matt Bridgestone. I mean, I'm ready to go today. I'm fucking pumped up. This is like all the hard work leading up to it. You just see us today, but you don't see the comics. And they're on the road, they're dogging it out, they're broke. An opportunity like this is just unbelievable. And, you know, it's just, it's, it's, it's a dream come true. And I'm just excited. Hopefully it'll go great. I think I'm ready. We'll see what the crowd thinks. All right, man, good luck. Thank you. What's up, New York? So, uh, I'm Jewish. Do we have any kike haters here tonight? Come on, where are my anti-Semites? Let's go. Come on, raise your hands. Raise your hands. You know who the cheapest Jews are? The real fucking Jewy Jews with the curly sideburns? Holy shit. You know what those sideburns are called? They're called payas. Payas. Give me that fucking sideburns want money. It's crazy, man. Where are my drinkers here tonight, huh? Alcoholics, make some noise. Good to see you guys. How you doing? <laughs> so check it out. I figured out a way how you can never again in your life get arrested for DWI. Next time you gotta go to the Department of Motor Vehicles and get your license picture taken, get fucking wasted. Yeah, because then they take a picture, let's say the cop pulls you over, you're like, Arr. It's cool because he looks at your license, you're like, Arr. He's gonna be like, get on out of here, you ugly bastard. <laughs> We're all clear here, Johnson. Let's go fuck with some naggers. Everyone hates people that nag. All right, never mind. Where are my pot smokers here tonight? God damn it, let me hear you. Everyone you just heard yelling, that's all the energy they're going to have left for the rest of the day, man. It's smoking, yeah, because pop people say pot makes you stupid. It's bullshit. I smoke a ton of weed. I finished college in two years. I dropped right out of that shithole, Rutgers. Here's an impression of me when I should have been studying and doing the right thing. Here we go.
<laughs> take it easy, Bobby. Can't take it. <laughs> I thought there was some good material. I thought the physical stuff with the, the bong was really good. And uh, you just need to also tighten up the material. You need to, you know, hit people with really strong stuff. They always say a comedian's supposed to start off with his best joke and end with his best joke. You have a slow start. Party line. Yeah, I'm starting off with the question, where are my Jew haters? <laughs> it's odd unless you're doing like a private party at Mel Gibson's house. I think you might get a killer reaction there, not in the middle of New York City. Uh, but there was some good stuff. Um, but uh, it ended weak. It ended very weak. So you just got to work on an ending. But, uh, you know. Okay, let's do it again. Word, don't mispronounce it. Hey, put the R in here. What's the matter with you? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let's bring all comedians back up on stage. It's time for the elimination. <laughs> Keith Cornell, Johnny Rizzo, and Matt the Racist Bridgestone. This is where you guys come to life. Guys, start booing now, and by the loudest amount of boos, we're going to figure out who goes home right now. Start booing right now. Let's go. Should Johnny Rizzo go home? Should Keith Purnell go home? Should Matt Bridgestone go home? Matt Bridgestone, a Weaver Getschy! Get the fuck off the stage! You've been killed or kill or be killed! Shit happens, man. I'm still feeling good, you know. Basically, uh, stuff kills a lot of other times. Just wasn't popping today. I'll be all right. I'm coming back. Don't worry about it. It's all good. Talk to me some more about what the uh, judges said to you. Um, I don't know. They said I finished weak. Usually my bong hit is my fucking strongest joke. Um, I think the, the mic I wasn't really used to, that was a problem for me because I, I just couldn't get it. the sounds going the way I wanted to. Um, you know. Levy killed me, but it's all good. I love Levy. He's a friend of mine. It's we'll, we'll be fine. But uh, that's it. You know, you can't you can't let your highs be too high or lows be too low. I'm 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 cool with the whole thing. So talk a little bit about the other two uh, guys you competed against. Kind of they did. To be honest, I wasn't really paying too much attention because I was worried about my own shit. But I was hanging with them backstage. They seem like good guys. I wish them the best of luck. All right, time for the second round. The second round, the heckle fest. The worst thing a comedian faces is heckling. You guys know how to fucking heckle. Come on, let's hear some heckling about me right now. Give me a little taste. Thank you, thank you. It's like Christmas. Okay. Very good. You got it. You got it down. Okay. All right, you got it. You got it. Okay, here we go. Party encourages the heckling. No kidding, but I'm a shrub. All right, guys, the second round is the heckle fest. But I need you guys to be quiet and see how these comedians handle the heckling. And we got a thank you. And we got a special guest tonight to heckle. None other than from Miserable Man. Let's give it up for Shuli the Heckler. Stand up, Shuli. There he is. For the Heckle Fest, give it up again for Johnny Rizzo! <laughs> so, stop throwing the people got all right, baby. Take a good look. I get ugly as the night goes on. <laughs> this is right. No, I got five minutes. Here's the thing. What I'm trying to say, I'm Italian and Irish. I get drunk and I break my own legs. <laughs> Thank you very much, coming from a distended testicle. Thank you very much. Well, the sex is getting back to yeah. the math lab right about now. Right about now. Your mother gives me a ride. Yo! Know. You know, I, I can grow up and ugliness, but you're going to be retarded. 
retarded for the rest of your life. Let's turn to page four in the joke book. What else hey, you got? Let me, let me see. I got uh, something else here. Oh, yeah, your sister fucked me. No, no, no. <laughs> summed up with this phrase. Time's up. Thank you. Thank Have a you. good night. Rowling. I mean, there was moment. It was almost Shakespearean in its tragedy. You know, it had uh, moments that uh, with the give and take. It was like ad. It was almost like Edgar Bergen and Charlie McCarthy, but without the dummy actually having much to say, which would be the heckler. But uh, there was moments. I mean, there was moments where I felt like I wasn't even up there, translucent. You know, going beyond, knocking that fourth wall down and finding a construction worker sitting on a shovel. You know what I mean? It was. Well, you know, I don't know. Syphilis is bad, too. You know what I mean? So, I'd rather have this than syphilis. You know what I'm saying? Talk to me about your chances right now. How do you think, you you know, after that second round? Dude, I think it's a shoe in because I'm basically, uh, you know, uh, you know, you see these other fucking cops? Look at this fucking guy. I think I got a cop with this guy. What's funny about him? He's fucking good looking. You got to be like, you know, you got to have a fucking mug. You know what I'm saying? He could be he could, he could be in a full house as well as the David Coulier, but I'm the fucking... Little kid that's you know doing carbon all. You know what I'm saying? Is anybody in there? What I mean is, the chances. It's like the lottery. You buy a ticket, right? And you and, you know you look, you throw it out, and then you win. That's you know. So and then sometimes you get a ticket and you win. And what's it? Twenty five bucks. So what the? You know, man, it's like a roller coaster. Life. Life is like a flower. I don't even know what the fuck that means. <laughs> all right, man. Good luck the rest of the way. All right, you too. Next up, the handle of Hecklers. Give it up, ladies and gentlemen, for Mr. Keith Pernell. All right, this is cool. This is cool, man. I'm waiting for you, Shirley. I'm waiting for you. What are you waiting on? The problem's right here. Come on, let's go, man. Guilty. Best right. case, please. <laughs> wearing them jeans. Relax, right? I may have camel toe, but I never raked a white woman. <laughs> Tell your sister I'm sorry, all right? <laughs> hey, hey, Keith, when you get off stage, can I have my TV back when you get around to the <laughs> Yeah, the 13-inch black and white with two channels on and off. Yeah, that's right. times in the top of your head you look like a fucking bowling ball. Now hurry up and get this shit over with. <laughs> got a beer, I got a burrito in the microwave that's funnier than this set. Let's go. No, I can't visit. Where the hell did this come from? What the hell? You tell your family come out of the cabinet yet? What the hell, you old fucker? <laughs>
guilty. I, 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 I told my dick I would hit you with, but you'd be like the midget on a Burger King commercial. Get this meat off of me! <laughs> All I can tell you is your first set sucked so bad and bombed so horribly that Hezbollah claimed responsibility for it. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. Are you singing your theme music they bring you up on stage to every night? No, that's what I fucked your sister to. Again. <laughs> like it's seven minutes. I can keep going. If it, if I can keep on, just keep on going. My shit ain't written. Yours is. Come on, Parker, what do you got? said life is a flower sometimes you get weeds sometimes you get a flower but I look at it like this I look at it like this I already won I already won I got the I got the exposure I'm with the the Howard show the they, they see me they know what I do yeah people in this in the crowd they don't know what the fuck's up they what they gonna do you know winners never lose something like that but what I'm trying to say is uh, I've been trying to buy a midget for three months can't find any. That's the basic thing. I'm, that's what I'm trying to come Talk to you about how you think Keith did. You know, oh, Keith, I thought he did great because I didn't watch his set. So I'm just, you know, I don't watch other comics because I'm the only guy that's fucking funny around here. Well, I'm going to look at those. Bob Levy, look at that guy. He's a judge. This guy's a judge. You know, the thing is, back in the days of cocaine, I would have been the fucking winner. Yeah. You know? Because I would have eight balled everybody. No, the thing is, I feel good. It's all good. It's all. It's all. It's all fun. It's fun. You gotta, life's short. Laugh. Laugh. Because you know you can't laugh when you got oxygen. And you, you know, you ever see a fucking guy dying trying to laugh? They start coughing on you and everything. You know, you really can't hit him with hard jokes. You gotta go light with somebody. Yes. You know, like that. You know. But uh, you know, it's all. It's all good. You know. All right, man. Well, good job tonight. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. America. Remember this face. Good job, Keith. Good job, man. You know, you have them on the ropes. That's all right, bro. <laughs> it's on the ropes, man. I had, to, I had to duck and move on. Duck and move. It's all right, though, man. It ain't over yet. I'm almost there. Halfway there. Halfway there. Token black eye still here. I still got to clean up the dressing room afterwards. That shit is fucked up. Still here, though. Talking about a giant guy. Just keep... 
Oh, 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 what a talk bad to him? No, just how you oh. think he did? Oh, he did great. He surprised me at first. Um, and, you know, I was like, wow. I mean, you know, he had the whole ugly thing going on, which kind of hurt me at first. But, uh, yo, he was good. And, uh, you know, it wasn't easy. I thought it was going to be easy, but it wasn't. So, you know, we were going toe-to-toe there for a little bit. But uh, it's all right, though, man. So uh, I'll see Johnny again. But tonight, it's all about me. It's time for the second group to come up and show you their skills. Ladies and gentlemen, a big round of applause for our next contestant, Mr. Jason Good. Let's hear it for him. Hey, I'm Jason Good. I'm a New York City comedian. I'm originally from Ohio. I've been doing comedy about five years. I'm here to do Kill or Be Killed. I'm excited. I'm looking, uh, I'm just going to go out there and I'm just going to blast them. For two minutes, you got nothing else to do. All you can do is go out and hit them as hard as you can. Try and kill, 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 kill. You don't have any other opportunity. And then, you know, the heckling segment, we'll see what happens. That's, that's, the, uh, that's the thing you don't really know how that's going to go. But I'm going to hit hard and I'm going to hit often. And hopefully that's going to work. Oh, shit! Hey, uh, do you guys ever notice that retarded people brag a lot? Relationship with my birth mother. You're like, yeah, but you're translucent and jaundiced. You look like shit. And you're fat. How is it even fucking possible? How much hummus can you eat, bitch? Honestly, you put the green pepper down, Jennifer. It's going straight to your thighs. How is it my neighbor behind a car? The car had a bumper sticker said, "I'm a vegan." I'm a fucking like, I don't give a shit what you eat. As a motorist, what am I supposed to do with that information? Well, they're going to bruise easily. Man, your panties are probably made of hemp. That's all I know. I want to take her out for a day, you know, grab some soy chips and not dogs and tofurkey. Take her home and fuck her wearing a lambskin condom and just to be on her. You got me in you, bitch. Surprise! I'd fuck her wearing a beef condom if I could find them. Yum. That's it for me, people. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah. Let's hear it for Jason Good. Robin O'Fanny Cooper, good to meet Jason. Original material, well delivered. I liked him very much. Yeah. Yeah. Reverend Bob Levy. We card jokes are always funny. <laughs> And uh, you may not be able to tan, but you were fucking funny, motherfucker. You are. Are you ready? That's funny, going from the unfunny version of George Hamilton. <laughs> Dude, uh, we're on our research show. We don't take kindly to retarded jokes, first of all. <laughs> Dude, that was that was great. It was just, but you gotta have, just, just always have a hammering closer. You just lack that. But the rest was awesome. Really great. Yeah. Oh, well, let's hear for Jason Good. Nice job, Jason. Went well. I hammered him like I said I was going to. They liked it. The judges liked it. Artie was trying to find something bad to say. He found it, but you know, I did good. Looking forward to the next round. I think I got it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Brett Pintado. Hi, I'm Brett Pintado. I'm here for Killer Be Killed. I am from Pittsburgh. I am the only comic not from New York. So these guys play here all the time. It's all new to me. But I ain't worried about it. I think I got a good shot. How come? Why do you think you have such a good shot today? Because I got dick jokes. People love dick jokes. All right, man. Good luck today. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Where are the single guys at? Single guys, let me hear you. Clap for me. Fantastic. Oh, 
Guys, listen, here's some advice, here's a tip. Follow me on this one, here's what you want to do. Date four women. Four women. They're fantastic. They're amazing. Four women are the best women on earth. They give you a head because they're hungry. Okay? That's what you want. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? How about now? Can you hear me now? I can't believe you made me do the joke. Can you hear me now? The last one was funny. Pretend it was. All right. Women think that men are stupid. I can prove women think men are stupid, guys. You ever been out, nightclub, dance club or something, and you see what the girls are wearing? On their face, glitter. Why? I'll tell you why. It's because women think men are so dumb that we are standing in nightclubs going, ooh, shiny. I have to buy her a drink. She's sparkly. Ooh. The crowd couldn't hear me, and so uh, yeah, they began booing, and I will be booted off shortly. But I had a great time, and thanks a lot. Talking about uh, Robin's comments. Oh, uh, yeah, those hurt because I was really looking forward to telling jokes to Robin. I love Robin, but uh, yeah, I did not do well, and it's not the first time, and I'm sure it won't be the last. So, talk to me how does this crush your hopes as a comedian? Or <laughs> yeah, get the close up <laughs> before you ask if it crushed my hopes and dreams. Yes, it did. You can't, you, can't, you can't bounce back from this? You're not going to... Yeah, of course. <laughs> I got a show next week. What are you going to do? All right, our third contestant, a female for the house tonight. Yeah. That's right. Time to give it to the bitches. Let's hear it for Becky Donahue. Make some noise for Becky. Come on, baby. Not in bed, girl. Hi, I'm Becky Donahue. I'm performing here at Kill or Be Killed. Um... I'm a funny bitch. I think I have a good shot. Uh, I'm always, like, I'm playing with a napkin right now. I always crap my pants a little before I go on stage. I have to bring two pairs of jeans. Um, but, you know, that excitement, that adrenaline just really plays over on stage. And I think, you know, they're in for a treat. They're in for a treat with me. Right, Some funny, funny broad. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck, Becky. Thank you very much. pictures and for five seconds I said to myself, you know what? I fucked that baby. <laughs> now, to all you motherfuckers that did laugh, I'm pissed at you. This part of you is looking at me like, she might fuck a baby. I don't know. Look at her ass. She might. I don't know. People, this is a public service announcement, okay? Two people that high should not have a child, all right? You have seen the pictures. It's a 12-inch baby. It's got Angelina's big ass lips on its face. 
a set of double D's, and a steel-plated penis that shoots gold coins, okay? <laughs> this is a fucking alien baby. It needs to be put in a fuck retardant suit until it's 21. Do you understand? <laughs> fuck you people, that's funny. Fuck yourself. Let's talk about this, all right? Let's knock it off with the fat, skinny couples. You know what I'm talking about? Everybody in their group of friends has the fat friend and the skinny friend they're dating. Nobody knows how the fuck it happened, right? And everybody says the same shit. Everybody's like, how do they do it? How do they have sex? How do they do it? Well, I'm here to tell you how they do it. They stick it in, just like everybody else. I wish they did it differently, okay? I, I think it'd be great if you had a friend, Matt, who weighs 400 pounds, soaking wet, and he's dating Anna. He has to explain his sex life to his friends, right? He's like, yeah, sex with Anna is different. I have to lay back, gently prop up my penis with a soup can. And then Anna just bungee cords in. Right? And then Anna has to explain that shit. They're fucking, that's how they have to go. You know what I mean? So it's fucked up. But what are you gonna do? It's the way it rolls. Alright, sorry about that. That's alright. Fuck you. <laughs> Time to bring out our favorite Jew, Julie for the Hecklefest. We're gonna bring the comics back up, see how they handle Julie. Ladies and gentlemen, give it back up for one of the contestants in the finals, Brett Pintado! Let me just 
start off, surely fuck you, okay? Oh my god, people say you look like a cancer patient. You look like the ghost of a cancer patient. Okay? <laughs> But I'm always supposed to heckle comics, sorry. Listen, pal, I'll come down to where you work and fist fuck Penny Crone, all right? No, but everybody else does. Ah. Okay. Low blow, low blow. Speaking of low blow, how's your girlfriend doing? What's up with her? Can we get the chick with the huge ass back on stage? <laughs> for prostitution last week. When did you get out? Sorry. Okay, I'm going surely. I'll get off on that one. Y'all been great. <laughs> Fred Bob. It was like he died and came back as another unfunny comedian. <laughs> anything to work with. What's going on with you, Shirley? Hey, Robin, I'm here to make it difficult for him. I'm not here to... But you sound like a real heckler, not a comedian. But that's my role. I'm supposed to be a heckler, not an actor who's playing a heckler. Uh, I thought you were going to be a little bit witty. Well, aside from that, Robin, how'd you think... Between... Like Robin heckled. How, how'd you think Brett handled the heckler? Between the two of you, Shirley, somebody needed to make us laugh. That's what I'm saying. Lang, what do you think of Brett handling Shuli the heckler? Well, I think Brett should bill himself as the psychic comedian because he started insulting the heckler before he said anything. <laughs> and I love that Petty Crown took an unnecessary hit there. <laughs> Let's hear from Brett Pintado! Hello again. Hi. Apparently uh, someone did worse than me and I got to go up on stage again to the booze and the wailing. <laughs> but I think I did better the second time, so hey, at least that was fun. Talk to me about if, it, if you got like a lucky break with the uh, third comedian bombing, like worse than you did. Oh yeah, that was fantastic because the booze and the yelling the first time, I thought that hurt. But the second time, that's when they really get you. Uh, good try today. Thanks a lot, man. Appreciate it. Let's hear it now for your next contestant, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Jason. your pants as an adult, anybody, by a round of applause, thank you, that is a very bizarre feeling, it's sort of like I'm standing, I'm wearing pants and I'm shitting, but for some reason I feel better, you know that situation where you're like 99% sure you're going to shit, 1% you might fart, but you go for it, reverse that, and I was about 60-40, so I rolled the dice, because I'm a gambling man, and I fucking crapped out, people, all down my leg. And that's a gambling joke I told in reverse. Hey, 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 Is this what we're going to do now? Okay. Hey. Yeah. You're pretty good, man. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> Schindler's List. Give it up for him, everybody. Come on. Even Schindler was like, no. That's good. Listen, I wouldn't, I wouldn't quit your day job unless your day job means you have to be funny. Then you might want to quit. Julie. I 
Emily did it. Jason Good on the heckler. Running up the score like that was really mean. You should have just taken a snap and taken a knee there. There's no way to lose this. <laughs> Again, he's a great comedian. He's fully formed. He hit the stage. He took control. Julie was afraid to speak. I so understand everything Sal says about you from here on out. I can relate to him in every way. You do have a Jewish chick's ass. Julie, your time's up. Shut the fuck up already. Seven years ago, you cocksucker. <laughs> Reverend Bob, what you think? Wait, maybe I should throw a bar in some of the jokes you wrote on the way over. <laughs> uh, he actually owns Julie, and I'd like to buy Julie back from you for a miserable man at 7 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> Great job. Right, let's hear from Jason Good. Let's bring, let's bring another hilarious comic back up, Brett Contado. Surprise topic. Ooh. Absolutely no preparation. They handled the hecklers, they were really funny, and the topic is the breakup between Peter Cook and Christy Brinker. That's a fucking cakewalk, right? That's true. That is racially biased. Yeah. You're black, what do you expect? Improv is going to be tough because it's like, it's not really what I do. Like, I really come to stage with prepared material. Like, I. I I'm a writer, I think about it beforehand, I write it, I write it all down and I come with it and I have a set that I'm prepared to do and uh, they're going to give us a topic and we have to, you know, I might become, be able to come up with a couple of jokes but a whole minute is going to be difficult so, you know, we'll see what happens. But you made it past the first round though, you defeated the other two comedians. Yeah, I made it past the first two rounds, so I made it to the finals and, uh, you know, I'm up against a black dude and they're, they're uh, quick on their feet, man, so we'll see. I don't know. We see what's going to happen here. They're going to throw a surprise topic out, you know, so we'll see what happens. I'm ready, though. I'm ready for anything, though, man. Improv is my thing, man. I'm ready. Okay. Without any preparation at all, let's see how funny these guys are off the cuff. That's what defines a true comedian. Ladies and gentlemen, to tell you some comedy about the breakup of Peter Cook and Christy Brinkley, let's hear it for Keith Purnell. So Peter Cook, he was fucking a supermodel, right? Yeah. And he gave her up? For who? For a 19-year-old. For a 19-year-old? Fuck Christy Brinkley! I wanna fuck Peter Cook! <laughs> I have no idea who they are, but fuck it. It's two white people who broke up. I don't give a fuck. As long as Beyonce's still single, that's all I'm worried about. Yeah. Yeah. Got no rent. Fuck Jay-Z! Yeah. Matter of fact, if Becky come up, I will fuck her ass. You see her ass? Oh my god. I hope your brains may go outside and hide under it. That's a big ass right there. Jesus, and then I want to fuck her titties. Look at that shit. Oh my god. They're camouflaged. She's trying to hide them. I saw them.
teeth on the uh, surprise cop. Well, yeah, I saw he was lost. He really didn't have any relationship to the topic, but, you know, he pulled out some funny lines. He pulled out some funny You guys lines. agree or disagree with Robin? It's like he only gets the black news at home. I mean, come on. I mean, but he came on strong at the end. Artie Lang. I think to even this out, you should make the next guy do a half an hour on the specials at Red Lobster. Chrissy Brinkley, I don't know who the fuck Peter Cook is. I just know, hey, it was two white people that broke up. That's all I know. So hopefully, you know, my improv was enough to pull it off, and hopefully, you know, I'm going to be the killer and not killed. All right? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, to close the show for Bill Be Killed on the surprise topic, let's hear it for Jason Good. Give it up. Christy Brinkley, and she's an old fucking whore. You know what you get when you fuck her? Ashes. That's what you get when you fuck her. Hey, I would have left her too. The last time she was hot was during National Lampoon's vacation, and I was jacking off to the other dude. <laughs> Christy Brinkley is an old bitch. Who gives it? Hey, look at Rich Carucci, everybody. What Christy Brinkley will become in 60 years. Give it up for Rich, everybody. He books firehouses and my balls on occasion. Christy Brinkley. Christy Brinkley looks like Artie when he's shitting his pants. Christy Brinkley. <laughs> oh. It was when she was 19. She's not hot anymore. I fucked her. A croissant fell out. That's not fucking hot. Okay? That's all I got, people. I want you to jerking off to a picture of me shitting my pants. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. That, 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 that's oh, that's going to be close now, man. I don't know. That was a, that was a weak ending. You're great, but that was a weak ending. It's going to be close. Bob and Ophelia. Yeah, I think you uh, went down because of great expectations. You know, everybody well, expected suck. you to come out and kill him. It turned out the white guy didn't know Christy Brinkley either. <laughs> Reverend Bob, what do you have to say about Jason Good? He fell apart at the end like the 1980 space shuttle, but... <laughs> but the whole thing is, if, if the black guy wins, I don't think fucking Sal's gonna hear this show. <laughs> sure I will. I love the black. Let's bring Pete Cornell back up there. nice because these guys earned it tonight. You guys are actually going to applaud tonight. Who do you guys think should be the ultimate winner in Kill or Be Killed? Michael Should it be? Besides him. One black at a time, sir. Should it be Jason Good by round of applause?
Words don't matter shit. That black dude is not funny. Not funny. I have two jokes. I have two great Christy Brinkley jokes. I should have gotten off. I didn't get off, and I fucking sputtered. He didn't have any Christy Brinkley jokes. He said something about Becky's ass. Which always kills fucking hat. You know, that was, right fucking, uh, that was affirmative action win right there. That's right. That was well, affirmative sure. action. I did it. I mean, this was, it, it was a surprise, but you don't know. I lied. great show. I really yeah. enjoyed doing it. I really did. And I think seeing comedians die on stage is some of the funniest stuff Welcome you can to ever my see. life. <laughs> Bob Lee. It was great. I mean, I love watching other people suffer, man. <laughs> it was great. And Artie? And it was a great show. I really hope you should take I really hope a network picks up on this concept of a stand-up concept. <laughs> <laughs> and puts it on. As soon as they pick up a, uh, a concept on somebody drinking beer playing softball, what are you I think I'm sure about? it's a motion picture. Picture, not a television show. This is so different because the people boo. Oh, I'm sorry. It's, it's, like, right. it's like Showtime with the Apollo for white people. That's what it's like, right? That's what I like about they it. They were pretty mean to some of the uh, people. They, oh, they wouldn't even let them talk. Yeah. Was, they should have let them talk. Yeah. Yeah. But it was a good chance yeah. for a Bob to get out his space shuttle joke, top of the material. <laughs> I was going to throw my York Covenant Patty joke out there, but Artie was there. He would have said something. <laughs> and, and Bob standing up for people when they're not funny, he knows what that's like. I can't have this on one ballot. Hold on, Bob. Frank's on the phone. <laughs> Where's my Gatorade bottle? Okay, guys. Thanks for being a part of Kill or Be Killed. Thanks to Artie, Bob Frank? Levy. And I, sa I saved Sally. Almost didn't go to the judges one of the times. Yeah, yeah, I don't mind him. He's a host, right? Yeah, he's working out the kinks, but it was a lot of fun. Here's the elevator. My <laughs> judges are leaving. Pleasure, Robin. You were great. Going out with the trash, just like we always do. Put Sal's career over there. <laughs> trash going out and trash going in. I'm going in. Take care, guys. Good one. Going out? No, no. Let's go. We got to okay. go figure something out. I'll read for Derek, you cocksuckers. Bye, guys. Thank you, Sal. Yeah, get out of the shot. You're ruining the show. Take care. See you later. Notice Artie was on the freight elevator. <laughs> That's a terrible joke. Gabby. You're back, man. I am back. I just got out of prison, and uh, I did one year for a misdemeanor tax violation, and uh, I went from Fort Dix to Fort Devens, and uh, I'm here to see Howard and say what's up, and the whole crew, and I miss him, and I miss you. Thanks, man. <laughs> yeah, no, not really. Uh, <laughs> thank you. You weren't thinking of me? <laughs> no, nah, it's good to be back, man. I, 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 I've been gone. I'm, I dropped like 80 pounds. Yeah, man, you look good. It's you crazy, look, right? You, look, you can completely see it in your face, especially. Yeah, so um, I'm out, I'm free, and... Uh, I'm just going to go and say hi. Uh, yes, Gary. So I know we have the gossip game, and I've got Cabby waiting in the wings. Just tell me what you want to do next. Well, I think we should do the, the, the Cabby interview next. You never yeah. know with that guy. He could right. be back in jail before you know. Um, Don't you think, Robin? Absolutely. This yes. is breaking news. He looks great. He looks good? I mean, he looks great. Did he you recognize great? him? And almost not at first. I mean, he's he's down Bring to the, the thinnest I've ever seen him, and he's dressed nice. He's been out of prison maybe a, a, an hour. That's amazing. He, he did his time. An entire year. His name is Crazy Cabby. Some people just call him Cabby. Or Lee now, right? Sometimes or... Lee. And there might even be, there's a hint that there might be another new name. Well, I thought he'd given all that up and he was going to be Cabby because he spent so much time building that brand, if you will. When Cabby went into prison, 
There were no such things as cell phones. We, <laughs> this is a very different man. Wow. There's a di <laughs> gonna make me cry. Look at this oh, guy. Oh, Come here, give me a hug. Right Come here. here. You did your time. Mm. Look at this guy. Boy, you look different. What's up, man? Come here. Mm. Yeah. My guy. The only motherfucker wrote me in jail. You're damn right. I can't write. Robin does <laughs> Robin did write, but you tried to show up too. I did. You've got a nice haircut. Crazy. Crazy cab. That's a prison haircut. <laughs> That's I didn't even have barber? to pay sex for that haircut. Wow. <laughs> Wait, I just want to do this real quick. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How You're you holding doing? your ass before you sit down. You're not what still sore. <laughs> well, <laughs> been a year. We'll go there. Cabby, uh, first of all, welcome back. Thank you. And uh, Nice you, digs, man. Let me tell you something. It even smells assy fresh. <laughs> wow. I do got some scuffs on my knees. You want to see? <laughs> What's that See? From? Can you see my scuffs? What's going on? Prison softball, man. I was a champion in the softball league. Talk to me, man. This is unbelievable. What's you, up, Cam? Yo, you, did you put on about 50 pounds, bro? <laughs> Try 70. How you doing? What's up, Good, Good to see, see you. Again. You took it off. Look, I can't believe he looks great. almost like a Good to see you. Like he a looks preppy, like, a young guy. like yeah. 80, 80 pounds. I went in at 320. I'm wow. 240 right now. How did you do that, first of all, before we get into the, everything else? You well, look great. How did you lose 80 pounds? I started at Fort Dix. I, no pun intended. <laughs> I tried uh, an Atkins type thing, vegetables and meat. Which I was able to pull off uh, a lot of the weight, exercise every day, walk in the track, killing time. Is there a track in prison, where, an outdoor track? Every prison that I was at, the two, no. uh, they have a track, and there's no weights in the prison system because they don't want the inmates to get bigger than the guards. Right. The guards are frightened to death of the inmates. Right. And they should be because those guys have a lot to lose. A lot of guys have a lot of time for crimes that. Some of them, man, I'll get into that. All it's, right. There's a lot to talk about, man. I'm going to have stuff to talk about for years. I know. You know, some of your letters to me seemed as though it was the worst hell a human being can be in. I mean, you've served in the Middle East. You mean the ones you didn't read? The ones you shredded? Oh. I heard about that. I you were shredded. They started to Beth, get redundant. Beth, did Beth catch you shredding one of my letters? She did. She did. She goes, what are you doing with Cabby's letter? I go, it's all the same letter. I can't take it. Yo, those are going to be in the Smithsonian someday. Talk to me. First of all, the, the, the big news was at one point you, were, you had changed your name, but you wouldn't reveal your name. And I started to worry you were losing your grip on reality. What happened there? I, uh, well, my life was saved in prison by God. And not, I'm not religious, and I'm not, I'm spiritual. I always have been. Yes. Part of that comes with my sobriety. Artie, how you doing with that? Uh, you know, <laughs> I've been there. I, yo, he's, he's I do me. He's from time to time. But you, Cabby, you've had sobriety. You were in prison. I mean, you do it's... you. Yo, but I kind of lost my sobriety because they drugged me in a federal prison, I think, allegedly, supposedly. That's how I'll put it. I started to think maybe you had a little mental breakdown like the old That's day. what uh, somebody tried to push on me. It wasn't a mental breakdown, man. Something happened. You feel you were drugged in prison? I feel that something... I, I'm was gonna, it in your food, or are you thinking, or what? what? I'm, for, for, uh, for right now, because I haven't consulted attorneys, and I'm going to consult attorneys for right now, I'm just going to say something very bad happened at Fort Dix in the special housing unit. Oh. I've done many drugs in my life, and it was not a mental breakdown. It was... Uh, evil, and it was, I believe, something happened with my food, hmm. and it had uh, uh, the qualities of a narcotic, and that's what I'll say. Why would someone want to drug you? I don't know. The last thing I remember before it all happened was, fuck you, uh, fuck Howard Stern, enjoy your meal, motherfucker, and that is no bullshit, and that, mm -hmm. that night, I started talking to myself and babbling to myself and losing grip on reality and it lasted for a better part of 50 days <clears throat> and I'm talking yo out of this world seeing things talking to myself talking to you talking to dead rock stars demons flying in out of me uh, talking to Jesus who, are you, who are you? now you think that's a mental breakdown you can believe that but I do not think what it rock was. stars yeah, who visited? Yeah. I mean, a lot, lot of, a lot of current ones that I've interviewed, and not just talking to them, Howard. Yo, talking to them 
in my voice and their voice coming out of me exactly as their voice. KB, you know I love you. Can you do but Keith Moon? Just, can I just <laughs> yeah. can I just say something though about that? Yeah. You remember when your TV was talking to you? Yeah, but you I was in? doing drugs. Thank you. Oh, okay. So he's uh. saying he must have been drugged. So okay, I and I yo I said this to the psychiatrist at uh, Fort. Devons, yes, because he tried to put it on me as he was telling me to forget about what happened at Fort Dix. I said, "How am I going to forget?" He goes, "Forget about it like you forgot about the war." Because I have PTSD, right? I wait, suffer from it. Right. How, wait a second. How long have you been out of prison now? An hour? No. How Two long? hours? Uh, four. Something. Four hours. You right. got out this morning. Yeah. What was that like for you? I mean, you did a year. A year is no easy time, is it? You know, how people go, "Ah, oh, it's just he just Listen, got a year." When you're doing a year and you're surrounded by guys that are doing 15, 20, 30, 50, yo, there was a guy in my unit, he was doing 50 years and he had done 20 of it. You know what I'm saying? A year, is, they, a year is nothing, do, but do, a year is still a year in my life. Do the other prisoners get resentful that you only have a year? Some do. You can see it, but most don't because they're, they seem to be, yo, that's your time and that's my time. You know what I mean? They, they, they don't. There was, as I see, as I saw it, there was no resentment. But yo, know, some guys, yeah, there's anger. Now, what but kind that's of their prisons crime. were you in? Because we just read that Richard Hatch is going into. He had the same kind of a deal where he had a tax problem, and they've given him 51 months, and they said he's going to do really hard time. Well, there's different classifications. Mm -hmm. The camp I was in was a camp, mm -hmm. and that's low, like your lowest security level. But when I <laughs> Allegedly, tried to kill myself by hanging myself from a table. This is what they said. Yes. That was a foot off the ground. Mm hmm That's hard. During my alleged mental breakdown. Yes. Which I say was not a mental breakdown. It was... You feel you were medicated? Yeah, uh, not medicated. Drugged? Tor tortured. Tortured? Yo, if you drug me and I'm in a federal prison... And this is what I think happened, allegedly, supposedly. And I say that because I still haven't spoke with an attorney. All right. So if, 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 if you... Okay, when they say I tried to hang myself, but that's not what happened. Do you see any strangulation marks on my neck? I can't. There's too many tattoos Yeah, I think the tattoos cover up. <laughs> I thought it was but, a strangulation mark. But that night, they were videotaping me through the window, yes. and I was flipping them off, and I was naked. In my cell because Who I was videotaping the them? COs because I thought they were going to come in and try to shatter me. Wait, wait, I got, you got to you got to back up here. This is wild what you're telling me here. This happened when you went into prison. Yes. I remember the day you went into prison. The reason all this started in the SHU, the special housing unit, the hole was because I called your show yes, from you the cell phone. Right. You're not the supposed to do that, we I guess. Here. I called from a cell phone from a federal prison. Right, you're not allowed to do that. There are well, no, you're not there supposed, are not supposed to have to, a cell phone. There's not supposed to be cell phones in the federal prison system. But the reason that it all started was because I wouldn't tell them where I got the cell phone because I don't tell on people, and you're not You're not a rat. To, I'm not a rat. And right. I, the guy who gave me the phone... Yo, however he got it in there, yo, that was his deal, and I wasn't going to rain on his parade because he was good enough to let me use his cell phone to call now, I your show because you were leaving the air, and I wanted to give you a little going away present. By the way, Cabby, I noticed now when you speak, you use the word yo almost like a black man. Were you surrounded by a lot of black people I in wear the coat of many colors, and I blended in with all of them. Did you? Did a group try to pick uh, you out? In other words, did you... Uh, Many groups did. The Italians sucked me in first. Yeah. Represent. Guess who I played bocce with the other night? Who? John Gambino. Wow. <laughs> nice. Nice. I beat him. That and I'm was still smart. breathing. Let me ask you this. He was a good guy. Very good you guy. You went into prison. You yes. had to be freaking out. I mean, you're not a guy who's ever been exposed I to... I almost got in a fight my first day. I'd with... like to say that Mr. Gambino is wrongly in prison. Yo, yeah. you, speaking of that, he was supposed to get out after serving 15 years, and the day he was getting out, he told me this story himself, because we were sitting next to each other yesterday when I had my form to get out. Yes. The day he was getting out, his family, 20 members of his family were there to pick him up. They stopped him at the door and pulled him back in. He's been waiting nine months. They're, uh, they're going to extradite him to Italy to, for some other thing. Wow. And, he, you know, he just ran a construction company. <laughs> So yeah, that's, that's what he what told they're me. They're Doesn't make any sense. That's what yo. That's what he yeah, told me. As far as nice I'm guy concerned. though. Great bocce player. Kebby, what happened when you did, wrote me these letters that you were going to change your name? Uh, I was going to change my name to something else because I felt that the prison had killed Lee Morozek and Cabby. Right. And I was going to change my name to what, Mason. 
Mason. Mason? Yes. Why Mason? Yeah, because you said this is my new signature. Because but it looked like a symbol. You it said? looked yeah, it looked well, like a scribble. Well, because some of the fellas that were uh, uh, doing things to me were uh, Masons, Freemasons. I see. Ah. So you decided to change your name to Mason to Yo, make you stronger because the big Mason saved me, hmm. and you know who he is. God. Right. And have you switched religions? Are you now a Muslim? Uh, Salam alaikum. I'm all religions. No, really. What are you, seriously? I'm just spiritual. Did you, you didn't I, have a conversion? No. I, I did. <laughs> actually, I so I could get the common fare meals, I did change to Jew. I'm a Jew. You're a Jew? Yeah. Well, by by prison only. I'm a pew. I'm a prison Jew. Because <laughs> <laughs> so, the common fare meals in prison are you get f fresh vegetables, and that's what helped me lose a lot of the weight. Kosher meals. Because the, yeah, the kosher yeah. meals. And because the prison food is unbelievably but bad. Can't be, be serious with me for a I'm real, being very, be very serious. serious. On a scale of one to ten, yeah. to ten being the hardest thing you ever did in your life, was this the hardest? Well, it, it wasn't the hardest, but it was uh, a very learned experience because, yo, there are some evil things going on there, and there are some crooked things going on there, and there are some bad things going on there. Uh, no, it wasn't the hardest thing, but the two months that bad things happened to me in the shoe... Those what is things, the shoe? The it's the special housing unit. That's where you go when you do something bad. And that, that solitary? Yeah, you're you're locked in a cell. But I was for a month of it. I was locked in with another inmate, and he saw some of my um, drugging or my alleged uh, hijinks. What was going on? So I have witness to what happened to me. How did you get so tan in prison? You look like you just came back yeah, from Miami. Yeah, it's like a vacation. <laughs> yeah, I mean, no, you actually don't look uh, well, that bad. Well, I didn't bad. spend my... Walk in the yard or something? At, at, yeah, in the yard, you know, yeah. playing softball, walk right. in the yard. Was there any sex in prison? Like, did, I know that you've taken it a few times back there. Uh, uh, did, well, you ever, did you ever get lonely and say, you know no, what, I'm going to take a no. bitch in there prison? There was no good looking. No. Nothing. No. Did anybody try to fight you and say, there was, I'm going to have sex with you? What is this? That's, That's your mic. Sorry, yeah. it's crazy. Hey, things have changed in the Technology. Year. That's right. Um, there was some, uh, the federal prison system is not the same as, it, well, at least where I was, not the same as the state prisons. There's not as much violence as that I saw in the prisons I was in. Now, other prisons are maybe. Hmm. There was a, a couple scraps, but uh, I, I'm not really going to get into it. But there was almost more scraps, but there's a lot of more talk than goes on. So if you guys try to fight you the first day you were there? Yeah, I almost got into a fight with uh, two fellas. But it what never, was that about? Because I brushed up against one of them, and he said I didn't say excuse me, and I, you know, I wasn't going to be his bitch. So I said, "Yo, what?" You know, but it never, uh, it never accumulated. Everybody talks a g big game, but nobody. No, I think they thought I was going to be a pushover. Right. But I said, "What?" You know, here I am. Let's go. Let's do it. The thing, the thing was always, let's go in the bathroom. And I was like, what does that mean? Like, are we supposed to hug each other or have sex? And so you got to be prepared to fight in prison. You have to be prepared to fight, yeah. But it's not, it was never like smack right then. It was always, you had to go hide somewhere because otherwise, because there was always a CO or a camera. There's a lot right. of cameras. Thank God there's a CO. Who wants to be fighting every minute? Well, you know, that's just it. I almost got in a fight like my third to the last day with a fella, and he said, let's go into the gym. And then when we were go, I was like, okay, let's go into the gym then. And then we started walking to the gym, and he saw that I was ready to go, and then he wanted to talk his way out of it. And I right. was like, and then he wanted to bring three of his friends with him. Oh, for three of them, great. Yes. Well, One of the things minute. I learned in prison is uh -huh. that uh, the Hispanic fellas, they want to always bring their friends with them to fight. Mm -hmm. there, yeah, yeah, I learned uh, that. That means something, yes. Yeah, Puerto Ricans and the Mexicans, they bring their friends to fight. Wow. But this place you were in for the final part Devon's. Of, yeah. Yes, the medical yeah. center. That was I'm better? I'm going to tell you about Devon's. Yeah. It went fast, but there is something that the world uh, does not know about Devon's. What doesn't the world know about Devon's? It is a pedophile farm. What? <laughs> there is five to six hundred of the sickest, demented pedophile, 12, out of 1,200 inmates... There is about five to seven hundred, maybe six hundred pedophiles there. Oh my! Yeah, it's very disgusting. It's very disturbing. You and they just harbor them there. You know, Ugh, and they're supposed to be. Sick. Yeah, it's. Yo, I couldn't walk around the track as much because you just don't know who you're talking to and who you're mm -hmm. walking around with. And it's. I call it Pedophile Island. <laughs> Wait, what are you going to do today? Like, where are you going to go sleep tonight? Wh what's going on? Tell me, tell me Can the plan. Can I come over? Really? What is the Can plan? Can I cuddle with you and Beth? Hell no. Well, what I'm going to go have lunch with Tom C. Oh, well, I got to find a job. Yes. 
Now, I got to find a job, Howard. Is Tom open to hiring you over there? Uh, there's a possibility. What is about there a over possibility? Here? You, sure, there's a possibility. We could talk to people oh, here. Possibility. You're yeah, a radio I'm, performer. I am a radio performer, and I have, uh, you know, I've never uh, really had the opportunity to tell my stories, mm -hmm. my life stories, because the past year has just been a. I'm a sponge. You know this, right. and you know I'm giving you tidbits. You're teasing me. You have no idea. You're tickling my ass with the feather. <laughs> you have no idea the thing. Artie, how does it feel to see Kebby? It's been a year. I, I'm really, I feel good. It feels good to see him. I really feel happy that he's out. Artie, I want to tongue your butthole. Can I say that here? <laughs> yeah. There were times, there were times. Fuck do you. Want, you. Why do you want to I can say that. Why do you want to Fuck off. <laughs> Fuck off. Why do you. I never got to say that on the radio. Fuck off, <laughs> fat boy. He said it during the commercial. <laughs> Fuck you, Benji. Fuck you, man. Well, this is a celebration. Freedom. Freedom, man. Fuck off, Howard. Will you ever stop? I love your fucking cock. Will you Stick it in my ass. All right. I'm oh sorry. My God. Present That's present. the cabbie we know. Yeah, yeah, will, right? you pay, will you pay your taxes now? Yo, you know, that's the funny thing. Uh -oh. Maybe you shouldn't have a job so you don't have <laughs> yeah. you know a problem you know, again. You know how many people said that to me? Mm -hmm. Just say yes. And yeah. I wanted a punch in the mouth. The simple answer is yes. The crime is not in not paying your taxes. Okay, it's in not it in? filing your taxes. And I made a huge mistake, and everybody should pay their taxes, but especially file your taxes, people. Now that you did a year in jail, do you feel you were really picked out because you were on the radio? Do you think other people would have gone to jail as much as you would? You know, I don't know, and I don't... Mm. Uh, one, the, one of the biggest lessons I learned in prison was, man, I don't control shit. I control little old Lee, man. Because when you go to prison, this is uh, a, a fella I met in prison. He was doing three years, and he said, when you go to prison, man, you're fucking dead. If you do three years, you are dead. And if you have a relationship... It's dead. Your parents, your wife, it's, if it's for more than three years, you, you are basically dead to the world. Did your girlfriend visit you in uh, jail? Yes, she did. She did. Yes, she did. Is and that still going on? I'm just going to, uh, we're just, uh, next question. When is the last time you saw her? Uh, I hadn't had a visit since January. Is your, are you ready because to Because I moved up to the Massachusetts uh uh, the fine woods of Massachusetts. Are you ready to explode sexually? I mean, are you ready to... No, I've been jacking off a lot, man. You have? Yeah. So can you jack off to the, the roommate? Uh, the Village Voice. I got lucky. The, the back voice. of the back of the Village Voice, all those little pictures they got. <laughs> yeah. Right? Well, we asked the fans to send you magazine subscriptions and newspapers Listen, and things like that. Listen, I got defrauded. My mail, uh, they really fucking cracked me in the head on my mail. I don't know how many letters didn't get through. And thanks for not writing, people. Howard, wrote Howard, you. you fucking wrote me. Man. I did. I you did. Came all through. my letters, I guess, got taken. Yeah. <laughs> they did. Yeah, possible, Robin. Robin. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. possible. Up, oh, I see Dominic Barber's on the phone. I haven't heard from him in a while. Dominic. Hi, Cabby. I'm glad you're home. Yeah, thanks for coming to see me, you fat piece of well, shit. Well, well, Cabby, let me just say one thing. Yeah, I'm 61. I've been a lawyer 36 years. And he's never no visited way to anybody. No time other than the way you did it. For me to sue them or make any trouble while you were in there would have only made it worse for you. You know, Amy Fisher, out of 15 years, did 10. The last five of it, she could have got out in four and a half years was because she kept suing and fighting everyone. I heard from your doctors, and they thought you were paranoid schizophrenic. And I didn't know, and I did not want to make it worse for you. And I'm happy you're home. You know, I always helped you, and I love you. And I like to meet with you and tell me you tell me the stories. And if there's something I can do for you now, I'll do it. But I wasn't going to do anything that would make one extra day. You know, the thing, my whole thing was, is at least somebody could have came up there to show that, yo, you got someone in your corner, man. Just do you know that? Do you know that three people came to visit you and the prison turned them down? Yeah, and you know what? That the, was a long. Do you know how long we were there that day? I do, and you, they changed. And this is what I was told. And I don't, you know, I, now that I'm here, I can say these things. But I'm still on probation for a year. But I was told that they changed the visiting on purpose that day. To jam it up. And, and, up. I, and we really felt it. And they screwed everybody else in that prison. But they screwed us more. I know they did, but all those families that were waiting out there with you guys. Yeah, there was a line like, forget about it. Right. Well, forget the it. Day, we, the day after Thanksgiving to screw all those families. And I heard you talk about it on... 
That's torture. We were there for 12 hours, oh, Robin, shut right? Up. right? Shut up, Artie. No, we were there. No, no, no. <laughs> but, Let but, me just say two things to you. Number one, your visitation was changed. You were at one point declared non-visiting at all. But, Cabby, uh, be very, very careful what you say on the air today. I know. I'm done Even talking though, about I'm, it. Please listen to me. Please. Yes. Any comment you make that is interpreted as violent or way out there, you can get violated. You're not done yet. So please, I mean, you can talk about stories, you can talk about things that happen, but you can't say I would have killed this guard or hurt that guard or this I, or that. Did I say that? Never. No, no, you didn't. Okay. He's well, just warning you. He's I know. You I'm just saying. I, you, know, you know what? The guards at, 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 at Devin's treated me with, Devin's treated me with nothing but respect, and I, and I want to say that a hundred times. Those guys treated me well. They really did. The pedophiles? Because they knew. No. <laughs> they know how to treat Dev, No, the Devons, the, Devons treated, the Devons folks treated me with mad respect, especially the warden. The warden right. up there. When my phones got cut off because I screwed up, he helped me right at the end there, make some phone calls to set up my way out of there. That was nice. Yeah, he, the warden was good. Warden Wynn is his name, and I, I will give him mad respect. And the COs, they... They were hands off, and they, you know, they treated him with respect, and they actually, you know, but I'm not going to go any further there. So I'm all right, that. Gabby. Next week, maybe we get for dinner. I'd like that. And That's nice. We'll see about it Will you pick days. me up in your Bentley? I'll, I'll be more than that. I'm very happy you're home. Can Don't I stay on your I boat? Of course. Don't right. think I wasn't worried about you. All right. But understand, Thanks. anything I said to you at that point would have only made it worse. And I didn't know where you were uh, mentally. I was so terrible. Are you feeling angry toward Dominic? I sense No, uh, no, no. I just wish... I, honestly, I just wish oh. someone would have came up there so they felt that, I don't know, whatever, man. It's over. Listen, Dominic, it's over. Dominic, Dominic spoke to me about you I know. two times while you were in prison, and he said, this guy's just got to do his time. He said to me, point blank, you got to do your time and that's it. He I just needed to see a friendly face. Well, if you see, well, some people try. Yeah, friendly well, if they would have let us in, you know we would have come. No, I'm saying after the after uh, the bad things that oh, Dick's happened. Okay. Oh, all right, at, all right, Dominic. Thank you. I'm, I'm going to get off. The greatest fear I had, Cabby, was they didn't release you today. They put you in a psychiatric hospital. They can keep you there forever. So I'm glad you're home. I know. I've okay. met I met some of those boys that are are uh, the stories. Yeah, one year boys. sentence, four year psychiatric can happen. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Well, there you go, Dominic. Thank you. That was one of my worries too. They they have what's called civil commitments, mm -hmm. and there's guys. Uh, there was uh, the story. I can tell you the stories for days about these. Were guys Were you afraid they put you away for four more years or something I was, like that? And that's why I wanted to see a friendly face so that they knew that someone cared about me because. I wasn't getting a visit. And, yo, there's guys that are in there that walk around all day that talk to themselves and babble themselves that are never leaving prison, that have histories of violence against COs, stabbing COs. And these guys, you know, they're, they're there because of that, but they're never leaving prison. You know, and they get, or, or their crime that they committed before they got to prison, mm -hmm. they took the... Uh, reason by uh not guilty by reason of insanity so they get incarcerated under a civil commitment and then once they get in prison because they're truly crazy they never leave prison mm -hmm. right. they don't get convicted of a felony but they get put into a federal medical center in a mental hospital did you make any friends in prison well, you don't make friends in prison right. but you meet some interesting characters hey dominic prison is the scariest right oh he's gone Prison is quite uh But well, did you have any women trying to marry you or anything? Scott Peterson, he got tons of mail from women. No, I like got Kevin. Kevin didn't get any proposals. <laughs> Speaking of mail, your yeah. listeners and your fans, man, especially at Dick's, the mail really, after Dick's, really, uh, you're, they sent me so much mail, and I tried to write a lot of it back, but I the stamp thing was a problem, and especially... Right. Uh, you can only. I I want a big thank you to everybody who wrote. Yeah, well, a lot of people were really uh, concerned about you. Go ahead. Le Cammy was telling me you did have sort of a a little love connection in there, right? You reconnected with somebody from your past. Yeah, but I don't really want to talk about oh, okay. that on the air because he wanted me to. There's actually... some things I want to uh, leave private. Okay, because you wanted me to bring that person in at one point. I, right. I, I, when I spoke to him the other day, I said, "Is there anything you want?" Like I would have, you know, stacked the studio with scores, girls, or anything. 
Yeah. But he just wanted this what one thing. What about Taylor Rain? Oh, right. He wanted Taylor Rain. Is she Rain. still working or is she done in the business? She's been, you, I, I, she's off and she's on. She's working? No, no. There was a, remember there was a period of time she wrote on her website that she was getting out of the business for a minute because she, she was. She heard Cabby was coming out of prison. She said, I'm getting out of the business. That was <laughs> the end of it. Now. Uh, let's say hi to Jen who wants to say hi to Cabby. Let Cabby take a few phone calls. He's here. It's got to be a very, very emotional day for him. He I spent a year find incarcerated. Out, you know, we once reunited Cabby with his mom and his uh, biological mom. How crazy is that you bring her up? Why? <laughs> Unbelievable. I My phones got turned on. They were turned off for like three months because I screwed up, and they turned them back on. And one of my last phone calls before they turned them off again, before I came out, out yesterday or today, I called dear old mom. Yeah. And she goes, oh, my God. It's my birthday yesterday, and you call me, and it's like a birthday present. And she always gets my birthday one day off. What do you mean? She, she gets my birthday wrong, so I don't think she's my real mom. And when I was in my <laughs> torture chamber, one of the things that came up in my head was that you faked it. Oh! And I want a DNA test to see if she's really my mom. Are you mom. fucking not? Oh, maybe you are. Oh, no, listen to me. Listen I to me. Fake your, 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 listen your to me. You with your this was a fucking thing that came up in the the whole drug thing. Yo, when I tell you, and I'm not going to say on the air because of legal things. Reason, yes. Some some of the things that came up. Yo, one of the things was <laughs> that you fucking faked my mom, <laughs> and that ain't really her. Uh, and <laughs> yo, I'm just telling you, bro, because I'm being straight up. Work. Yeah, yes, I did that. <laughs> but because she always it's Bob Levy's mother. Listen to me, <laughs> <laughs> yo. For, she sent me a birthday card at fucking Fort Dix, and it said "Happy Birthday," and it was dated July or I'm sorry, July, December twelfth. My birthday is December 11th. Even on my birth certificate, it's December 11th. So, well, maybe she's just confused. That's yeah. all. No, you think we faked your mother? I'm not saying that. I'm saying when I was crippled with drugs right. in a federal prison, allegedly, yeah. supposedly. All right, that shit came up. All right, Jen, you're on. Did the you air. fake it? Hi, Jen. Are you hot? <laughs> Am I hot? Yeah, but I'm married. I don't care. Um, well, welcome out of prison. Rings don't plug holes, you honey. Crazier than ever, but listen. <laughs> all the uh, the yos and the know what I'm sayings. I don't. I'm not a uh, Sal or Gary here, but you sound a little like you were hanging out with the brothers. I hang out with everybody. I'm. I. I, I Sounds I'm, like Cabby has picked up a new pattern of speech, which I suspect will change in the months fine. ahead. It will yeah. change in the months ahead. But yeah. He's now. He's caught up in prison life. There are a lot of. There are, the there are the lot. other thing is quite charming. I yeah, think there are a lot good. of black men incarcerated in the federal prison system, sister. Notice he didn't pick up any Yiddish expressions in prison. There's just not a lot of Jews around. Yeah, Bushmaster, yo. But I am Jewish. Yes. And, well, and I just wanted to say hey to Cabby and that he still sounds crazy to me. But, can I eat your ass? Uh, well, he is crazy, Cabby. <laughs> what are you going to do about sex? Yeah, what was your big huh? fantasy in prison? Talk to me about fantasy. Yeah, your in day, first day out. Yeah, well, like, like, I'm still down for the gangbang, bro. Yeah. I love gangbang and, and eating. Uh, You're going to go to Scores tonight? Pussy. You're going to go to right. Scores tonight? You're gonna I love the cream pies. What are you going to do tonight? Are you taking me to Scores? I'm. I'm busy tonight. I can't be with you. But are you going to scores tonight? What are you going to do? Yeah. I, I, you know, I'm, you know, I'm not a big stripper guy. Right. It's just not my thing. No. They got BO, half of them. And are you right. going to try to get to your girlfriend? What are you going to do? I don't know what I'm going to do, man. Yeah. I'm, do you I'm, have a place to live? Are you uh, sad? I have a friend that's going to let me stay there. And uh, nice. first, I got to check in with my PO. Right. Because that's uh, you got to check in within right. 72 hours. That's right. priority. Okay. Yeah, don't fuck that up. Yeah, don't right? fuck that up. Artie, how are you doing? Are you and uh, 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 what's her name still together? Mm, don't bring that up. She left you for therapy or something. You didn't go to therapy. Yeah, you got it right. Yeah, yo, I, yo, I was getting go. updates. There was there was updates. He's coming. back with her though. Let me ask you this. I've been in my own prison, Kathy. <laughs> Do you know if? Uh, yeah, you think you suffered. Artie's in a real prison. Right? Do you know if uh, your girlfriend has a boyfriend now? She moved on, or she's still pining Listen, away for you? I don't know, man. You don't know anything. No, I don't. Wow. I haven't spoke to her in a while. The letters. Kinda... Is that hurtful? Yo, I, you know, it's not. You know what? Because uh, prison is what it is. And if and how did God I control come me. to you? When I was being um, uh, what I call torture, and the, the whole thing was going down, uh, you know, I've always been spiritual, not necessarily religious. Because I don't believe God is religious. I think religious is uh, religion. God is in your heart. And if you believe that there is a God, then... The rest will all fall into place. You've had a lot of time to think about this, I bet. 
Yeah. 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 You've been and reading I've done a lot. lot of- Huh? You did a lot of reading. Man, I did me. so much reading. And what was it? All those quotes you were scribbling on the paper I couldn't make out? What Emerson. Was Emerson. This guy's quoting Emerson, and I'm like, and he's scribbling half a book down. I can't even make out one <laughs> It wasn't word. a half a book. Dude, it was half the page. Yo, I, I quoted Emerson to you, bro. <laughs> Emerson is the bomb. <laughs> have you ever read Emerson? I know you have. I personally, I like I like Lake and Palmer better. Vince, go ahead. We're celebrating the uh, rebirth, in a sense, of I Cabby. I still didn't hear how God came to you. Oh, Howard. I've been a big fan for a long time. But, Cabby, all I have to say to you is, yo, uh, yeah, I'm saying, though. And um, I wanted to see if you were going to go see that movie, uh, Gay Man's Chest, since you got out of jail. Why would he see that? Because, you know, because he took it in the ass a little bit before he got into prison and all. So I just wondered if he wanted to go see that movie with Johnny Depp. But he's got to see the, the other version, gay man's chest, not dead man's chest. Let's go to Dave. I don't know what the point is Yo, he there. Sat, he sat on hey, the phone hour, for a hey, half hey. hour thinking about, thinking about that. that. Now yeah. you realize it's precious time. Now you realize a year in jail is precious wasted. time. The best wasted, thing is, wasted. Wasted. is I could have came up with that and like, Will you waste time? Will you waste time now? That- Can you give me a meeting with Sabian? Yes, absolutely that's going to happen. Dave, you're on the air. Cabby, how you doing? Welcome home. We love you, brother. Yo, what's up? <laughs> what's up? Howard, I've got a great idea. Put him on the midnight shift. We love this guy. You yeah, love Cabby. I think I, I got more quality than the midnight shift. I spent You're a year a in fucking prison, guy, jackass. Cabby. I mean, listen, Cabby's looking for a higher profile. <laughs> yeah. Hear me out for a second, Howard. Yeah. We, there's a lot of us that get up really early, and the only thing on serious, I get up about 3 a.m., mm-hmm. and I love your show. But, you know, second time around, Pharrell replay, I don't know. It's just not It's not happening. Cabby is a midnight kind of guy. He's an overnight kind of guy. I am. Can, you pay, right, me, can well, you pay me well enough for midnights? Fi- Who knows? You hey, got uh, tons of money. I heard, what, 450 you I made? I got more than that. More or, than no, that. but you made like 450 last year, right? That's right. Scott, Yo, go ahead. You're on the can air you, in Plattsburgh. Can you... Power Cut a nigger a slice. <laughs> I could say that word now. Oh, and I got to tell you about the word nigger in prison. What about it? Well, it's a swear word to me. I, I, I tell the blacks you can't say that around me, and right. they respected that. Because if you don't know what the word means, you shouldn't say it, and right. most of them don't. And they they stop saying it around me because I explained to them that means ignorant and you can't you know why are you calling someone in your race ignorant? But did you know that Puerto Ricans call each other nigger? Yes, I did Everybody's know that. Everybody's doing Every it. Day. Chinese, the Chinese call each other nigger. Artie, wake up! <laughs> it was, did you catch him sleeping? <laughs> I did. I know he sleeps through half the show now. Yo, <laughs> enough <laughs> for your fucking prison With story. Your fucking <laughs> Stephen Singer watch. You got for free all the money you, you make. Care, it, no, that's a tag hoyer. I yeah, that's a Stephen the... Singer. That's not Stevens. I paid for this watch. <laughs> all right, Scott, go ahead in Plattsburgh, New York. Here, put this Howard, on your listen, cock. Listen, you're his friend. You think he, <laughs> Dude, you think he's got a problem, right? I think I'm Cabby. Friend, I think honestly. Yeah. I mean, what do you want? What, what do you want, want me to, to do? do? Exactly. What I mean, problem? The, the man is is spouting com- conspiracy theories. <laughs> oh, I haven't even got to the computer chip they put in my head, jackass. Did they put a computer chip in your well, head? Well, look at this dot on my yeah, forehead. You had me going in the beginning. I Maybe you're Hindu too. Here. See the see the little dot right there. He does have a dot on his head. It was not there before. True. It was. Are you making a joke or are you saying the truth? I'm not. I'm not. Look at. See it. Yeah. Do see you it? believe there's a computer chip in your head? Well, all I know is... Uh, why would they put it where you could see it? Yeah, why would they put it in there? Listen, I'm an actor, goddammit. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know... Do, do you really believe they put a computer chip Listen, in Listen, all I know is... Wow. Do you remember... Uh, have you ever read about the Dr. Uh, Juan Carlo? In the, in the 50s and 60s, he created um, electrodes that they put in monkeys' heads. Oh. And they would electro- electronically stimulate the brain. Yes. And then they actually put them in humans. Okay. And uh, for epilepsy, uh, epileptic seizures and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Well, now they make small little things like that, and that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> and you Howard, feel that? He you, is no, a I'm not. Perfect promotion for just put them on the air. You got to listen to everything the guy says. Put them on with Riley. Everything. How can I get one of these? What kind bro? of drug lasts for 50 days? I don't know. Yo, I didn't say they did it once, Dimple. <laughs> <laughs> All right? Howard, get him on his kitchen box. We'll pay him 300. Fucking bag. Uh, Scott, you want to see him on the air. Get, get him on the air. Oh. You got to listen to everything the guy says. He's funny in the beginning. You yeah. want him off the air, and then he gets you. He brings you back around. Says, oh, I, I stole this from you. What's your news then, guy? Uh, Hold it a second. Hold on. Wait a second. Uh, Let's go to Andrew. Andrew, you're on the air. Hey, Cassie, man. Glad to see you out. Thank you. You, hey, can, uh, you can see through the radio. Yeah. 
Uh, man, everybody can see. All right, yeah, everybody's man. happy that you're, uh, you're Are back. they really? Remember yeah. when they used to call and just hate me? I well, still no have one was happy emails. to see you go to jail. No one was happy to see you go to jail. Oh. Jessica, go ahead. Jessica Hahn, a woman who oh. really knows how to please men. Hi, Kathy. I wrote you a love letter. When Yo. You were, I did. Can I tell you, Jessica, I got your big-titted <laughs> fucking uh, 1974 Playboy pose. No, it wasn't 74. I know, I know. Who's the, who's the chick that sends your mail? Um, Lori, why? Is she hot? Kind of, yeah. All right. I'm just yeah. looking. You could have Casey. It's all over the place. <laughs> hey, hey, Cabby. Yeah. I missed you. You I, did? Yeah, I think you should have a show. You have a lot to say. Yeah, Thank he you. has a lot of verbiage. I Can know. I tell you what happened to my Jessica uh, Han picture? What? No. Did you beat off to it? No. What? Actually, it's a really sad story. Um, I was so really fucked up on whatever was happening in my cell. I really wanted to get out of the cell, so I started cramming shit in my toilet and flushing it so it would flood because that's a way you can get your cell changed. Right. And there was another PC cell right next to mine, but I noticed they had put paper over the window, and they sell, they, they put a thing on the, thing that's the, the door that said, out of order. So I knew that they were doing something, whether they were videotaping into my cell to videotape what was going on. You can call it a conspiracy theory. And I might be spilling too much on the air, and I probably am, so I should shut up. All right, okay. But I'm not going to. My picture? Yo, no. Your picture. <laughs> this is great. You're going to love this, Jessica. I tore it up, <laughs> just hitting halfway, because your tits were nicer than your face at the time. And I'm not trying to insult you. I was on fucking PCP or whatever they were <laughs> drugging me with. Right. And I took a shit on it. That's about right. You took yeah, a shit on right. Jessica's right. picture? I, yo, Why? I was drugged. Uh, Dude, Jessica, just, uh, I loved you. But they, yo, I was out of my skull, kid. Made my day, honey. Right. Chip Thank my head, you. Baby, yo, it was like a shit. Kaiser film, honey, but thank you for the letter. Couple more phone calls. Let's go to Steve. This Steve. is why I didn't write. Right. Yo. <laughs> this is why I was afraid Fred. to read his letters. It's good to see you, Fred. Good to see you too, man. Remember I told you... You're doing you, all right? I'm good, man. Okay. Remember I told you, Robin, that I didn't want my my letters hanging around in prison, or I was afraid when Cabby wrote me, like, there'd be shit all over the... Right, the yo, know, dude. Uh, dude. Uh, dude. dude. Yeah. He does look yo, good. I ate, he looks, looks good. good. Listen, yeah. I ate a radio. And and my watch. What, you you think that was a fucking schizophrenic breakdown? I don't know. Radio? I don't know anything about no, it. No, why would a schizophrenic do that? Well, uh, what do you mean he ate a radio? Yo, I, because I thought there was a listening device in it. <laughs> but what about the one in your head, bud? <laughs> Wouldn't it be easier to just I think throw he needs a job. Well, I didn't want, Fred, no, what is going I, I on here? I don't want to pry that open. <laughs> Cabby, hold on. i got to talk to Fred. Fred, what's going on here with Cabby? Be clear with me. I, I got to ask you a question. Did you ever receive a head injury at some point in your life? Many I'm, I'm as a child, serious. many as a child, I, and many as I an adult. Is, and I'm not being facetious. I don't want to rag on Cabby, but I mean, because when you first came in, man, you were like, you seem you know, pretty focused. As this whole conversation keeps going on, you seem to be drifting a lot. And I'm concerned about that. I'm concerned what kind of radio he ate. <laughs> <laughs> and what does that go Terrestrial with? Terrestrial or sort satellite? Of <laughs> <laughs> Yo, they should have satellite radios in prison. Right. And if you are able to afford them, you should be able to have them. Absolutely. You know what it is? I haven't seen normal people in a long time, and I'm excited. Yeah. And oh, you guys are my this friends. Is a big, this, listen, yeah. whether he admits it or not, this is a huge emotional of day for Cabby. I don't and even think great. he knows how big this is. And I is. need to tell you. Welcome back, Cabby. Prison folk... Yo, and I'll say yo again, they fucking love you guys. You have no idea oh, I have how idea. crushed they are that you're not on TV anymore. Right. The well, brothers, TV? the brothers, they miss, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just saying, they miss, they can't get their groove on, and they For told the me to say he, that. When he said brothers, he pointed to the sister. <laughs> they said, you fucked them, no offense. Not me. When you I, took your show I off, I didn't e. take it off. They we took didn't it take off. Yeah. We had nothing I know, anywhere. but they you, just, you need to go back in jail and explain you that to them. You didn't explain? Thanks I so can't lot. explain. Don't you know how to represent? <laughs> uh, yo, that's my who reference. He, uh, nice. How's um, he going to represent when he's on PCP that they're feeding? Hey, I was oh. forced by the Masons. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right, listen, the Steve. The brothers. <laughs> the brothers. <laughs> Steve, you're on the air. Cabby is back. He wants you to know it. He is saying it loud. He's saying it. He's I proud. Am. I am proud. He's a free man. He can do whatever he wants And tonight. I will be a free mason. You are free. Go yeah, ahead, Steve. A big faggot misses prison already. Oh. Yeah, sucking dick all day like a big fucking queer bastard he is. KB, is it possible prison... Is it your first time swearing, sir? No. Okay. Did you know swearing is a crutch of the... Why are you sucking a big boo's dick in prison? Who's big boo? Your mom? 
Listen, listen. Did you know that swearing is a crutch of the ignorant, jackass? What do you do for a living? Oh, oh, oh there it goes, jackass. Huh? What do you do for a living? I'm a truck driver. God bless you. Honk that horn, then. Yeah, here you go. See? There you go. All right, goodbye. Cabby, because i got to wrap things up. Why do you got to wrap things up? Because Cabby's I got a life. in for the rest of the show. You don't because have a life. Cabby, listen to me. You've got $450 million, man. You've got many lives. Cabby, listen to me. That's a prison of its own kind. Uh, yeah, it is a prison. Don't think, don't think I'm not imprisoned by that. <laughs> uh, I'm sure you are. Cabby, let me ask you this. Yes. Is there in any way, shape, or form that prison was a blessing? That, in other words... Yes, he found God. You not only lost weight, you got in yeah. shape. Yeah. And found God. You no found God. That. You read... You read you, Emerson. I mean, I when, did. when and would Whit- you have ever and Whitman, read Whitman, Whitman, Poe? When would you have ever read those books? Hemingway. Yo, have you ever read Hemingway? How would no, you I ever? Never did. Oh my <laughs> god, that even, dude was can't read. <laughs> have you ever read Hemingway? Yes. That dude, he wrote a short story Old Man called, of the Sea. Yo, a very short story? I never read that. Old Man of the Sea. It's I've read two it. pages long, right? It's about a guy and a chick in Italy and they're fucking and then they break up. And he goes to, uh, he stays in Italy, right, and meets a chick, and she goes to Chicago and gets gonorrhea, and that's the end of the story. Wow. That's fucking balls. That's, that's the real. end of a lot of stories. <laughs> <laughs> right? I'd read that, but I'm watching American Idol. All right, listen, Cabby, this is a big day for you. Howard, I love you, man. I love you, too. Listen to me. I sense you're all over the place today, but uh, I understand. No, I'm just it. excited and brother. And I absolutely, been, this it's been hell. Be yo, yo, I've yo. cried more Easy. in the past nine months about uh, a lot of things. You uh, bet. That's because you're reading about from fruits like Walt Whitman. Get a real ah, book. No. Get a good book. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you all about Edgar Allan Poe, there, buddy. He has a life very similar to yours. Very I'm depressing a, and alcoholic. I'm a big fan of Edgar Allan Poe. Yeah, he's a good guy. He died with somebody else's clothes on in a gutter at the age of 40. <laughs> <laughs> yep, he did. That's the truth. It is true. He Cabby. knows. Cabby. Yo. Look at me. I'm looking. Baby. I want you to look at me. I am. All right. You've always given me solid, staunch advice. Okay, here's my advice. Give it to me. I want you to take a deep breath. I want you to experience this day of freedom. Think before you talk. Keep it all real. Don't get too crazy. You know I've always kept it real. Let yeah. the dust settle. And that's settle. why you... Let the dust settle. Don't make any big major decisions. I'm not. But that's why Don't you've always loved anyone. me, right? Listen to me. Right? Don't fault... Yes. Don't fault anyone. Don't get into any arguments today. You're not even ready to put this into no. context. That's right. Whatever happens today, just make it a peaceful, joyous time. You know what I'm saying? Warrior Cabby, he'll come out. But not today. Today is a day to relax. I'm angry, though. Yeah. Listen to me. No, I'm just angry because some evil shit happened because I called your show, and that's why it happened. Mm. You that's know right. that, right? And you shouldn't have done that. Well, you shouldn't you know, have. Can I tell you, let me back, back sell that. You know why I did it? I understand why no, you No, you it. don't, because I didn't get to that, because we kind of jumped ahead. Right. You know why I called your show, Howard? Why? A, because I love you. B, because it's what I do. But see, because when I went into prison, I wanted to lay low, and I wanted to be mellow, because that's what somebody who'd done some real time in real prisons told me how to do my time. That's mm-hmm. right. And they didn't allow me to do that, because they put me with a CO in a job that paraded me around as Cabby, who was the biggest Howard Stern fan in the fucking prison. And he asked me personal questions about Robin Quivers and how much money she made, which I don't know. I was going to say, well, how would you know? Exactly. <laughs> I don't And even asked know. me personal questions about Fred and his contract, and asked me about fucking Artie and where he lives, and asked me about the inside of your house. Okay. And I could put his name out there, but I'm not going to do, do that. that. Don't do that. No. I'm not going to, no. but I'm just going to tell you that for... Is it better funny? Part, the the guy part, never asked about Benji. Oh, well, yeah. Right. But, yo, he... Take he, that back. And he paraded me around the fucking compound as cabbie, and I begged him every day, yo, it's Morozak. It's Moro, inmate Morozak. Inmate Morozak. And I used to show, when he'd do it, I used to show my little ID card. This is my ID card. Let me see. That's your prison ID? My prison ID. Look at that picture, huh? That's a convict right there. All right, that's a sign. This, you hold on to this and remember how horrible prison was. But I used to say, and I begged to get out of that job. I went to the uh, the boss, the 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 
unit manager and I said, yo, please take me out of this job. This guy is harassing me because he's a huge Howard Stern fan and I just want to lay low because there are a lot of inmates who got 25 years or life sentences or whatever that, that just, you know, they might think I'm getting special privilege. Be. Listen to me. Listen Hang to me. on. Listen to me. I need to tell you this. I need to tell you something. That's why I made that phone call. Okay, but listen to me. I did not deserve to be punished for this that. This guy, whoever the CEO was, was right. excited. You had some celebrity. Yeah. He was enjoying it. I'm a loser with a cool job, No, but listen man. to me. I ain't so a you just you, 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 you say to the guy, thank you. Maybe he could have even been a bit of a mentor to you in prison. <laughs> <laughs> what are you laughing at? You're talking Yo. to him while he's shoving a mic uh, thing on his A mentor? <laughs> maybe what do I need, could a, have been what a do friend, I need a mentor in prison? Maybe he could have been a friend in prison. Maybe you don't have CEOs you. as friends in prison, man. Well, That's maybe how you get... Maybe he could have been nice to you. You get in trouble like and that. And as soon as you report on him to the authorities... I didn't report on him, though. I did it the way you're supposed to. I just went and asked to have my job changed. You never do that. Mm. You yes. sit and no, do whatever they tell you to do. And then everyone forgets, and they leave you alone. And that's what I'm Look, saying. it's over. It's over now. I don't want you to sit there and get angry about what happened the past year. I want you to put it in its perspective, it's over, and I want you to move on and create a great life now. You're a free man. You hear what I'm saying? Look you at know, me. You know, Artie must be Freak. scared, because with all the cabbies wanting, he's never done one win. Oh. Yeah, I didn't hear what? any whaz. <laughs> <laughs> I went to jail. <laughs> all right, cabbie, listen Fred to me. <laughs> Welcome back. Yeah. Your dreams are your ticket out. Yeah. The CEO asked me questions. <laughs> 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 You can be in that prison mentally forever now if you want to be there. Or yeah. you can be a free man. I know. It's always move forward. That's right. If you want to be really a free man now, you've got to free yourself completely of this. Free your mind and the rest will follow. The That's free crazy. Free your mind and the rest will follow. <laughs> Tell him. George Clinton. <laughs> right? I know all about that. P-Funk, baby. Notice Artie didn't even bring up the money you owe him. <laughs> all right? And he never will. I owe a lot of people money. That's right. Do I owe you money? No. And I've never asked you for a penny, have I? And I know Artie doesn't want to say this, but I'm going to say it for him. You don't have to pay Artie. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. He's not looking for your money. No, I wait for my, I wait for my money from everybody. Yo, what did you think of that softball movie coming out and, and stabbing, right, let me stabbing yours quick? Let me talk what to Dominic. Dominic was? Barber wants to say something. Dominic, go ahead. One more thing. You said one day. He's got one year. And what if his parole officer is a Howard Stern fan and tries to give him a hard time? He can't violate for a year. Example, and I'm just trying to use an example. If they would set you up with someone who's a known prostitute, that's a violation. You have to follow this parole officer strictly. We don't want you back. Uh -huh. And they can send you for the rest uh -huh. of your sentence. It's supervised release, right? Didn't you get that? Yeah, so why are you, like, trying to let no, no, no. people... He's helping you. Don't get I'm defensive. Trying. He's saying, I'm, think I'm everything not. through that you do. Don't even go see a hooker tonight. <laughs> I yeah, would I'll never. I've never been with a hooker in my He's life. He's giving you oh, an no, example. I know, I know that, but the point I'm using is I'm trying to say what Howard said for one day is for one year. Their test is to see if you should be in society. We know you should. I guess, but we don't want you. <laughs> Thanks for the confidence. I, I just, I really don't want to talk to him. Because, Why are you getting upset with what he's saying? Because he just, it's like he sets me up to fail, and I'm not no, that guy. No, no, no. I don't know. Please, I don't, I don't. Oh, thanks, Dominic. Please. I pray for you to succeed. I pray All for right. you. All right, so. Dominic, thank you. He is getting upset. All right. It says here your black cellmate is on the phone. Spider, do you know him? Is, that your, is this your cellmate? Hello? Sure, let's talk to Spider. Spider. I said, wow, 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 how you up there, you hell, you said. <laughs> That's him. There he is. I miss you, Spider. Right, Fred, did you want to add something to this uh, issue? No, Dominic's gone. I wanted to know what, like, the top three things that Cabby should not do right. so he stays on the street. I know what Cabby's got to do. Let me tell Cabby what to do, if you don't mind. I got to get Wait. a job. No. I got to get a place to live. Forget all that. <laughs> right right There's now. There's three things Cabby should do. The three things Cabby should do. Number one. Lay low, don't talk to anybody. Number two, really don't talk to anybody. <laughs> and number three, keep very quiet. Yeah. You know what I was going to say That's the it. three things are? Yeah. Listen and listen and listen. Don't yeah. say a word. All right. Just listen to what people tell you. Yo, is it true you had a fucking load dropped on your chest? Oh. Yeah, that really got him. <laughs> you, uh, Where'd that come from? <laughs> Hold it. Tom Chiasano's on the phone. You got fucked oh, yes. in the ass. Nope. <laughs> hey, Tom. Tom C. 
It is Tom Chiesa, no comment. <laughs> I am looking forward to our lunch today. <laughs> I am a Christian, so I hope you do not curse around me. Right. Can That's I great. suck your cock, Cabby? That's <laughs> crazy. I love Jesus H. Christ. I am lonely now that my lover, Dead Air Dave, is gone. Will you be my new boyfriend? <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you, you Tom. Lunch might have who'd love God. All right, thank you, Tom. Yes. Th I said thank you. See you at lunch, my tattooed love God. All right. There he is, Tom Chisano. Tattooed love God. That's your name. Oh, you're tattooed love Can't God. Can't be listening Sounds like Stephen yeah. Hawking. Now, what Dominic was talking about, about violating your parole, you got to be so aware. Like, if a buddy invites you to lunch and he's with a friend and that friend, like, deals weed or something. Mm -hmm. Get out of there. You, you, could, you could be in violation of your parole. Like, you got to be that careful. Artie knows. He's mm. done some He's time. He's done some time. No, I'm just saying. Like, like you, you can't associate with anybody who might do something illegal. You might illegal. not be able to associate with, with can't associate uh, with Artie. I'm going to be a reckless for the next year. As a matter of fact, that's, that's, fact, that's my year. point, Robin. Stay away from me. <laughs> Don't hang out with Artie. Even. I'm going to be a recluse. Good. Artie never wanted to hang keep, out with me before I tried. No, keep reading. Sounds keep like reading. a Ronnie song. Call me. I was on my way to Staten Island to stop you from eating your uh, appliances one night. <laughs> 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 well, they were talking to me. All right, listen. Yeah, this is. I'm happy for you. God bless it's you. It's so good to see you. Hello. I'm happy you're out of jail. Believe me, every I remember Christmas. Forget you. It was the hardest time for me because I had to think about the fact that you were in jail. Really? That's right. See what you did to Howard. See what you did. To <laughs> <laughs> you ruined his Christmas. You <laughs> Christmas. I was like, fuck, Cabby's in jail, and it's bitch. Christmas. I ruined your Christmas. You ruined my Christmas. Yeah. Well, so never do that again to me. Thank God uh, I didn't Christmas, think about it. My Christmas, I was eating mm. a Apologize fucking... to me. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What'd you buy me? Um, let me tell you something. Yeah. No joke. A lot of people were very upset about all of this. He's I, talking I about know. wasted time. That yeah. day we went to see you, we started out at like 6 o'clock in the did. morning. I know. And when they told and me that you guys were outside and couldn't come in, and then oh. they sent you home... That's or torture. They, 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 they told you, they, they came they and said that... They had us wait until... First, we were supposed to be able to get it at 8. Yep. Nobody was there at all. Then the line started. We found out we could get in at 1. We go up to the gate at 1, and they tell us we won't be able to see you till 5 right. in the evening. My father was so upset about that. For a week, he's calling me. He, he couldn't understand why that went Unbelievable. down. Unbelievable. Yeah, all right, look. Cabby. Congratulations on getting out of prison. You did your time. It was a bad situation, terrible situation. I am just very, very happy for you. It's over. It's over. It's over. It's over. And this is the start, the beginning of the rest of your life. The misdemeanor tax violators out of prison. Good. But what will you write? What will be written on these pages? That's right. Where well, we? the book is going to be titled The Great American Gulag. All right, okay. Enough of that. I'm talking about what you do <laughs> no from one's today that. on. Forget <laughs> that book. you got to come up with a better title. All right, good. What are you talking about? That's not a great title. Oh, it Nobody's is a great gonna title. Nobody's going to take that off the shelves. Oh, yeah, they and are. how <laughs> dare you be responsible for Robin wasting a day of her life. <laughs> <laughs> it was her 9-11. That's right. All right. That Thank was you. the day after Thanksgiving. I'm going to take a break. This has been very, very emotionally draining. For me. Howard. Thank you. Thank you, Cabby. And uh, I'm sure... That good things lie ahead for you. You think? I think so. You, you feel it? Actually not, but no. I'm going to say it anyway. Not here, but somewhere else. Let me tell you another thing about that day. I was trapped with Tom and Ronnie. Yo, is it true that uh, you went into the port john in the woods or something, somebody said? I think Ronnie and Tom did that. I yeah. stayed in the car. Welcome back. Thanks, man. All right, my friend. All right. Uh, the great uh, cabbie. Word, mm -hmm. money, Word. G. Right. Pay your taxes. <laughs> Back, man. Yo, it's uh, it's good to be back, man. This this is nice. You had to be thinking of this, you know, when you knew you were getting out. And you had to be thinking of this moment, you know, first getting a chance to see Howard and everything. Yeah, you know, actually, I wasn't thinking of it, but I was. You know, I was more thinking about just getting out. And uh, uh, it's funny. This morning, uh, I walked out, and I, I, they were driving me down the compound on this little golf cart, and seeing the the razor wire, and just like going, God, I'm out of this motherfucker. That 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 was more it. You know, but well, like actually arriving here, is this how you expected the place to look? And I didn't really know. Um, uh, I didn't have any expectations. How about that? So it felt pretty good to curse in there, though. You seem like uh... yeah, it's just different. When we were driving in, and we were listening to it on the radio. I was like, wow, it's saying fuck on the air. It's weird to hear. You know, you think you want to say it all the time, but then it's just you don't have to say it all the time because. 
man. Yo, yo. What's new with you this morning, man? What's new with me? Well, I just get off work at 5 o'clock in the morning. I get stopped for goddamn uh, tinted windows by an MTA officer. An MTA officer? They're supposed to be watching the goddamn subway. He's worried about my tinted glass. Yeah, what are they doing? Yeah, what are they doing worried about that? Just breaking, my, breaking, breaking my balls. <laughs> you so, can tell Howard about it? Talk to yeah, him I think, you know what? It just happened. While it's still fresh and hot, let me talk about it. You haven't been here yet, have you? No, it's my first time, actually. Cool. I did a... Uh, a week before you guys came to Sirius. So this is my first day today on Sirius and my 20th time on Howard. So you're psyched. You got a good story and you're, and you're in the new place. And I'm in the new place, man. It's All a great right. story. All right. Have fun in there, man. Thanks, man. Hey, let's say a quick hello to uh, Chuck Zito, who stopped by. He just he just Let walks me ask in, you something. and everyone's afraid to tell Chuck to go home. Let me ask you one thing. I mean, there's major security in this building, not just us. How does he get through that? Chuck, who Chuck? Yeah. Oh, there's no security when Chuck comes. <laughs> there's no security that Hi keeps there. Chuck out. I want to know. Does he just walk past those guys? Uh, they don't yeah, stop Chuck. When you come into the building, security it doesn't even stop you, right? I mean, they don't they don't even know to stop you, right? They stop me to say hello. Right. That's it. <laughs> Chuck, how are you? Good, how are you? You still got a radio show? No, actually, you know what? I, I went to uh, California to do a movie. Right. I told him I would be back in like three weeks, and I just never went back. I, I used to do it for free anyway. Oh, I see. I never got paid for it, and I used to actually go out of my way and buy the music and everything, and it just got to a hassle. What uh, movie were you working on? Uh, what was I? I was doing a movie called Coalition. Yeah. And... Uh, we finished that Super X that just came out. I didn't even see it yet. Right. Look at you working in the movies. Oh, Look we're trying. You. Look at you. You're busy? We're, we're not, no, not busy enough. <laughs> what, not uh, busy enough. Were you surprised by the... I know you're very close to Pamela Anderson. Yes. Did you get a phone call from her as I did? No. Uh, you did not? No. Were you shocked that she's getting did married? Did you read you got it a phone in the call? paper? I got a phone call. You got a phone call. I didn't get a phone call. Wow. And you hang out with her way more than I do. Did you get an invite? I got an invite, yeah. Did you get an invite? Oh, now you're pissing me off. Oh. What did I do? Oh. What did I do? <laughs> you better yeah. give him your invite. <laughs> you can go. I don't give a shit. I'm not going. You're not going? Well, Come on. first of all, it wasn't a formal invite. She called me up and said, this is what it sounded like, I swear to God. <laughs> hi, hi, uh, Howard. Hi, uh, look, um, it's all good, it's all good. <laughs> uh, listen, listen. Um, so I thought it was, you know, that uh, I'm getting married. So now I'm saying to myself, well, who the hell is she marrying? <laughs> Usually when someone says they're getting married, you kind of have a clue, you know? Yeah. I'm marrying, um, Bobby, Bobby, Bob, um, you know, Bob, Kid Rock. <laughs> So yeah. it's funny you don't know initially who she's marrying and then she says the name and you still don't know. Yeah, I was like Bobby. It's Bobby. Yeah, Bobby. Well, I'm I'm Bobby. She goes, it's all good. The kids are happy. Everyone's like, goodbye. I gotta go. And by the way, if you want, I wish you were here. If you were here, you could come. So I'm like, where is she? And how do I get there? <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. I think she's in hey, Europe or something. Sandro Pay. Is, Sandro is, is that are. Europe? Yes. I don't even know. You haven't is been it? to San Isn't it? I don't know. Yeah, You're I thought it was like, like the Riviera, right, yeah, or something. Yeah. Yeah. Chuck and I are no world travelers. <laughs> I'm not a world traveler. Where I thought it was in Brooklyn. I don't uh, know. San Tropez. San Tropez, Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> but I was surprised because that like, was that new. That was over. It was this over. Is a, this is a girl you've bodyguarded. It was over and it was surprised. So every, every, Were you supposed to keep him away for a while? Was there ever any... Actually, <laughs> yeah, was there a time where you were told to keep Kid Rock away from him? Actually, yeah. yeah it was like, <laughs> he was like stalking him, man. Are you, yeah. Do you approve of this? Honestly, being serious, do you approve of her marrying Kid Rock? No, I'd rather be me, but... Right. Really? <laughs> I always sensed... Seriously? No, he's a nice guy. He's really a nice guy. Some nights we'd be out, I see you with Pam... I sensed maybe you, know, you had a thing for her. Was True? it that whole bodyguard thing like the hey. movie where he really Be was honest. desirous of his subject? Chuck. You wanted her bad, right? Of course. Right. Who doesn't? <laughs> Gotta be crazy if you didn't want her. <laughs> but uh yes, I, I was actually surprised. Right. And uh I had I had to read about it. Wow. That's well look at this. Yeah, she I didn't get a me. phone call. She did call me. Called me before it was even in the paper. I and I know, announced Chuck. it. I don't know if you're, you know, Imagine because this. maybe you had to keep him away. You're like on the outs now. Hey, Chuck. <laughs> yeah, maybe he says, hey, Chuck. And I'm that no, guy had to keep me away. He's not invited, by the way. <laughs> Chuck, I might be feminine, but I'm no woman. And I'm going to tell you something. Now, if I'm a woman and I got a choice between you and Kid Rock, 
Isn't the logical choice a manly guy like you who can bench press 5,000 pounds? I mean, seriously. No, not 5,000, but... Whatever. Baba, I'm with you, man. Well, are you shocked at a... I'm shocked. A man... I can't a believe A gangly... It. A gangly, wormy man who doesn't even pump iron <laughs> and doesn't have any sort of, you know, machismo? She should have went for me, man. I don't know. What is it, Gary? I agree. You know, I, yo, yo. I remember last It's like she married another woman, right, Chuck? Ah, <laughs> uh, no, he's a, he's a nice no, guy. I love, he's a, he's I a friend of mine. Harry for he's a he, He's a friend of mine. I have nothing bad to say. He's, he's right. a good guy. Yeah, I, I, I like Kid I just Rock hope too. it lasts and works out. Chuck, I mean, how can it last? They always get broken up, and then they get married again. Then they get, you know, or, or back together, and then they get broken up again. How, how, wouldn't you just date for a while and make sure it's the real no, thing? No, I figure they say, if we don't get married right away, we'll never... <laughs> get married, so they don't well, care. I, I know she wasn't seeing him, and then I heard he showed up where she was, and the next thing they would get married. Man. So, see, that's one of those prime examples that you always talk about where people get married because it's the excitement of throwing a party right. and the excitement of stuff happening. Right, yeah. I also think it's a career thing if things are sort of like at a lull. All of a sudden, two celebrities hook up or get them back in the paper. Well, I'm success. half a celebrity. She could have went for me. Right. People oh, know that. That would have been big news. <laughs> I would have been real big news. I would have been good. <laughs> Nobody would have stalled her again. That's for really? sure. You never got any uh, ass off her. You never. You never. Ta uh, you never ba -ba, tagged that. Hey. You ever tagged that? Who? I would love to. I told you before. You never you made asked your me move? so many times. You never made your move. Uh, I wouldn't say I tried to make my move, but uh, what'd you do? You came in and kissed if, her. If 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 I told you and the ten million other people listening, I'd be lying. Of course, I would like to. You fucked her, didn't you? No. Well, wait a minute. How did those nice. other guys get past you? Oh, it ain't easy. <laughs> Chuck's got this move when you're trying to hit on Pam. Uh -huh. He'll sit there and stare at you. <laughs> and he stops. Oh, you the saw that in the hotel yeah, room that yeah. night, right? Yeah, you stopped that whole Ralph, you, you you put him right down in his oh, place. Yeah, man. no Ralph was going to get it, her, right? There's no well, fun that's going good. <laughs> When you guys left that night, Ralph was full. All of a sudden, he's hanging behind. I know. Well, he I comes out with a towel. Yeah. <laughs> Out of the he shower or something, he says his hands, his pants and stuff are wet. I said, well, put your wet pants on and get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, you try to get a, a little something off Pam, like I'm trying to squeeze her tits and stuff. Uh -huh. And Chuck is standing there, like staring at you. And you go, shit. And then Pam whispers to you, Chuck's mad, Chuck's mad, Chuck's mad. I go, forget Chuck. Let me squeeze your tits. <laughs> hey, does she give you a thing like at the beginning of the night? She's like, listen, we're going to go out and party. I'm going to drink. And I'm so, going to get wild. And I'm going to get wild. So well, here, and does she say... Here's where the line is. Does she ever t like? And please stop me if I get to that line. Well, let's say we all know that she's she drinks her uh, champagne. She gets a little uh, you know, light toasted, yeah. and lightheaded. But she did have an appointment that day, and I told you guys that yep. at nine o'clock, and she just blew it off. And everybody else was getting on me, not me, her assistant, and everything, saying that she has to be ready by nine o'clock. <laughs> and here it is. Uh, it, it's it's like a quarter to eight in the morning, and everybody's still partying. <laughs> So that's why I got mad, and, and also the girls that from Scores, and yeah. they wound up getting, I, I was a little too harsh with them because they wound up getting suspended for a while. Those Scores girls got, got you in trouble again, right? What happened? You were driving a girl home from Scores last night, Gary? Oh, told me. man, it's, this is a story, man. What happened? This is a story. I, uh, I work at Scores, right. so we get off like 4.30, 5 o'clock in the morning. What do you do there? You just kind of keep an eye on things? I, yeah, I'm just, I'm not security or anything. I'm just, you just roam I, I'm, around. I'm, 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 yeah, I'm You're Chuck around. Zito. I'm roaming around. When he's there, everything's you're, safe. Are you, is it fair to say you're the goodwill ambassador at school? Yeah, I'm there to make sure nobody Or you will anybody. be good ambassador. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, like, you like just walk around there and you're Chuck. Yeah, I just walk around. And <laughs> what a job. I'll never just, forget that story of Ralph in the bathroom with Chuck. Yes. <laughs> What yeah. was that, Rob? I remember. I, I remember that. That was that night. Ralph was getting into fights with people. He got. He got. He got punched in the nose by somebody, and and, <laughs> and he's bleeding. I walk in the bathroom and I see Ralph bleeding. Right. So, as soon as I walked in, like two seconds later, a guy walked behind me. He came in. All of a sudden, saw me, Ralph, bleeding. He, he says, "Oh shit!" He ran out. <laughs> he says, "Chuck Zito just knocked some guy out." You know, Ralph. I said, oh, oh, I didn't do this. <laughs> you know, don't blame me for this one. Yeah, Ralph, that's what happened. Ralph was being oh, an asshole. Right. He was all drunk. And some guy just came up and punched him in the face. Yeah, well, and, and like you know he, what? he didn't even realize it. And then he was at my house the next day. His whole face was swollen. He goes, I'm going to sue that guy. I go, you know what? You better shut your fucking mouth. Well, really? I, I, you know what? I, I got to hand it to Ralph. I mean, he stood, stood there and took the guy's punch right in the face and he didn't did. do nothing. And he didn't even he, go down. He was just saying, why'd the guy hit me? Why'd the guy? He's bleeding like a pig. He must have been drunk. <laughs> he was. He didn't even feel it.
<laughs> yeah, but exactly. He was drunk. But right. what did that prove with the other guy who hit him to hit a drunk guy? Come on. I never hit a drunk guy in my life. So why would you do that? I, I mean, you know what people, you know what it is, Chuck? People don't know the laws of the street anymore. They don't understand. Yeah. There was an honor among men at one point. At one now point. Now people sucker punch people, punch people when they're drunk. It's, yeah. it's, it's gone way out of hand. But it was funny because <laughs> I, I was in that bathroom and a guy came right in and he ran right out. He thought I did that. And Everyone the next thing you know, it went through through scores that I beat uh, Ralph up. Aren't you misunderstood a lot? People always think you're beating people up. Half the time, you don't you even don't do it. You don't have half as many fights as people think you do. You've been framed a lot in your life. I, I know, I know. I'm mm. the nicest guy I know. Even with your ex-wife, you got framed, right? Oh, you didn't do anything wrong. I forget about that. Well, that, that. <laughs> hey, Chuck, last time you were here, during the guys with the baseball bats, right? Oh, right. Yeah. What happened? <laughs> What's going on with all that? Uh, it's still crazy, man. Yeah, so what happened last night? It's still crazy. Chuck, got what, into, what was the wild story last night? With the scores, girl. Uh, you do you tell your story, then I'll, I'll talk. Well, oh, okay. So anyway, yeah. uh, I was leaving scores. <clears throat> this new girl had just started, uh, uh, actually, last night. She hot? Real hot. Yeah. Real hot. <sighs> Smoking six feet. Oh. Wow. You banging and, uh, her? She just started. Yeah, you'll be banging her. Uh, so, uh, what happened was she was a little drunk. Uh, I see her outside. We take her outside, and I said, instead of cab, I'll, I'll just drive you home where you live. You're she goes 34th Street and Broadway. Now I go the other way because I live in New Rochelle. Right. I said, all right, I'll take you down. So uh, we go down to 34th Street, and I hit uh, 34th and Broadway or Seventh Avenue. Broadway, no Seventh Avenue. So we're talking. And all of a sudden, there's a knock on the window. So I look, I thought it was a bum. Right. Right, wanted money. So I roll down the window. There's a cop standing there. Unbelievable. So he goes, let me see your license registration. I said, what's the problem? He goes, you have tinted windows and no front plate. You don't have a front plate? No, somebody took it. It says Zeta on it, so uh, like a fan took my plate. Go ahead. So. Did you explain that to the officer? So then, oh, yeah. So then I said, okay, I give him my, my, my license register. I figured once he sees who I am, because yeah, every cop, the, the cops love me. Everybody's friendly with me. Everyone everything. knows Chuck Zito. So now I'm looking for his car. I look in my mirror. I don't see no car. Interesting. So he comes back, <clears throat> and he's got this meter now to, to, <laughs> to test my windows. <laughs> test them? Yeah, to see how dark it is. Right, I've been a victim of that, yes. I says, I says uh, are you a New York City cop? He goes, no. I says, well, what are you? He goes, I'm an MTA cop. I says, wait a minute. Metropolitan Transit Authority, that's what you are? <laughs> he goes, yeah. What is this, I bus? says, <laughs> you have nothing better to do. You're standing at that booth right there. And I saw him, he's at a booth on right. 34th Street. Right. And sees me in my car. Right. You have nothing better to do but to stop somebody 5 o'clock in the morning who just got off work to give him a ticket for tinted windows. So. And what do you say? He goes, so he says, he just, I says, I had to, you know. Uh, uh, uh. Good thing you didn't lose your temper. So, oh, I did. Oh, I did. you did. Oh, yeah. There's more. We're getting to that. There's more to the story. So, slow down. Yeah, you're rushing me, now. You're rushing me. <laughs> Sorry. So, so he says he starts testing my window. Right. He goes, it's seventy percent. You're only allowed the uh, fifty percent or whatever. And I said, okay. So he comes back. He gives me the ticket. I said, you got to be kidding. You're gonna give me two tickets for a front plate and and thing. I said, I don't want to say nothing, but I know a lot of cops in New York. I go to to functions, I go to boxing matches with you guys, I go to funerals, I go to all this stuff. Right. I respect you guys. Right. He couldn't give two shits, this guy. <laughs> so, so now, I'm looking, I said, what's your name? He goes, it's on a ticket. I said, what's your name? I want to know your name. He goes, it's on a ticket. So now I look at the ticket, and it's so, you can't even see it on the ticket. Now I get out of my car. Uh-oh. Right? <laughs> now he turns around, he goes, get back in your car. I said, I want to know your name. Get back in your car. Why, why did you want to know his name? Why do I want to know his name? Yeah. I want to know where he lives, this guy. Right. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Those guys with the baseball bats now. So, anyway. Is the girl still so, in the car with you? No. The, the worst thing about it. No girl. As this thing's happening, she walks out of the car. Oh. She's afraid. She's afraid, whatever. She leaves. She leaves. <laughs> she leaves me there with the cop. And she leaves, starts walking down 34th Street. I'm saying, oh, this is great. Right. Yeah, you know, I'm always trying to, well... Take up and do a nice thing with the girl and this and that, and she leaves. Wow. So now he comes back. Now, now get you're out not of the supposed car. to get out of your car when a Well, when he gave officer, me the ticket already. But, he gave, but I think he's supposed to sit in the car and not cause any trouble, right? I, I took my he could ticket. Take it I was very nice. Thing. Yeah, okay. So I, I get out of the car. Now he turns it. around. I said, what's your name? 
I said, I'm asking your name. What's your name? It's on a ticket. I said, well, I can't read the ticket. It, you, you put it so light that I can't read the ticket. Right. So then I said, I'm asking your name. Then he pulled something out of his whatever, one of his holsters. I mean, they carry a million things on there. <laughs> it's like a right? So belt. I don't know if it was mace, if it was a uh, you know, stun gun, whatever it was. <laughs> right. I'm saying to myself, oh, now, now he wants to get, be a tough guy, right? right. I'm going to take this thing, stick it up his ass, <laughs> right? And now I'm going to have a problem, right? <laughs> so now... <laughs> he's, forcing you you, he's forcing you into a problem. He yeah. takes yeah. the guy's stun gun and sticks it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'd stun him, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Chuck Zito today took a stun gun and stuck <laughs> it up some guy's ass. So, so now... Have you ever stun got a guy up his ass? <laughs> I was so mad. Go ahead. Now and he's getting telling me, get back in the car, get back in the car. And now a crowd is gathering. Yes. <laughs> now they're seeing who I am. Oh, it's Chuck Zito. It's Howard, you know, Howard Stern. Every, right. every, first of all, everybody loves you. Everybody Thank you. knows I'm on the show so many times. When are you going back on Howard? Everything else. Right. In the middle of all this. So they're saying, you guys got nothing better to do to get him a ticket and all that. I said, I could have started a mini riot the there. People love you. The, the so, people, the common man loves you. Yes. Actually, they do. I mean, yeah. I go to fights, I do everything else, which Look. I went to the fights. And you know, uh, uh, Toro didn't win that night, but now I'm asking his name, and now he's getting crazy. Get back in your car. I said, I want to know your name. Oh. <clears throat> so then he uh, 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 he says, My name is Aronson. I said, Aronson? So he says, Police Officer Aronson. I said, Okay, I just want to know your name because <laughs> I don't want to go to your superiors <laughs> or whatever, right? Right. So then you I told says, him you're going to go to his superiors. Yeah. yeah okay, go so ahead. Could, yeah. All so right. I said, right. So I just got back in my car. I said, Well, you know, he's a you know, scumbag and he makes bad, you know, all cops look bad. Right. So then I'm driving. I said, You know what? I'm going to call. So I called the MTA. Right? First of all, I get an emergency number. What time number. in the morning is this? Five o'clock in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> now it's 5 30, the time I'll get back in my Chuck, car. Chuck, you got to admit, I mean, the guy. He he did something legitimate here. You didn't have a license plate, and you do have darkened windows, and I guess it's against the law, but you feel it's nitpicking, right? Nitpicking. The guy's standing in a booth at the subway, and he's knocking on my window. Come on. What they could have did other to... things to do. I mean, there's right. pickpockets out there. Just go do your job. Rapists, whatever. Oh, don't, yeah. 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 Don't, go don't, don't, don't. Guys with baseball bats, there's everything out there. Right. So go do your job. So it pissed me off. So now I call him TA again, emergency number no less. Oh. I asked for the non emergency. This emergency, what do you want? What do you want? <clears throat> I said, Well, it's not really emergency. This emergency, what do you want? I said, Well, do you have time t- for my story? <laughs> so I started telling her the story. <laughs> what did she say? <laughs> she gave me a number to call <sighs> right. a non emergency oh. number, MTA, and I could did that. So now <laughs> I call up and uh, I get a, a, a police officer, Wilson, All right. right, an MTA. I says, uh, he goes, this is Police Officer Wilson. I says, hi, Mr. Uh, Wilson. I said, this is Chuck Zito. And he hear a hesitation. I Uh-oh. knew he recognized me, right? Yeah. So I says, I'd like to talk to uh, your supervisor, please. <laughs> so now he goes, okay, hold on. So now the supervisor comes on. It's uh, <clears throat> Sergeant uh, Smith. Right. I says, uh, Sergeant Smith, this is a Chuck Zito. And uh, I just want to uh, basically make it a complaint. I said, I was sitting at a light. A guy came up, I'm sitting, doing my own business, taking somebody home, and uh, knock on a window. I thought it was some bum. I opened the window, and it's a, it's a cop. Turned out to be one of your officers. He gave me a ticket for a tinted windows and no front plate. What did he say to you? He probably he goes, said, well, uh, hey, you should have taken the stun gun and shoved it up his ass. <laughs> <laughs> so what is so, his advice to you? So now he goes, well, look, he goes, they're allowed to do that. If right. you want to come in and make a complaint, then do that. I said, I just want to let you know, the guy's a nasty prick. Right. I said, I tried to talk to him. I asked him his name. He wouldn't tell me his name. Uh, I tried to tell my nope, you know, some officers. He didn't want to know nothing. He's just a nasty prick. You know what? I will come out there. You went all the way down to so the... So now he goes, where are you located? He goes, we're in right in Penn Plaza, 34th Street. Now I'm on 34th Street. Right. I said, great, I'll be right there. <laughs> <laughs> so now... Hey, can I just interrupt for a second, Howard? You and I would have been long gone, yes, correct? Of course. Right, no, this, no, this is, is eating. Oh, no, this I'm, is eating. Gotta be, I'm steaming, man. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, this pissed. Is, yeah. I'm pissed at this guy <laughs> because of who he is. He's taking advantage of people. And right. probably anybody else would have took their ticket and, and went. Right. So Except I had to go it. down. Now I'm... In Penn Plaza, asking where the MTA is. It's all the way downstairs, and I had to walk and walk, and right. other officers are asking me, and they see me. How much is this ticket for monetarily? Uh, it's it's uh, um, probably uh, it's thirty dollars, thirty dollars, <laughs> and thirty dollars surcharge, so it's sixty dollars each. So it's one hundred twenty dollars. All right, <clears throat> okay. but it's not the amount. It's just the. It's the, not the amount. It's the right. point. Go ahead. It's the so point. The guy was in. so nasty. You drive down to the MTA. So now, <laughs> so now I walk into the police station. 
And uh, there well, was you a... could have been banging this stripper right now, and now you're busy. Uh, well, the her. police officer. She's probably still walking 34th Street right. somewhere. Right. The police officer ruined that. That's why he's pissed. Uh, probably. Yeah. yeah. Probably. <laughs> so then you. My little in... head was thinking for my big head. <laughs> what are you? Now you're steaming mad. You're I'm steaming mad. Which I'm isn't steaming. a good thing to walk so into. So now, yeah, yeah. Now I, I walk in the way I look now because I, you know, I, I got to wear my cut off shirt. Cut off shirt, yeah. Robin always says I'm half naked. <laughs> so yeah, you almost knew it. Now, today. now I walk in there. And then what was funny was the sergeant walked out. I saw him walking down, but I didn't know it was this, you know, Sergeant Smith. Right. Another officer asked me what was going on. He saw me, in, and I asked him where the MTA building is. Right. He just followed me down. So the sergeant saw him. He goes, yeah, Chuck Zito's on his way here. He goes, he just went that way looking for you. <laughs> so they came uh -oh. back in. Meanwhile, all the cops were great down there. What they, what they came over. They took pictures with me. Yeah. They said, look, we, the guy is just... That kind of guy and everything else. I said, look, I just want to stay here. What time does he get off work? Oh, my goodness. Right? They go, he gets off at 7. I said, I want to wait here. I want to take him in that room and give him a fucking beating. <laughs> right? So they're looking at me. Well, you know, we can't really let you do that. Right. So I said, look, just turn your head. All right. I'll bring him inside. <laughs> You beat so, the shit out of him. And then... well, we, we, yeah, yeah. I take that stun gun, stick it up his ass, and just give him a whack. Right. <laughs> so we were having a great time. They said, look, hey, you want to make a, a, a complaint? <laughs> we are having a great time. Right? So you want to make a complaint? I said, look, I'm not going to make a complaint against you guys. Right. First of all, I don't do that. Right. Especially against a cop. You're a man. To me, that's a rat. Right. And everything else. I said, right. I'd rather take him right in this room, give him a beat, and then that's it. That's it. It'll be over. He goes, well, he's 45. I said, I'm 53. <laughs> I said, I'm an old man. He should be able to take me. Right. I said, I'll rip him a new fucking asshole, man. And wow. they're looking at me. They said, well, this guy's serious, man. Right, yeah. And, uh... Well, they got all straightened out, I take it, because you're here now. They didn't like no, it. No, so now oh. the best thing. <laughs> no, I still got two tickets. So did you sit there and wait for the officer? Not the best best thing. Yeah. We're standing there. We're laughing. We're bullshit. We're taking pictures. Who comes walking in? Oh, the officer. God. The officer. Oh. He looked at me. His face dropped, and I just wanted to give him a fucking crack. Right? <laughs> he turned around and walked out. That was it. Right? So then... You're an intimidating guy. Oh. <laughs> he just pissed me off. I had, and I said to the guys, look, I'm not going to make a complaint. That was uh, it. I just oh. had to so get, you're gonna pay the get this off my chest. And, you and I want to tell you guys. You feel good. And it made you even feel good. Maybe the officer walked away from you. Maybe even that made you feel good. Not really. No? Not really. No. Because I was hanging out because it got the 6.15 and it got 6.30. I'm hanging out by the door. Right. Waiting for him to walk in again. <laughs> so the guy says, look, guys, they go back. He goes. So is this over, Chuck, or it isn't over? I, I got to pay the tickets. What am I going to do? You're going to pay them. So you, you might as well just pay them anyway and avoid all of that nonsense. You know what I mean? You just, you, your <laughs> anger gets in the way sometimes. Do you ever go to oh, anger my... management? <laughs> Did you ever go to, like, therapy for that? Didn't you have to go to anger management once? <laughs> they wanted me to go. Remember oh, I right, told right. You that oh, yeah, story? he went to jail instead. It was 15 yes. days in prison. Right. Yeah, he goes, or, you're going to anger management. I said, I'm not, I had to go to the, to the judge. Right. My wife wanted to... Uh, Told the judge she wanted me to go to anger management. He's saying you got to go to anger management every every uh, Thursday, no, every Monday at seven o'clock for 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 a year, and you have to pay for it. I says for a year. What are you out of your mind, right? And well, you're not. I said, look, I can't go to anger management. You're Chuck Zito. And, yeah, and he goes, me. <laughs> I says, it's only going to hurt me, not help me. Well, why is that? I says, because if I go in a room with 15 or 20 guys and tell me how to beat their wives and kids, I won't beat them up. Right. <laughs> so he goes, well, you're going to anger management, and I don't want to hear it. I said, I'm not going to anger management. He goes, you don't go to anger management. I'm going to put you in jail, in a county jail for 15 days. I said, then it's over? He goes, yeah. I said, good. Give me the 15 days. <laughs> and you took it. I took it. You're a man. And, and, you and that. that actually brings me to my story. When you were on our show last night during a commercial break, <laughs> You told this great story that you wanted to wait till we got to satellite to tell about something you saw in jail about a guy. Oh uh, boy! About a guy using the toilet in front of oh, you. Oh god! What's oh, this, what Chuck? This? What man would even dare use the toilet in front of you? What are you talking about? There's one toilet, twenty guys in a in, in a cell. It's a holding cell. People just you just don't yeah. command them to so hold now, it in. <laughs> now I go back and I tell I tell I tell the uh, the judge. I says next time I come here. Are you going to, am I going to write to jail? He goes, yes. You want to think about it? I said, no, I'll bring my toothbrush with me. Right. So I showed up. Jail doesn't scare you. That doesn't He's scare me. He's been there I, before. I, I've been there. I've done that. You've been in jail plenty of times. So what happened was now I'm in this I, jogging suit. I went and I bought a $200 jogging suit, like a Nike jogging suit, brand new sneakers. I got a toothbrush in my pocket and I'm sitting there and I'm telling you, I'm the only white guy in a cell. Right. There's 20 guys in a cell and it's All a small, black guys. small cell right. and there's a toilet right in the middle of it. Right. right. I'm sitting between all these guys, and people are saying, this, 
That's that guy from, you know, us. they're looking at me. They know right? who you are. Everyone so knows. So they're saying, nah, it can't be. It can't be. And then they say, you're the guy from us. I says, yeah, I says, I'm doing research for us. <laughs> right? So now I look at the corner of my eye and the guy's, some guy sits on the thing and starts taking his shit, right? <laughs> so now. I wouldn't defecate the whole time you were I'm there. I'm saying, oh, man. Out so of now, <clears throat> yeah. I'm looking. Now all of a sudden I look again. And I see the guy bending over it, going through the shit. Oh. Right? Oh. <laughs> so Jeez. now he take, takes out a balloon. Oh. Ugh. And he washes it off. Yeah. And he takes the balloon and he starts snorting, you know, coke or coke. heroin or whatever it is. Right. And I'm saying to myself, I'm sitting there and I'm saying, did I do the fucking right thing here? Because <laughs> now I'm getting pissed off with this guy. Right. Now, he's now you're taking, angry. He snorts the coke and shit. And then, whatever it was, it was coke, it was something, he snorted, right? It was something guy, and shit. You saw yeah, a guy shit out. Shit, you guys right? saw a guy shit out. Not only alone. sitting, taking a shit. In jail. In jail. And you got to sit there and watch the guy and smell the guy. And then he's over there picking through it. I'm saying, what the fuck is this guy's problem? Right? Now, he takes it, wraps the balloon back up. Oh. He takes a little thing of... Uh, 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 Vaseline? Vaseline out of his thing, right? Out okay. of his uh, pocket. Puts it all over the balloon, bends down, sticks it back up his ass. Oh. Oh. And I'm saying to myself, what the fuck am I doing here? <laughs> really? Should have gone to anger management. Monday uh, nights. Should I have gone to anger management? Do you say to this guy, do you walk over and say, and, what are you doing? And I'm saying to myself, you got to be fucking kidding me, man, right? What do you do to the guy? So now what happened, now we get to the, uh, the county jail. They handed us our towels and all our, you know, uh, 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 toiletry and shit. And now he comes up to me. We get to the, uh, we get to the, uh, uh, the block, right? He comes up and uh, he goes, AZ, hey, because now everybody knew I was yeah, Chuck Z yeah. from Mars and everything yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. So he goes, AZ. Hey, and he called me Z. Yeah. He goes, fuck these orderlies. Right now we're taking over the cell block. I said, look, look, pal. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Days. I go home in 15 days. You could have the cell block. Right. <laughs> yeah, you'll be there for and life. I, I, I says, that's all I need is another problem here. I get oh. another 15 days, another 30 days, another you year. You know what? You've mellowed because in the old days, you might have taken over the cell block. I'm glad you... I'm glad... 15 this... days? I don't want to take over the cell block. Right. Well, listen. So then I'm sitting in the cell block, and I'm sitting against... The, you know, first of all, I get that steel, steel goddamn... Uh, 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 Terrible accommodations. Uh, you know, the bed's there, yeah. and they give you a little little... You know, three inch mattress, right. and I got my back to the uh, cement wall, and I hear that door clang, and mm -hmm. I'm over the here, and I says, "Fucking, you know, my my wife pissing me off, man." <laughs> I'm over here, you're doing this 15 days instead of anger management. I wouldn't want to be the woman responsible so, for you doing 15 days in jail. I had to do 15 days. Oh, and what the crazy God. thing about it was, what do you call it? That uh, 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 uh celebrity justice. Yeah. Yeah. They did an interview of me walking into the jail. Did that piss you off? From, from, they were following me from the from courthouse to the jail. I got off the bus and they followed me in there. And then the day I get out, who's there? It's this fucking celebrity justice guy. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> they waited for me to get out and shit. So it was just, wow. it was just crazy, this whole thing. Celebrity justice. That's fun. We have Chuck Zito here. And <laughs> hey, Jim, you're on in Chicago. What's happening? Amazing. Hey, Howard. Man, I love your guy. I'm serious. Got a lifetime membership. Good. Just wanted to call. I always try to get a hold when you got Chuck on. Every time you got that guy on, man, it's great. You can listen to his stories all day long. <laughs> Chuck's uh, got thank you, man. Thank you. Chuck is a free spirit. He does what he has to in this world. He lives by a different code. You don't understand. It's a, it's code, a code of, of men. It's a code of the barbarian, right? Well, I, I mean, don't know if it's a barbarian. Yes, he he doesn't subscribe to modern day rules. He's not biting off ears and Chuck, all that stuff. I, I've often said if yes. it was like a, a thousand years ago, you would have been a great uh, warrior. You probably would have been uh, a man who had his own fiefdom. You would take and, and pillage and, and take what you wanted, right? You know how we were talking the other day Why about... a thousand years ago? I do that now. Right. But you know what we were talking about? talking the other day about guys with clubs battering women over the head when they want them. Yeah. Chuck would have all the women. You would have been a great Pam man. Pam would be marrying you a thousand years ago. Pam, yeah, exactly. If like, this was caveman days, you would just, like I was saying, in caveman days, it was great for certain guys because you could go down to the river where the cave women would be doing their laundry on the rocks and you'd walk over behind them and, and stick your penis in them and fuck them. <laughs> and then if you saw some guy uh, doing no, it, I'll you, drive you, you, home. You, you hit him over the head and you take his woman, right? I mean, those would have been your... I mean, you would have been yeah, an emperor. I, I would have been cool in those days. Yeah, of course. Yeah. It was the rule of men. <laughs> it, it, it was... Uh, I don't know. Me? I would have been bent over a rock doing laundry. <laughs> you would have been a woman. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, bye -bye. Chuck. You would have been an Oz, man. Forget about it. That's right. It's good to see you. Oh, and, thank you, man. Uh, by thank the way, uh, back in the cave days, no tinted windows. Tinted no, windows. There would have been no MTA. About, how about, I was, you know what? You bring that up. Back in the day, 
now what happened with Queens with all these blackouts and everything? Yeah. Everybody's saying how I, I had to go you know, 10 days without air conditioning. What happened 50 years ago when there was no air conditioning and no, <laughs> no electricity? You had a years block ago. of ice and a fan. And they exactly. didn't even notice Forget the blackout, right? <laughs> I wish, I, you know, I, forgot, I wish like a month. Everything goes out where everybody has to go get their own ice and walk upstairs, hunt their own food. Hold their own phone, grab the girls, hit them over the head, the whole bit. <laughs> Can you so. hunt? Do you hunt for food? I hunt for everything. <laughs> Let's go. One last yeah, question to, for Glenn, and then we got to move on because we have a lot to get to. And uh, Chuck Zito is here. You plugging anything? You doing it? Or you just stop by to say hi? But I actually, I have uh, three three people right now want to do a reality show with me. Uh, uh, I would watch that. This GRB wants to do my life story in a TV series. Right. Uh, That'd be uh, good. Original Productions wants to do uh, Chuck Zito's Rods, Bods, and Bikes about cars, motorcycles, fighting, grappling, the whole thing. What about just following you around with a camera and uh, see the life of a, a real man? That kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. What do you think of that? Uh, and somebody else just called me yesterday. They want to do a clothing line with me. So we'll see what happens. Clothes? You hardly but, wear them. How they but, <laughs> Glenn, you're on the air in Cape Coral, Florida. What's up, Hal? Hey, now. Hey, uh, I wanted to ask Chuck something. Does he laugh when he hears guys like uh, Ronnie on here trying to act like Mr. Hardass? <laughs> <laughs> like, what's he like when he's got imposters like Ronnie to give Chuck, what do you think of Ronnie's, Ronnie's bodyguarding career? As you know, he is my bodyguard. <laughs> what do you think of that? Do you laugh at something like that? Or? Ronnie's my friend, man. I can't yeah, talk Ronnie's about Ronnie's such a load. When you listen to Ronnie talk, he sounds like a squealing little bitch bitching about everything. Chuck comes on and is like, yeah, I did this, I did that, whatever. You but know? Chuck, in a sense, you know, I, I, You're not a Ronnie fan, are you? <laughs> oh, dude, Ronnie sounds like a chick on there. I don't know how Stern pays him any money to protect him. Drive Do you him think le, le, he has heart, right? Right, Chuck? But, Chuck, let me ask you something. I think Ronnie would take a bullet for you, Howard. He would. Yes. Is, is, is it, am I mistaken in having Ronnie as a bodyguard? In other words, let's say a guy like you got really angry yes. with me. Yes. And the only thing between me and you is Ronnie. Uh, is Ronnie going to be able to stop you in any way, shape, or form? Is there anything he can do to stop you? He'll probably try and stop me after I knocked you out already. Right. <laughs> right. You know? But you're not going to say, the best well, thing Ronnie's you can do my is, friend. Is what? call 911, and the time 911 <laughs> gets here, everybody's in trouble, man. <laughs> so you're saying that Ronnie's best bet would just be get out of the way and call 911. <laughs> but Chuck, I think Chuck's point about Ronnie is Ronnie would probably take the beating for you. Right. Oh, definitely. Right. Yeah, that's, definitely. that's the point. Yeah, so you would beat Ronnie loyal. and then but beat me. I, no, 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 no. You would get it first right. because right. he'd try and stop me to <laughs> get you. So you would get it first. First. Right. And, and then if he tried to stop Ron. me, he would definitely get a... He would get a beating as well. Ah, uh, forget him, man. But so Chuck, another, when you Ronnie, walk, I love you, man. Where are you? Uh, <laughs> but when you walk through life, what do you think of most men? What I think of most... I, first of all, uh, 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 Rob and I have respect for everybody. Really? Okay? Really? I, 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 I treat everybody the way I want to be treated, and that's with the utmost respect. Yeah, but that's how you yeah. treat them. What do you think of them? Oh, what I think of them? <laughs> Well, that's a different story now. You privately nah. told me that uh, if we ever came to blows, you would take Ronnie and beat me with Ronnie, <laughs> using Ronnie <laughs> as a battering stick. <laughs> you know, but it was just like like the same thing. Who is uh, the man was, you respect the most? Seriously, another who do you a have man's man. For, who, yeah. who is the who is the man yeah. besides your father, obviously? But who is the man's man that you respect and look up to? Who is your? Is a hero? man to you? That's right. Oh, there's so many heroes I have, man. You know, Muhammad Ali's a hero of mine. Bruce okay. Lee was a hero. Elvis was a hero. Uh, um, you know, any, anybody... You wouldn't I, have liked I, Elvis if you met him, I don't think. Yeah. Oh, I think I would have loved that guy. I don't think so. No? No. You yeah. met him? You would have slapped him. No. <laughs> you probably would have ended up beating him. Come on, TCB, I can't do that. <laughs> but there's so many guys I respect. The guys in the UFC, I always go to UFC fights. I respect everybody who gets me out guys. on guys. Yeah. Would you ever uh, do UFC? Yes. You would? Yes. Why don't you do it? Actually, if you see me now, I lost 30 pounds. You look good. I'm uh, cutting down. You look very ripped. I'm uh, training hard. and What's going what on? What are you training and cutting down for? To fight. To fight? Yes. Really? Well, yes. No kidding. That's why I wanted this police officer, uh, Aronson. <laughs> I wanted to do a little uh, training with him. Let me understand something. What are you talking about? You're going to You're going to go into ultimate fighting? Oh, one of those. One of no those, No kidding. Yes. I would pay to see that. I'd love of course to see you that. Yeah, that'd be That's awesome. why it would be the biggest pay-per-view they ever had. Do you think you could beat any of those guys? Because what about those guys who do Gracie Jiu-Jitsu? Those yeah. guys always win. You know what? I, I'm very good with my hands, and a lot of those guys don't have good hands. So I would be uh, excel that in that would, area yeah, where, of course, they... Right. What would they be your would strategy? Be more... Would you just like what would you do? Like just rip some dude's hair out of his head? <laughs> like what would you do? Just you know what? Years ago, you were allowed to uh, pull hair and hitting the balls and everything. Yeah. You can't do that. I know. Not really. Those guys used to be able to hit the balls. They That's had what it was about. They had no rounds. There was no rules. They were pulling hair. Guys would tap out in one second. Huh. 
the only thing he couldn't do was gouge the eye and bite. Yeah. Right. Guys were pulling hair. Guys were getting hit in the nuts. Everything. When wow. is this fight going to occur? When? What do you think? When? Do you uh, think we're you talking do? about it. I'm talking about it with a few people. And that is a new, new uh, 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 thing called Extreme World Extreme Fighting. Also, they've been in touch with me. Oh, this is great. It's actually who who comes up with the uh, most money. You're going to fucking kill somebody. So well, I'll beautiful. try to. I'll try to because they're going to try and hurt me real bad. You like, afraid? You see, Are you afraid at all to do this? No, not at all. Shouldn't if I was every man, afraid, why would I do Shouldn't it? every man have a little bit of fear in them when they fight? Well, you get the butterflies, you get everything. Saying, yeah. well, I hope you uh, you make it through it and all. But uh, you know, be me being 53 years old is a big difference to fight a guy who's 30. Right. You know, 23, 28, right. and all that stuff. But so, you? yes, they have the advantage. But, you know, I feel good. And then Don't I'm they training. have a senior citizens uh, ultimate fighting championship? Yeah, get another 50-year-old. Uh, senior, oh, thank you very much. <laughs> no, no, get like another 50-year-old. Have <laughs> you been hit? Because, you know, you're so good at defending yourself. Yes. Have you been hit, really hit? Oh, I've been hit. Yeah? I mean, I've got hit with, with, hit with champagne you? bottles over the really? head in yeah. China Club and 26 stitches in the head, four stitches in the finger one Doesn't night. Wow. You what is it all? You know, you know it's funny, Chuck. Challenge? I was just going to say, I'm 38, and I don't feel like I have an advantage over Chuck at all for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. You don't have an only kind of advantage. Nothing. <laughs> Chuck, uh, so you're going to... There's, there's a... There's a uh, uh, Chuck, if you win Ultimate Fighting... Yeah. This is going to go down in history as, as a great event. But yeah. then you'll have to defend and defend and defend. Not necessarily. Well, you know, it's, it's, I want to try it because I know everybody actually relates to me as being the street guy, the tough yeah, guy. Yeah. And ba basically, I want to see how good oh, really? I can do against these guys because these guys are the good fighters. They're great fighters. Uh -huh. What and styles will you use in the ring? Basically, it's just... It, it's Anything goes street fighting. When I would try and stand up. First of all, and try and box right. and move because you never see guys sit to the body. You never see guys bob and weave in, in, in ultimate fights. Yeah, but right. you see guys they always grapple. kicking you. They're they always grab grappling. Well, I could kick too, pretty good. <laughs> it's they're always grappling. They're going down. They're trying an arm bar, or, or you know. Or, or, or. I got to figure you get off one good shot to the face. The guy's going down. Well. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's Are why. Are these guys I, wearing gloves? No. They're very little gloves. They're like no. four ounce gloves. Yeah. Oh, but those guys are great big. fighters. Oh. Chuck Liddell, Randy Couture, those guys are... Who do you want to fight? Uh, oh, oh. Who do you want to get your fucking hands on and rip well, his heart well, out? Well, it depends. I'm, I'm, I was 238. I'm down right. to a 210 right now. I'm going to 200. Nice. So, whoever. I, I am too old to go through like the process of elimination and start at the bottom. Right. You just so go I'm going right to have to stop at the top. Nice. <laughs> and, and that's it. So I, I, I'm training for it. You go to all these talk. matches and you watch and you go, you know what? I, I can watch. take these motherfuckers. I watch. Because I'm looking and you, you know see what? opening. There what isn't seeing? a real good guy that has hands. Right. And I'm a good boxer. I could use my hands good. And I don't see a guy. I see him swinging. Sometimes I see guys just swinging wild like a street fight. Instead of moving, bobbing your head, just moving ahead just a little. Wow. Just to to, to uh, uh, slip the punch. Guys don't do that. I never see a guy going to the body <laughs> and and just using up cuts and everything good. else. So this is going to be good. Mm. We're going to try. We're talking. We're talking. And I've spoke to Dana White already a couple times. How much times. money do you got to give you to do this? This is going to oh, be I some, don't know. It's gonna, <laughs> we got to see a good payday, don't we? Yes. You know. Yes. I'm not going to go in there for a chump change. That's for sure. In case what do you I want? A million hurt, bucks? I got to have. You hit it right on the head, Howard. So you're looking for see? a million bucks? Yes. yes. Wow. You That's hit it right nice. on the head, but uh, I think it'll be be all right. And like I says, I want to see. I know I'm a good street. One fighter. thing I know about you, you do not want to lose because you have great pride in your ability yes. to fight. You're not going to get some chump no, who goes in no, there no. and goes down just for the million dollars. I have to say now, if I do lose, I'm going to get the guy in the parking lot. No, ah. so. <laughs> One way or another, you will win. <laughs> so we're talking right, about Chuck. it. I mean, it would be the greatest thing. I think it would be the greatest event. I happening. think so, too. I would definitely go to that. Definitely. Well, uh, but I wanted to try this just this uh, this, this uh, police officer. I want to try it on him. Maybe I'll, I'll no, you don't him. want to be threatening a police officer. No, 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 no. no. I just want to tell uh, Aronson he's a scumbag. Oh, boy. If oh. you're listening. But you know what? He... All those guys down there were great guys. We Just all got along great. It's one guy like him. One guy you didn't get along that with. That makes all those guys look bad. All right. Well, Chuck, so, it's always a pleasure to see you. What a pleasant surprise to have you stand by. Uh, sorry a pleasure. Uh, about Pam Anderson marrying someone else. <laughs> she should have been yours. You know, in my book it says she wrote Pamela and, you know, Pamela Zito. Well, and yeah. I says maybe someday it'll be that, but she broke my heart. Yeah, well, she but like I have said, Bob's a great guy, and he's very nice. I have nothing, you know. You wish I, them I happiness. just hope happiness, and I hope it lasts, and I hope they have a great time. Right, right, yeah. And have many little Howards and Chucks running around. That's right, you bet. And Robins. <laughs>
Do you know Chuck's a grandfather? No. Yes, Hard I to do believe. Twice. It's amazing. Twice. Twice. Do you get to see the grandkids or not? No. Still not. Nobody's I, my talking. daughter hasn't talked oh, to me in geez. five years, and my, my grandkids are like uh, three and uh, four and a half years old now, and they don't even know who I am. Is that oh. your greatest sorrow? Yes. I yes. bet. I really feel bad about that. Wow. But, you know, uh, they say life, uh, you know, time heals all wounds. We'll see what happens. <clears throat> Maybe before I hit the bucket, uh, I'll be able to see Maybe there'll be a reconciliation, right? Who yeah. knows? You know, Who I knows? see like Angelina Jolie. She doesn't talk to her father. You know that? Yeah, yes. but that guy abandoned her and her brother when she was a- very Exactly, young. exactly. Right. Now That's that she's different. a big star. I mean, Angelina's a dear friend also. I was in G with her. Uh-huh. Uh, I was the guy who picked her up at the uh, the photo shoot and took her to the crack house. Right. <laughs> great, great part. <laughs> good part. <laughs> it was a good part. It was a memorable part. It was, it was a great scene. That's right. But he abandoned her, like you said, Robin. And now all of a sudden that she's this Academy Award winning actress, he wants to know. be... Your situation is different. You were always there for your daughter. I was always there, and it's just I feel bad, and I, I, I just, you know, it's... it's uh, No uh, chance of just picking up the phone and saying to her, listen. Jake and Ben Cohen is my uh, grandchildren. Uh, Cohen. 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 Cohen, yes. A nice Jewish guy. Really? Yes. You all right with that? But Jonathan is very nice. He treats her well, and that's what what counts. Yeah, you don't want to hear about this guy not treating your daughter well. Oh, no, 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 no. no that no, would never no. happen. The guys with the baseball bats will uh, <laughs> show up at the door. <laughs> show up with the ski mask. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this just saying Officer Aronson has moved to Florida. <laughs> I quit the force and moved to Florida. So what I was he was fo- just doing his job, the funny, you- The funny thing about it, before oh. I left, I said, look, guys, I says, I'm gonna, I want to give this stuff to my lawyer. Mm-hmm. So these tickets and all. So I, I need his address. <laughs> <laughs> so, so he just looked at me. So okay, Chuck. Well, Chuck, Have you've done nice it day. again. You come in here, you tell everything that's going on, and uh, you know, I, I I I pray that you do get to meet your grandchildren. I truly thank do. you very much. So do I. And, I mean, uh, uh, we'll see what happens. Right, you're a man's man. I wish you luck with this going forward with this ultimate fighting yeah, type. Yeah, that uh, should be interesting. That, that would be very good to yeah, uh, I think so. We'll, come we'll, in and we'll tell us more something. about that sometime, if definitely, you will. Definitely. All right, the great Chuck. Z- you know, we got to take a break. We got a lot to get to on the show. Thank you, Howard, Robin. Love you. Good Thank to you, see guys. You. I love you guys. Love you too. Hey Chuck, those are some yo, good yo. stories in there, man. Great stories. I have a great time over here. Everybody always says, <laughs> "When am I coming back?" Because we have the best stories. Between you know, me going, and Howard have chemistry. You definitely do. Now, between yeah. going down to the MTA and, and getting to talk to Howard this morning, you feeling better about what happened? Yes. Now a lot of more people know what happened. Then you gotta watch this scumbag on uh, Aronson on 34th Street. <laughs> if you're riding a bicycle, he's gonna stop you. Now what about you as a caveman? Howard said you would have survived pretty pretty good back in uh, prehistoric times. I think so. I think you would have been. So. I've been kicking ass and taking names, man. <laughs> Howard yeah. also brought up what, what's he gonna do if someone like you attacks him? Like if you know if you're if you're pissed off and he and uh, someone like you attacks him, do you think Ronnie would be able to stop him? Before Ronnie gets there, Howard would yeah. be having a problem. <laughs> and then me and Ronnie. <laughs> <laughs> Good to be back. I have a lot of respect for him, so I would never say anything bad. We go back a long way, man. Yes. Long way. Long, long way. way. It's good to be back, Chuck. That's uh, great. This is my first time actually on uh, Sirius. Yeah. And I think this is my 20th time on Howard wow. today. So I made a record. All right, cool. Because I, I did it a week before you guys moved here. Right. You and were here from New you No. Here? I was here, but I wasn't on. Oh, okay. I, I was here. I came okay. for the opening day, the first oh, day. Oh, right, I right, right, right. Okay. But I wasn't on, so today is history. There you go. Well, well, it's good seeing you, Chuck, and uh, hopefully likewise, you'll thank come you. back with some good stories again. Thank you. This note I got, Richard and Sal started peeing together and sword fighting in the bathroom. Uh-huh. Oh man, you know what? I, got, I, I actually I got to go, so I want to do the news next. Sword um, fighting, like they touched you? Mean? Yeah, I don't know. Like that just doesn't sound fucking. I thought they were supposed to be working. They consider that. Hoa anh đào như bức tranh huyền thoại. 
anh đưa em quay về tới con gái có hoa vàng có cái cây sum suy nụ hôn đắm say với những lời thề mình luôn bên nhau say mê đắm giấc mơ em để không còn phải hơn ghen dần dối với tình địch trong giấc mơ